Chapter 201 Chairman's Thoughts The ideas in the chairman's mind are gradually taking shape. He is quite familiar with Chen Ming's situation. At least for the past 20 years, before he went dormant. Born as an orphan. He was recruited by Cinda Company with excellent grades in college. When I entered the company, I focused solely on my career. And I already had a good standard right after I graduated. Then, as long as he can come back after being promoted to a higher level, he can be released for a few more years and work as a department head. No problem. Although at this point something unexpected happened. But if the accident didn't happen and Chen Ming came back safely, then if all goes well until retirement, it might be possible to become the general manager of a branch. It's obvious that Chen Ming has invested a lot in his career. Even after escaping from the space station until now, it can be seen that Chen Ming's focus has always been on his career. Naturally, not much energy was invested in other aspects. Therefore, the chairman suddenly felt that he could provide some help in these aspects and rely on these things to get closer to Chen Ming. Chen Ming is now a psyker. He talks and laughs with the psionic bosses of the Psychic Association and the Lieutenant General of the 14th Legion. Naturally, his status cannot be compared with before. Therefore, the objects he chooses must be carefully considered. And just now, he found the right person. Cheng Xinghai is a lively young man with a beautiful face and a cute expression like the girl next door. Although she is from the military and her personality seems different from that of ordinary girls, she should be fine. Moreover, it can be seen from the chairman's previous speculation based on Bai Quan's performance and Chen Ming's current decision to hand over the sales rights of an important technology to Bai Quan that the relationship between Bai Quan and Chen Ming is definitely unusual. But there seems to be no sign of getting closer for the time being. And Bai Quan doesn't seem to have the intention he is thinking now. So what the chairman wants to do is to mention this matter. Of course, the premise is to investigate the feasibility first to avoid being kicked out by Bai Quan as Lao Ding. So after everyone had seen what Wuhan had brought and returned to the banquet area, the crowd gradually dispersed and went to socialize. The chairman moved closer to Wuhan, who took the initiative to stay alone, before Wuhan considered whether to drive the chairman away manually and give him a clean place to stay. The chairman asked, How old is Xiaoming this year? Question mark. Wuhan glanced at the chairman with a question mark and asked, You don't know your employees? The chairman simply pulled down his old face, suppressed his embarrassment, coughed and said, Confirm. Wuhan didn't understand what the chairman was doing for a while. So he replied normally, Let me think about it. I'm 26. When he was dormant before, he was 25 in real life and 24 in real age. The rest were all from dormancy. It's been almost a year now. When is his birthday? I don't know exactly. The chairman has read Chen Ming's resume countless times. And of course, he knows how old Chen Ming is. His questions are just to pave the way for what he is going to say next. He's 26. So he's not too young. Has he ever mentioned anything suitable for his age? Question mark. Wuhan suddenly understood what the chairman meant. And the look he looked at him gradually became strange. But then, he looked in the direction of Bai Quan. And at the same time thought about the situation of the past few days. And then recalled the past and said, No, but he can't come into contact with the right people in his current environment. So you can try try. The chairman nodded slightly. Chatted with Wuhan about the living environment at the pirate space station. And then went to find Bai Quan. Bai Quan quickly noticed the chairman of Shina Company, who kept a certain distance from him, but didn't get too close. He looked like he wanted to say something but couldn't say it well. As the boss of the company where Chen Ming worked before, and who had previously cooperated with Chen Ming in the original rescue plan, Bai Quan still had an impression of him. So Bai Quan said H, low to the people around him, and came to the chairman's side alone. The chairman quickly raised his glass and said, Lieutenant General Bai, we have met before. Bai Quan was smiling at this time, but because Chen Ning gave him a big gift, there was no trace of the coldness in his expression. I remember. Chairman Su of Shida Company. We had talked about the annual spacecraft technology bidding. Is there anything wrong? The chairman's lips moved slightly. And he glanced at the other partners behind Bai Quan, who were staring at him. He knew that he definitely couldn't slowly go around in circles with Bai Quan. So after hesitating for a while, he finally chose a direct way to speak. How old is the little girl from before? Bai Quan's smile instantly faded, and he became alert. Chang Xinghai and Chang Xingha were both a generation younger than him. And he had always paid attention to their development. And after someone came to him about Chang Xingha related matters a few days ago, he also knew very well that the chairman suddenly asked what Chang Xinghai was going to do. 
The chairman also knew the reason why Bai Quan suddenly changed his attitude after hearing what he said, and quickly added in a low voice. Chen Ming is 26 this year. Bai Quan immediately understood what the chairman meant. He really didn't have this idea at first. But the chairman suddenly mentioned it. And he changed his mind, and it seemed that it was not impossible. Bai Quan returned to his normal smiling appearance and whispered. 19. At the same time, he gave the chairman a look that they would chat later. And then returned to the person he was chatting with just now, as if nothing was wrong. The chairman understood the situation, and went elsewhere with a wine glass in hand. Wuen, who was next to him, paid attention to the chairman's situation the whole time after the chairman came to ask him questions. When the chairman left Bai Quan, Chen Ming's communication code was already displayed on the terminal in Wu En's hand. But he was still thinking. After thinking for a while, he finally turned off the terminal and said to himself, The age difference is a little big, but it's not impossible. The second half of the banquet was basically for the participants to talk about business matters. And after the banquet is over, the chairman received an invitation from Bai Quan and went to his residence. When the chairman arrived, besides Bai Quan, Wu En was already sitting here. The three of them gathered around the coffee table in Bai Chuan's residence in silence, feeling a little embarrassed for a moment, because they don't know what to say. They have obviously dealt with all kinds of complicated things, and they all have similar experiences even if they are extremely troublesome things. But what they want to discuss now is really something that none of the three of them know how to talk about. In the end, it was the oldest chairman who took the lead to put Chen Ming's resume on the coffee table, pushed it to Bai Quan, and asked, What do you think? Bai Quan picked up this identity resume that he was already very familiar with and read it for a long time, and finally managed to hold back a sentence. I think it's okay. Then the two of them looked at Wuan together. Wuan spread his hands and asked, What are you looking at me doing? Bai Quan immediately said, You are his spiritual guide and his elder. Why don't you help him worry about some things? You are already 26. Does he know that I am his elder? Psychic elders are also elders. I have heard that after he gave up the company's path. You have been guiding him to take the path of a psyker. Don't you worry about this kind of thing? Wuen said with a helpless expression. But I sleep every few years and have never been married. How can I worry about him? It's good if he doesn't worry about me. And aren't you already married? You should have experience in this kind of thing. Bai Quan immediately defended. I am an orphan like Chen Ming. My marriage was arranged by the person who brought me up all the way. I have no experience at all. So I found you. After Bai Quan finished speaking, his eyes turned to the chairman, who was the oldest, and even his son was almost the same age as them. The chairman waved his hand quickly and said, Don't look at me. I'm not very good here. My son still doesn't have a good relationship with me. Mr. Wuen, you know that too. The three of them were silent for a long time. Wuen suddenly coughed twice and said, How about we change our thinking and think about the value of this matter to all parties? First of all, for me, I am very happy to see Chen Ning grow up. There is no problem with that. Yes, Bai Quan nodded and said. No problem. Everyone knows what you think. Then for you Bai Quan, you can bring Chen Ming and your 14th Legion closer through this matter, which is definitely good for you. Right. No problem. So for Chairman Su, as the person who first proposed this opinion, if Chen Ning successfully accepts the result, then as a matchmaker, you can ease Chen Ning's somewhat awkward relationship with Shinda Company. Right. That's right. The chairman acknowledged Wu En's words and his thoughts. Wu En paused for a moment and asked, What about Chen Ming? Is it good for him? The chairman asked, Is it a benefit to have a family and start a business? Wu En had thought about this matter when the chairman asked him to ask questions and quickly said, Starting a family and starting a business may be what many people want. But I didn't see his thoughts from Chen Ming. But I feel like he's not resisting. He simply has no idea for the time being. He wants to do his own business. If there is enough value, if I mention it to him, he may still agree. It's a good thing to be reluctant. Bai Quan thought for a while and said, If this thing can really come true, no matter how it is done, Chen Ming will be directly included in our 14th Legion. The resources of our 14th Legion can be invested more in him and treat him as one of our own. There are also some hidden benefits. It is Chen Ming's current situation that makes those at the top a little worried. They are worried that Chen Ming will give up his relationship with the Empire. Wuen immediately denied. Chen Ming will not give up. He has been trying to find ways to promote trade with the Empire through you and me. Even if he goes out, he just doesn't want to be restricted by the rules within the Empire. 
Bai Quan shook his head slightly and said, You know it won't happen. But the people above won't think so. Although Chen Ning is not yet capable of leaving the empire, the higher-ups will definitely restrict him before he really has the ability to survive independently of the empire. Unless there are more people in the empire who can make him keep his mind in the empire. Such as you, Wu Wen, and a few of his friends. If this thing can be done, and the relationship network of the 14th Legion will care about Chen Ming and keep him in close contact with the Empire. It will be less likely that something we don't want to see will happen in the future. Seeing Wuin suddenly frowning, Bai Quan said again, Wuin, Chen Ming is different from you. Your psychic ability limits you from leaving the Empire in this life. Even if you run to a pirate space station in the Edge Star Field, everyone knows that there is no possibility of you leaving. But he is really capable of going out on his own. So the way the Empire treats him may be different. Wu En's expression changed several times. As if he was thinking of something from the past. Although the atmosphere of the three people chatting just now was a bit awkward. Now that he was thinking about other things. It made him even more uncomfortable. He even felt that he might as well continue the discussion in the awkward atmosphere just now. Wu En suddenly breathed out and said. I this matter for now. Just put the options in front of Chen Ming. And see what he chooses. I will not force him to make a decision. He has to make his own path. At this moment, the chairman who had been drinking tea silently next to him suddenly said, What about Miss Chung Shinghai's thoughts? Are you a little too quick? They don't know each other yet. You'll get to know each other soon. Bai Quan has already decided on the candidate for Chen Ming's actual combat test. So he can say this with confidence. Furthermore, Chang Shinghai's family members died on the front line in the past few years. So now I can make the decision for her in this regard. Her background and abilities left her with few options. As long as Chen Ning agrees, I will do her ideological work. However, I also agree with Wu En's idea. Let them contact them themselves in the first place. We will see the situation later. Take your time. Anyway, it still depends on Chen Ning's attitude in the end. Forcing him will definitely be useless. The three of them briefly chatted about their arrangements for this matter and then separated. After one day, at this time, Chen Ming, who was still on the pirate space station and didn't know anything, got a lift from Bai Quan from his boss and returned to the Gallo Star territory by relying on the Star Gate. It happened that Chen Ning was free these two days, so he came directly to pick him up. By the way, I plan to report to the boss, the investor, on the recent temporary base and development situation. After meeting his boss, he had to think about where he would go next. Should we continue to follow the pioneering team on the brilliant side to the next temporary stronghold? Or simply find a place to remotely command the afterglows to continue their work? While Chen Ming was thinking about it, the spaceship the boss was on had landed at the dock of the space station that was not open to the public. The boss has also stepped off the spaceship. But when the boss saw Chen Ming, the smile on his face suddenly froze. A surge of spiritual energy swept past Chen Ming's side in an instant. And then a powerful spiritual power directly enveloped Chen Ming. Boss? Amid Chen Ming's confusion, the boss frowned and immediately came to Chen Ming quickly, put his hand on his shoulder and said, You seem to have something dirty on your body. Do you need me to help you solve it? Ah? Uh? Chen Ming was stunned for a moment and then reacted. It should be that the hive mind network of the machine race and the Zerg race he constructed was discovered by the boss. The boss's psychic energy itself seems to act on consciousness and spirit, and it seems normal to be aware of it. Moreover, the boss only knew that he had controlled the machine race, but did not know that he had constructed a hive mind network. At first, I probably thought there was something wrong with his psychic ability. So Chen Ming quickly explained, It's okay. This is a derivative effect of my spiritual power. After I took control of the machine race, the machine race's consciousness connected to my spiritual energy and actively built a network. It does no harm to me, but you have more than one network on you. Forehead. Seeing that he could no longer hide it, Chen Ming thought for a moment and simply displayed the photos and videos of the queen in the biological spacecraft on the terminal and then handed the terminal to the boss. They also conveniently blocked the monitoring of the internal dock where they were currently located to prevent information about the biological spaceship and the Zerg from leaking out. The boss looked at the photos and videos on the terminal for a long time and finally said to Chen Ming with a hint of incomprehension in his expression, Your psychic powers! Chen Ming spread his hands and said, the biological spaceship is also a spaceship. The spaceship is controlled by me. And the things on it are no exception. The Thrawn are a hive mind just like the machines. And that's it. Although Chen Ming explained, the boss still frowned slightly 
and scan Chen Ning through his spiritual power. It took a while before his mental power gradually dissipated. Then his eyes were fixed on the highest point next to him. And he said, Are there Zerg on your body and on the boat? There's a part so I can do something. Chen Ning pulled up his sleeves, revealing a bracelet made of fragments of the queen's body tissue on his wrist. Then, relying on the transformation of spiritual energy, the pitch black biological armor was instantly condensed from the wrist. Chen Ming casually waved his fist a few times, and his smooth and smooth movements made an obvious sound of breaking through the air. Chen Ming conveniently made another electromagnetic javelin and shot his arm. After seeing that there was not even a trace left on the armor, Chen Ming also broke the electromagnetic javelin into two sections with strength, dismantled it into the most basic materials, and sent it away. The boss suddenly became a little silent, because he suddenly couldn't understand the effect of Chen Ming's psychic power. Even if Chen Ming's spiritual power has been improving, he should not directly evolve from affecting machines to affecting living things. Chen Ming noticed the boss's silence and asked, Boss, what's wrong with you? It's nothing. I just suddenly feel like I'm a little old. Question mark. The boss quickly adjusted his mentality and said to Chen Ming as usual, Forget it. It's okay. Let's go back. I haven't read last week's report yet. Okay. Although the boss seemed to understand, Chen Ming still felt that the boss looked at him strangely for some reason. However, the boss didn't say much and just handed over the development data to Chen Ming every week as usual. After chatting about what happened for more than a month, Chen Ming left from the boss. That night, Chen Ming got the news from Bai Quan that everything was ready. The actual combat test he promised to help Chen Ming can start at any time. Bai Quan and his boss returned to the Gala Star territory through the Star Gate during the day. So the time to notify him now is about the same. So Chen Ming chatted with Bai Quan, sent a destroyer, and set off with a robot equipped with the Afterglow Core. After flying in hyperspace for a night, the destroyer arrived at the station of the 14th Legion, which was the station of the original Star Sector military. Then, he was stopped by a military patrol fleet in hyperspace. However, the patrol team seemed to have received the news early, and quickly gave Chen Ming's spaceship the OK signal. Bai Quan obviously also received the news and called. You can park at the giant shipyard first. And then I will arrange a spaceship to send your things to the ground. Okay. Chen Ming followed by Quan's instructions and went to the giant shipyard after leaving hyperspace and entering the galaxy. Chao Fan had stayed here for some time before. So Chen Ming still had some impressions of the situation in the dock. When Chen Ming came here this time, in addition to seeing that the development level of the entire station on the planet was significantly higher than before, he also found that the number of fleets stationed here seemed to be larger than before. It seems that Bai Quan is right. The 14th Legion does support his expansion of influence in the Gallo Star territory. Chen Ming paid a little attention, and then didn't pay much attention. He just controlled the robot, and quickly boarded the spacecraft specially arranged by Bai Quan, and headed to the ground. Went to a huge independent building under an ecological dome on this volcanic planet. When Bai Quan saw the robot carrying the afterglow core in person, Bai Quan asked, as long as the core is connected to the electronic device, it will be... Okay. Right. That's right. After Bai Quan received the reply, he quickly connected the afterglow core controlled by Chen Ming to the only huge simulation device in the building. This device was also successfully controlled by Chen Ming under the influence of the Yue individual. Of course, the 14th Legion was obviously not a fool. This independent building and its internal equipment were completely blocked from other buildings without any physical connection, and did not give Chen Ming any chance to steal the chicken. But Chen Ming didn't care. He said to Bai Quan who was holding the terminal, I have no problem here. I can access this device like a normal user and can start at any time. What about my opponent? Bai Quan pushed up his glasses, covering his eyes, and said, She is ready, but she is at our headquarters and uses the host to remotely connect to your extension. So there is no need to worry about delays. Okay. I have input some of your psychic effects for you. Check to see if there are any errors or omissions. If there are any, just tell me and I will help you correct them. Chin Ming looked at Bai Quan's settings on the system and said, Yes. Set all ammunition for live ammunition and missile weapons to unlimited. Reduce the cooling time of energy weapons by 99%. And set the radiation energy dissipation efficiency of the spacecraft to 30 times first. The command and communication delay is set to zero and the enemy electronic warfare equipment interference is set to none. Oh, there is no electronic warfare, so there is no need to set it. I can fine-tune all spaceships and operate them myself. 
and the spacecraft under my control will not suffer any damage or decrease in combat readiness during non-combat operations. And there will be no equipment failure. Unmanned operation will not cause any error rate for pilots and combatants. Nor will there be personnel injuries and low morale leading to a decrease in combat capabilities. In addition, when my spaceship is destroyed, as long as it remains about 80% intact, I can completely repair the spacecraft and return to the battlefield. I can also use my spiritual power to shape the smashed spaceship into a new one and return to the battle. Can I just create a new spaceship when I come up? For example, a heavy rain or something. Oh, and I have so many afterglows on hand. Ahem. Bai Quan quickly interrupted Chen Ning and said, We will only look at personal abilities this time. Not other afterglows or anything like that. Your settings are almost there. Let's start quickly. Tisk. Although Chen Ning has not finished setting up the effects of his psychic energy, Bai Quan has already done this, and he will not continue. Then let's get started. Chapter 202 Simulation Test As Chen Ning took the initiative to connect his consciousness to the simulation device already under his control through normal methods, he found that a scene gradually appeared in his mind. A scene in the main control room of a spacecraft. However, his consciousness is still free, and he can still control his body movements normally. After briefly adapting to this strange perspective, Chen Ming devoted his attention to this simulated scene. He was the only one in this bustling scene in the main control room of the spacecraft. However, there are still 300 spaceships that can be seen through the portholes arranged neatly outside. This is a small to medium scale simulation. 300 versus 300. 50 expulsions plus 250 escorts. The environment is set to the most ordinary cosmic environment, with almost no physical interference except for the light provided by a star. The settings that Chen Ning just mentioned were basically implemented in this simulation. It's just that some of the settings are not too extreme. So those destroyed spaceships are not set to return to the battlefield with Chen Ning's spiritual energy. However, Bai Quan also set up three damaged spaceships with no more than 50% damage, which can be combined into one intact spaceship which does not completely limit Chen Ming's psychic abilities. Of course, Chen Ning couldn't just rely on materials and could only choose a sample from the original spacecraft to reproduce. Otherwise, Bai Quan doesn't know how Chen Ning's team can win when everyone on the other side starts to rain heavily. Moreover, this kind of small-scale simulation is different from the large-scale long-term simulation that requires all aspects to be considered. Generally speaking, logistical issues are not considered and it is purely a test of one's battlefield command skills. Therefore, among these 300 spaceships, there is neither a fuel ship nor a cargo ship. In the case of unlimited logistics, Chen Ming's strength can be displayed to terrifying levels. What's more, the possibility of accidents in small-scale combat is even smaller. If Chen Ming's outrageous ability was not restricted, Bai Quan even thought that Chen Ming could win a battle and blow up all the ships on the opposite side and end the battle without losing any of his own ships. Of course, after the restrictions, Chen Ming couldn't go so far. After he entered the simulation equipment and confirmed that the restrictions were met, he dispatched 30 frigates normally. The three ships were divided into 10 groups, evenly opened the angle, and began to explore forward. When the simulated battlefield just started, although Chen Ming could not see the opponent's fleet from the sensor, the positions of both parties in this small-scale battle were fixed right in front. The distance at the beginning also gives the warring parties an opportunity to deploy different tactics. Therefore, Chen Ning must test it out at the beginning to understand the other party's plans. His biggest advantage is fighting head-on, but the opponent may not always do what he wants. Understand the opponent's information and find a way to drag the battlefield into the situation he wants to see most. This is what he will do next. Therefore, Chen Ming's own fleet stayed where it was and was just constantly arranging new three-ship teams to go out to explore and look for traces of the enemy fleet. Although Chen Ning's search attempts were unsuccessful, he was unable to find any trace of the opponent's fleet. However, the other side seemed to have found a three-ship team that he sent out, because Chen Ning suddenly discovered that one of the teams he sent out was suddenly blocked from communication signals. Although signal shielding is a type of electronic warfare, electronic warfare is more than signal shielding. Chen Ming had no settings at the beginning and was naturally affected. However, influence is influence, and the scope of this influence is limited to command through normal communication channels. Chen Ming does not rely on communication signals at all. He can directly and intuitively grasp the situation of each spacecraft, even if the signal is blocked. At the moment when the signal was blocked, 
The sensors of Chinming's three spacecraft immediately scanned the enemy fleet approaching. A small fleet consisting of five destroyers and 25 frigates appeared near Chinming's three ship squadron. Since the fleet cluster has a certain bonus to the spacecraft sensing equipment, they can scan a wider range. So they discovered the three escorts in advance and surrounded them. And within a few seconds, when the sensors of the three escort ships detected the small fleet, they were violently attacked and wiped out almost instantly. But from the moment, the signal is blocked. Chen Ming's flagship was still receiving normal signals from the spacecraft returning. This means that the other party has deciphered the communication code of his command contact, pretending that everything is normal now, and is preparing to cause trouble. But it wasn't a big problem. Chen Ming didn't even bother to change his password. This password may even become a way for him to fight back later. But at this moment, Chen Ming suddenly thought of something. He said to Bai Quan, Even if my psychic spacecraft is destroyed and only one iron atom is left, I can still control this iron atom and perform any operation I want. Bai Quan already knew what Chen Ming was going to do the moment he heard this outrageous description. And Chen Ming's next words did not surprise him. I just saw some debris from the spacecraft hit the spacecraft opposite, leaving some debris on it. Bai Quan pinched his eyebrows and said with a headache, This simulation is mainly to test your command ability. Use less psychic power. Just think that her spaceship will remain in your field of vision forever. Don't do anything else. I will give you permission. Also, Chen Ming agreed with Bai Quan's statement. And soon the positions of these 30 spacecraft were completely locked through Bai Chuan's temporary change of settings. After the small fleet left, Chen Ning's three originally destroyed spaceships immediately gathered together and flew directly along the path of the local fleet, trying to investigate. Then Chen Ming calculated the fleet's sailing speed, and then sent 15 spaceships to each side of his fleet to continue searching for traces of the enemy fleet. Except for two of the nine small fleets, he had sent out before that had not yet been found. They continued to explore. The other seven gradually moved towards the direction of the enemy's small fleet. Although the signal shielding method used was very smooth, if Chen Ming had used communication equipment normally, he would and indeed might have been fooled. But having said that, it is certainly impossible for the other party to completely rely on signal shielding methods that cannot be sure whether it will actually work. The sudden appearance of this small fleet is most likely a bait actively released by the opponent. So after thinking about it, Chen Ming chose to step in directly. This should be the most effective way to contact the local fleet. Just as he thought, several of Chen Ming's three ship squadron that went out to explore turned towards the enemy's small fleet. Another fleet of 30 ships killed Chen Ming's two fleets using the same method. Chen Ming really didn't have the ability to reliably counterattack when the opponent did this. But he also marked the spaceship on the opposite side. The positions of another 60 ships appeared in his eyes coupled with the spacecraft set by Chen Ming himself. One third of the simulated battlefield range was completely unable to hide the traces of the main fleet on the opposite side. It won't take long for Chen Ming to completely discover the opponent's position and force the situation into the situation he wants to see. Soon another fleet of 30 ships was discovered by Chen Ming. There are a total of 300 spaceships, 120 in total, and a total of four fleets are watering outside. It is obvious that the other side wants to fight guerrillas to the end. However, the opponent still doesn't know his position. After all, who would have thought that Chen Ming's main fleet has not moved since the beginning? Therefore, the fleet on the opposite side has been running around. In addition to looking for Chen Ming's main fleet, it is obvious that they do not want to give Chen Ming any chance to drag the simulation into a frontal battlefield. The opponent just wants to gradually encroach on him by relying on the involvement of multiple fleets. Chen Ming observed for a moment, then directly chose to mobilize the main fleet and surrounded one of the small fleets that was watering outside. Although the opponent's constant appearance and attacks by small-scale fleets affected Chen Ming's search process, Chen Ming's several three-ship squadrons obtained various complex and redundant information. If he really wanted to integrate and sort out this information, he would definitely become numb and unable to figure out where the opposing fleet was, and would be completely passive. But with the help of psychic powers, Chen Ming is now no different from having clairvoyance. He has even roughly analyzed the enemy fleet's movement trajectory. And the fleet that was his first target would soon be isolated in order to interfere with the search fleet sent by Chen Ming. This was the opportunity he needed to take. Less than five minutes had passed. And before anyone knew it, the enemy fleet had been surrounded by Chen Ming's main fleet. And when the other side scanned Chen Ming's fleet, it was just like Chen Ming's three ship squadron scanned them. There was no time to react and escape and they were instantly wiped out by the firepower output of Chen Ming's fleet of 300 ships 
with unlimited ammunition and no cooling time, with lightning speed, and at the same time, the headquarters of the 14th Army Corps, Chung Shinghai, who was lying in a specialized instrument using analog equipment, stared blankly at Chenming's fleet, which seemed to be pouring ammunition endlessly, and fell into confusion for a moment. But she reacted immediately, reached out and touched the terminal next to her, and dialed Bai Quan's number. Uncle Bai! Bai Quan was also observing the situation on the battlefield through the external interface of the simulation equipment at this time. Of course, he knew why Cheng Xinghai called at this time. But he could only say, I warned you. But, nothing to worry about. He just has such ability. I see. Cheng Xinghai put down the terminal, and his previous idea of fighting Chen Ming, who defeated Cheng Xinghai, so that he could turn around and mock Cheng Xinghai was thrown aside. There was only competition in her eyes, and she refocused her consciousness on the simulation device. The decision she made at the beginning was correct. The gorillas must fight to the end. Once Chen Ming really dragged her into a frontal battle, she would definitely lose miserably. After Cheng Xinghai made her decision, she completely divided the main fleet that had been quietly lurking behind Chen Ming's fleet into several small fleets. They were completely dispersed throughout the battlefield, relying on their keen sense of the battlefield to avoid Chen Ming's main fleet, and continuously killed the small spaceships that Chen Ming released to explore the way. Then, there's no after that. Every time Cheng Xinghai kills one of Chen Ming's three ship squadrons, one of her own fleets will be completely exposed to Chen Ming's sight, making it impossible to hide. This allowed Chen Ming to quickly gather his forces and destroy two more small-scale fleets wandering outside. When Cheng Xinghai arrived here, he also noticed something was wrong. Chen Ming seems to have the ability to accurately locate, and all interference is in vain. If she continues like this, she will only be divided and broken by Chen Ming. The key is that this division was divided by herself. So Cheng Xinghai could only let the fleet regroup, and the remaining fleet of about 200 spaceships stayed in place and reorganized. She was now forced by Chen Ming to have the only option of fighting head on, and she had to face it in the best possible condition. This is what Chen Ning wants to see most. Moreover, his spaceship does not require wartime maintenance and can maintain the best condition at all times. But the opponent's spacecraft obviously needs time to rest after experiencing several battles. Therefore, Chen Ning will not give his opponent a chance to breathe. The remaining fleets he had on hand gathered together. The battle line opened, and they ran over towards the direction where the opponent's fleet was gathering. Then Cheng Xinghai felt what Cheng Xinghai had felt. The bullets on the opposite side were endless, and the shield on the opposite side was like an iron wall. It was difficult to defeat the shield and penetrate the armor by focusing the fire. If you don't pay attention, all the results you just created will disappear and it is no different from fighting a new spaceship. At this time, Cheng Xinghai had a deep understanding of why Bai Quan said before that he should not come to him if he was beaten to tears. She was almost crying now as she looked at the recovering fleet in front of her. Of course, it was impossible to shed tears. Cheng Xinghai still remained calm. The defense line was deployed as soon as Chen Ming's fleet approached. And at the same time, it was able to decisively maintain a stable formation and retreat under the unreasonable pressure of Chen Ming's fleet. She even used the gaps created by the details on the battle line to attract Chen Ming's spaceship to press forward directly, and then focused its fire. In this way, several Chen Ming's spaceships were indeed killed on the frontal battlefield, and her own losses will be even smaller, at least for the time being. Then Cheng Xinghai saw the wreckage of the spaceships that she had clearly destroyed suddenly merged together to form new spaceships appearing on the battlefield. You? This scene, which was like cheating, made Cheng Xinghai completely unable to maintain his image. But now that she is alone in a room using analog equipment, she doesn't need to maintain it. Bai Quan, who was watching the battle, did not stop this scene from happening. Obviously this was a normal situation. At this moment, Cheng Xinghai also suddenly imagined the scene where she turned around and was ridiculed by Cheng Xingha after losing to Chen Ming. So she quickly calmed down when faced with this outrageous situation. Her fleet has not disappeared yet, and she still has the possibility of finding a chance to make a comeback. Since Chen Ming chose to take the initiative to attack, there will always be flaws in Chen Ming's feelings at this moment. Although he was pressing down on the opponent, he felt a pressure inexplicably, because his opponent had maintained the stability of the entire front. Even though he had been retreating, the front itself was very stable, so Chen Ning could only choose to break the surface. However, all the seemingly breakthrough opportunities on all fronts are false and traps. 
if he dared to command the fleet to rush forward rashly. What happened just now would happen. His spaceship would be set on fire and directly scrapped. If even half of the wreckage was destroyed, Chen Ning would not be able to build a new spaceship based on the settings of this simulation. So much so that he couldn't find any chance to directly break through the battle line and end the battle. And although his live ammunition weapons and missile weapons have unlimited use, energy weapons also have no cooldown time. But weapons with unlimited ammunition must at least be able to hit people. As the enemy fleet continued to distance itself, the 300 escort ships seemed to be driving away a lot. But on a cosmic scale, it was still impossible to achieve sufficient shooting density. The method that Chen Ning is best at cannot produce its due effect at all when the opponent keeps retreating and shrinking. The feeling given to Chen Ning was a bit similar to when he fought against Cheng Xingha. In the same way, he quickly analyzed the shortcomings of Chen Ming's psychic abilities and then cracked them in a targeted manner based on the shortcomings. But compared to Cheng Xingha's confrontation with Chen Ming in a military spaceship, the opponent he faced this time was more rational and oppressive. Yes, it is oppressive. Chen Ming felt as if all his thoughts on the battlefield had been seen through, and he had instantly figured out how to solve them. All the commanding techniques he learned would be meaningless if he were to use them directly. He had to think of more flexible ways to use them. No matter how strong the output is, if you can't touch anyone, it's all in vain. So Chen Ning directly took advantage of the situation and focused his attention on the spaceships in the front row of the battle line. While trying to break through the battle line, Chen Ming actively created some opportunities for his spaceship to be easily focused on fire. At the same time, reinforcement spacecraft were arranged on the flanks of the spacecraft that acted as the breakthrough point. As long as they were focused on fire, they would find opportunities to directly counterattack and storm the front line. However, the opponent just wasn't fooled. Chen Ning simply refused to eat the bait he arranged on his own initiative. Several times, he would rather have no results in order to preserve the effectiveness of his fleet so he forced himself to delay. The opponent could even pay keen attention to the trap set by Chen Ning several times, or even a dozen times in a row without even looking at it, wasting the opportunity for Chen Ming's spaceship to output. However, as Chen Ming's fleet began a frontal battlefield confrontation, Chen Ning himself entered the frontal battlefield command mode and gradually became familiar with the actual command methods. Chen Ming gradually was able to intentionally or unintentionally release several prominent baits anywhere along the entire front and her methods of placing baits have become more and more proficient. Many times, Chin Ming does not think about placing baits subjectively. I simply found a place where it was appropriate to do it. And it was definitely beneficial. And then I did it. He could feel himself getting better. And he also noticed that his opponent's command gradually began to hesitate. The opponent is wondering whether these protruding spacecraft are decoys. Chung Shinghai did feel some numbness on his scalp at this moment. She could feel that Chin Ming's commanding skills were very rough at the beginning and in many ways, they were no different from those of a beginner. But during the battle with her, Chen Ming's skills were improving at a speed visible to the naked eye. From the beginning, I only knew how to do things. Or in other words, I only wanted to do things. Later, I was able to compete with her in the overall situation. It can even force her to think about some details, so that she can tell whether certain arrangements are Chen Ming's mistakes or his special arrangements and after one of her mistakes resulted in the loss of more than 10 spaceships in an instant. Even if many times she does see some opportunities that may not be bait, she can only give up. But soon, she found another opportunity. In Chen Ming's dispatch of the fleet, the spacecraft around the fleet that he placed in the center of the battle line as follow-up reinforcements had all moved forward unknowingly. This has caused the augmented fleet to gradually move away from the core position, and some are exposed within the attack range of her fleet. This must be bait but it's also her chance to make a comeback. Chung Shinghai knew that her fleet had frequently begun to malfunction after a long period of high-intensity battles. As for Chen Ming, at least she had not seen any malfunctions yet. If she continues, she will only be dragged to death by Chen Ming. So after thinking about it, Chung Shinghai made a decision. Suddenly, the battle line formed by her fleet shrank sharply, giving way to a large distance at once, although this allowed her to temporarily relieve the pressure on the front. It also meant that her own front could no longer be maintained. And Chen Ming's fleet also pressed forward to completely end this battle. And just as Chen Ming's fleet pressed forward, his own battle line also became loose to a certain extent. Chang Xinghai's fleet suddenly regrouped with an unpredictable efficiency and attacked the loosest left wing of Chen Ming's front. Her fleet forced a breakthrough and rushed towards Chen Ming's reinforcement fleet, which had no time to change direction. 
as long as these additional fleets can be taken advantage of. The situation on the battlefield will be instantly leveled, and Chengxinghai will have more opportunities to win. Qin Ming was able to notice all the spaceships on the entire battlefield. The reinforcement fleet here was of course a trap when exposed. So when Chengxinghai chose to break through here, he immediately changed the direction of the charging fleet in front, so that he could counterattack Chengxinghai's fleet from the flank at any time. But what he didn't expect was that the moment Chengxinghai was about to attack the augmented fleet, the direction of her entire fleet suddenly changed. The fleet fought against the battle damage caused by the flank attack by the reinforcement fleet and Qin Ming's remaining fleet. And a new front was drawn from the side of the reinforcement fleet to the side and rear of Qin Ming's fleet. Qin Ming instantly understood that his opponent's target was him. He is the rearmost flagship of the entire fleet. The opponent pretends to be in a trap just to look for this opportunity. As long as the flagship is destroyed, Qin Ming loses. And Cheng Xinghai did complete her idea. After losing one-third of the remaining fleet, the remaining spaceships, less than a hundred, circled to the side and rear of Qin Ming's fleet, successfully found the opportunity to focus on Qin Ming's flagship. On Qin Ming's side, most of the ships were ahead. At most, they could only temporarily turn their bows around. And there was no time to return to defense. He only had ten frigates and two destroyers left to escort him. But he had to face the output of nearly a hundred escort and destroyer mixed fleets in this short period of time. The moment Cheng Xinghai gave the final firing order, she finally couldn't hold back her anger when she saw all kinds of operations that were almost the same as cheating, and shouted in the room what she had always wanted to say to Qin Ming. You are done! Chapter 203 The Direction of the Empire The moment the enemy fleet broke through the defense line in an instant and approached the flagship with massive losses, Qin Ming did not hesitate, and the twelve spaceships left behind immediately made go maneuvers all blocking the enemy fleet's firing trajectory. It relies on the 30 times the radiation energy dissipation in the simulation setting and the ability to forcibly dissipate hard radiation energy without turning off the shields and weapons to resist the concentrated fire on the flagship. However, this nearly tenfold numerical difference and the lack of other interference attacks made it difficult for Qin Ming's spacecraft to completely absorb all the firepower, even with various blessings. Losses soon followed. Even if Qin Ming's spaceship could be reshaped into a new one after its loss, it would be difficult to do so. The opponent seized the last chance and used all his firepower to completely block it. In an instant, all the spacecraft guarding Qin Ming's flagship were destroyed, and the shield of the flagship itself was also attacked to the point of crumbling in an instant. And then the next moment, another spaceship once again blocked the flagship. Qin Ming's dozen or so spaceships, powered by psychic energy, successfully delayed the enemy's firepower until the fleet at the front of the battle line turned around and returned. At the same time, some of the diverted fleets bit the tail of Cheng Xinghai's fleet from the other side and completely surrounded it. The battle loss ratio of Cheng Xinghai's fleet was already completely out of control when they made a forced breakthrough just now. When Qin Ming succeeded in delaying time and was not killed by Cheng Xinghai's plan, her fleet was bound to perish. The overall situation has been decided. Qin Ming, who was still a little nervous at first, was completely relieved. He quickly made a note of Cheng Xinghai's unexpected plan that almost succeeded in flipping him over. He would never flip over a second time under similar circumstances in the future. Qin Ming then roughly estimated the actual consumption of mental energy required by the things that required psychic energy than he did in the simulated battle just now. If it exceeds the upper limit of his mental power, he will voluntarily admit defeat. Cheating is no fun. However, after Qin Ming did a little calculation, he was basically sure that his mental energy consumption was as good as nothing. After all, there is not a single cruiser-level spacecraft in this simulation, and the consumption of frigates and destroyers can only be said to be a waste. So in the end, Qin Ming's total loss of 300 spaceships was 53, of which 12 were expelled. The opponent will be completely destroyed in the next step, already surrounded by Qin Ming's fleet, with the protection of Qin Ming's spiritual power. Not even a single ship on the opponent can be killed. However, Qin Ming didn't get any hint of victory, so I continued to rely on the fleet that had bitten the tail of the enemy fleet to continuously strangle the remaining spaceships. By the way, capture the escape capsules launched from the spaceships that are included in the simulation. Then he took some time to carefully recall the last scene. Looking back now, Qin Ming found that he could predict in advance that there would be problems with the position of his flagship, and a slight adjustment would not give the opponent any chance. He can even use the position of his own flagship as a second-level trap to completely defeat his opponent. 
Chin Ming shook his head slightly, having nothing to say. Sure enough, he was the one to choose. At this time, it was over at the headquarters of the 14th Army. Chung Shinghai had completely given up struggling, took off the instrument that was covered with wires on his head, and dialed by Quan's phone number. While waiting for the call to be connected, her eyes gradually began to fill with tears. And the moment it was connected, Uncle Bai, Bai Quan immediately hung up the phone. After a while, Bai Quan called again and said, Are you ready? Chung Shinghai had returned to normal when he called this time. Or so it seemed. Well, is Chen Ning's spiritual power really that strong? Fake. Then this. He's even stronger. This is the result of me telling him to keep his hands a little longer and not just use his psychic powers to kill you directly. Chung Shinghai hung up the phone. He lowered his head and hugged his knees. Huddled in the equipment. Motionless. Bai Quan looked at the terminal with a busy signal and could probably guess that Chung Shinghai was autistic. The two brothers, Chung Shinghai and Chung Shinghai, had fought with each other quite a lot in the past. He had seen the scene where the two spoke loudly before the fight and remained silent after it ended countless times. He had also seen countless times when the one who lost the fight would go back to his room to shut himself up. In the past, he was worried that something might happen to them if they were autistic. But later he discovered that the two of them went back to the room purely to reflect on their own problems. Once you have finished reflecting, the confidence to fight with others will come back again. After all these years, Bai Quan is very familiar with him. So it's not a big deal. Moreover, Chung Shinghai's performance just now was actually pretty good. At least he was able to counterattack quickly even though he had almost no understanding of Chen Ming's psychic abilities. Even though the battle situation was at an overall disadvantage. He was just a hair away from winning. If four or five more spaceships could be retained, Chen Ming's previous flagship would definitely not be able to withstand the final wave of firepower output. It's a pity that there is no if. But Bai Quan changed his mind again. In the past, Chang Xing had fought against Chen Ming, whose psychic powers had not been developed at all and only had a shabby fleet. In the end, a draw was barely achieved. And in the end, external interference led to Chang Xing had being captured. Now, Chang Xing was playing against Chen Ming, whose psychic powers had been developed to a very high level, but were only partially restricted. And the strength of both sides starting fleets was fixed. So if Chang Xing fights Chen Ming again now, he may have to be beaten by Chen Ming. After all, Chen Ming's improvement in psychic abilities was much faster than Chang Xing's improvement in command skills. Not to mention that Chang Xing had been frozen in the escape cabin for two months without doing anything. And if Chang Xing had the chance to do it again, the results might be different. Bai Quan said Chang Xing a message to comfort her with similar thoughts in his mind. Just at this time, Chen Ming had also finished cleaning up the battlefield, ending the battle completely, and his consciousness was ejected from the simulation device. When he noticed that Bai Quan seemed to be waiting in the corner of the equipment room, Chen Ming said, The fight is over. I saw. As he spoke, Bai Quan walked closer to the equipment, turned off the equipment next to him, and said, I can see that your command skills have really improved during this period. You have played small-scale bait very well. Something went wrong in the end. You exposed the location of your flagship when you set up another bait. Chen Ning felt a little regretful when he heard Bai Quan's words again. He really didn't expect that his opponent could turn and break through to the side and rear of his fleet in an instant. And because of the simulation, he himself is not in danger. So the psychic effect of danger perception cannot be effective. Otherwise, when the opponent's fleet breaks through the defense line and attacks the support fleet he prepared, he should have already sensed the danger and started dispatching in advance. But at this time, Chen Ming felt that he seemed to rely too much on danger perception. Although there was no problem for him as a psyker to rely on his psychic powers. His psychic powers might expire one day. Such as when he first tried to control the mechanical race in the colony. If you give him that chance at a critical moment, he won't have a second chance. Many times he has to discover dangers that he can discover by himself. Psychics are better used as a last resort. So when Bai Quan pointed out this problem, he didn't speak harshly and admitted, Indeed, this is my problem. I will definitely remember it. Bai Quan was very satisfied with Chen Ming's learning attitude and said, There are actually some minor problems in other aspects of your overall combat effectiveness. But the flaws are not outweighed. Your opponent is someone who has completed all the basic courses of our 14th Army Corps Military Academy and has begun to complete his graduation project on the battlefield. It's normal for her to surpass you in command knowledge and ability. As long as you win in the end, 
It'll be fine, Chen Ming said modestly. I mainly rely on my spiritual power. Without my spiritual power, I would definitely not be able to beat him. You don't have to worry about this, because the opponent also uses psychic energy. Chen Ming was stunned and asked, Isn't Cheng Xingha a psychic? The other side is not Cheng Xingha. I feel a lot like that. Bai Quan nodded and said, They are indeed very similar, because both of them were taught by me, and they are his sister, Cheng Xinghai. Oh, I remember you said before that Cheng Xingha was beaten badly by someone close to him. He came out to relax and wanted to fight with Yu Hui. In the end, he happened to run into the sector military looking for me to cause trouble for that person. Yes, that's his sister. Happy. Chen Ning saw that Bai Quan's expression seemed to be mixed with a hint of worry, as if he was worried that he was still hostile to Cheng Xingha. So he took the initiative to add, Don't worry. You have already apologized for him before. I won't care about him. And I won't anger others. That's good. After Chen Ming repeated his attitude, he asked Bai Quan, What is Cheng Xinghai's spiritual power? Bai Quan pointed at his head without saying anything clearly. Chen Ming felt that it was probably a psychic ability similar to Xiao Yang's that improved his thinking ability. After all, in the battle just now, it felt a bit scary to see almost all of his arrangements being seen through. Cheng Xinghai's psychic ability should be in this area. While Chen Ming was thinking, Bai Quan glanced at the time on the terminal and said to Chen Ming, it's almost done. Let's just stop here today. I'll go watch the video again later. We will officially restart teaching tomorrow. Then I will help you review the problems in your entire game. I will also tell you one more thing during class tomorrow. The review is no problem. Chen Ming had originally planned to do this. But if he reviewed it himself, there would always be mistakes. It would be great to have Bai Quan help. But can't we talk about it now? Bai Quan likes Chen Ming's serious attitude towards study. But regarding Chen Ming's question, Bai Quan explained, Let's be more formal tomorrow. But I can tell you a little bit in advance. That is, this matter is a very important thing that I only learned about after I was promoted to Lieutenant General this time. Is it related to me? The first half of the matter is indeed related to you. And the second half of the matter can be related to you. Chen Ming subconsciously began to think about the meaning of what Bai Quan said. But what Bai Quan said alone was not enough for him to guess what Bai Quan was going to say tomorrow and Bai Quan didn't say much. But before hanging up the phone, he asked Chen Ming one more question. Would you like to meet Cheng Xinghai? Her command level itself is close to that of Cheng Xingha. After including her psychic powers, the overall level should be similar to yours without using all psychic powers. She is a good sparring opponent. My equipment has been open to you. You can use it yourself. If she lost to you, she will definitely want to fight you a few more times. Chen Ming said without much thought. Okay. He felt the importance of command skills in the battle just now. At least if he were Cheng Xinghai, he would definitely not be able to do what he did before, and would only be crushed to death by his rogue style of play. And he can definitely feel that when fighting a close battle, the training of command skills is real, while fighting on simulated equipment is different from actual combat. It never hurts to practice a few times. What's more, besides Bai Quan and Cheng Xinghai, whom Bai Quan now recommended, he really couldn't find anyone to train with. But Bai Quan was busy enough to take time out to teach every day. And Chen Ning really didn't have the slightest confidence to win in a simulated battle with Bai Quan, who had risen to lieutenant general on the battlefield. So he only had one choice left. The corners of Bai Quan's mouth turned up slightly, and he said, Then I'll send you her communication code. The next day, Chen Ming and Bai Quan returned to their previous rhythm and started teaching normally in the morning. But something was different from usual. Bai Quan came up and asked Chen Ming a question. Did you contact Cheng Xinghai yesterday? Chen Ning's mind flashed over what happened last night and said, I contacted her, but she contacted me. Bai Quan immediately explained, After I gave you her communication code, I also gave her yours. I know. She contacted me and I chatted with her for a few words. And then she said that she wanted to have another relationship with me. But I didn't agree because I had something to do. I told her to talk about it later. And there was nothing else. I feel like she doesn't look like a girl in the army. How come it doesn't look like it? A bit too lively and quite familiar. I feel like girls in the army should be more stable. Um. Bai Quan pushed up his glasses and said nothing. People who have just met Cheng Xinghai would never imagine how competitive and lively she is. Seeing that Bai Quan didn't speak, Chen Ming asked with some confusion. What's wrong? It's okay. If you get in touch with her more, you'll get to know her character. I was a little worried about you having a conflict with her. 
but it seems okay now. When Shen Ming heard this, he emphasized again. I said it yesterday. I will not anger anyone. Not even Changxing his sister. Don't worry. Okay, let's start today normally. Before we start, I need to tell you about what happened yesterday. Come on. Let's sign a confidentiality agreement first and go through the process. Bai Quan quickly sent an agreement to Qin Ming. Qin Ming read it and confirmed that there was no problem and signed it directly. Bai Quan also cleared his throat and said formally, It's about the Gallo Star Territory. I mentioned before that our 14th Legion will increase investment in the Gallo Star Territory branch and expand its influence. That is to say, we are going to take action outside. From here, we will deal with the foreign enemies that block our external direction. Qin Ming asked in confusion. I know. Didn't you say that? Do you need to sign a confidentiality agreement? Do you think the branch of the 14th Legion is capable of solving the entire Afterglow Star territory outside? No. Qin Ming answered decisively. It's okay to fight gorillas with the fleet here. Yu Wei is disgusting. It's really impossible to attack Yu Wei. Yes, I think so too. But the Empire doesn't think so. Soon, the Empire will open a new battlefield with foreign enemies in the Gallo Star territory and launch a full-scale war. Total war, why? Because there are benefits. You should be clear about the interests of Yu Wei. The Yu Wei core has excellent computing power and can communicate with itself. In addition, there is a replica of the Klecka supercomputer. These are all benefits. Klecka. Chen Ning almost forgot about this thing. A device that can create afterglow individuals. Even replicas. Has great value. Not a bad goal indeed for the Empire. But there is a problem. That is, when Chen Ming left Yu Wei, he left behind many Yu Wei individuals. Although most of them were solved during Yu Wei's internal cleansing. But to this day, there are still some afterglow individuals controlled by him surviving and they have been expanding. As long as he is given time, he will be able to control the entire Afterglow Star territory without any bloodshed. And if the Empire takes action against Yu Wei, it will be of no benefit to him. At this time, Qin Ming suddenly thought of Bai Quan's words yesterday, saying that the first half of the incident was related to him, and the relevant part was here. What about the second half? Bai Quan said immediately. I haven't finished the first half of the matter yet. Because of your relationship, the Empire changed its goal and stopped attacking Yu Wei. Instead, it chose to attack the mechanical star field next to Yu Wei. We have already guessed the effect of your psychic energy, and we have also noticed the great cleansing inside Afterglow after you left the Afterglow star territory some time ago. And the Afterglow has shrunk their colony, as if it's almost impossible to shrink. The reason is obvious. You did something over there. The Empire has every reason to believe that you have left a backup force within Yu Wei. It is only because Yu Wei has performed an internal cleanup resulting in strict management that it has temporarily failed to perform. But your afterglow must remain in the afterglow star field and continue to expand. It is expected that it will take at least three years of diffusion time to control most of the afterglow star field. Therefore, after discussion by the senior officials of the Empire, they gave up the attack on the afterglow star territory. But opportunity waits for no one. And the Empire did not completely give up on this idea. Instead, it changed its target and replaced it with the machine race. Bai Quan sent Chen Ming the latest complete star map around the Gallo Star Territory, which marked the scope of the Afterglow Star Territory and the Mechanical Race Star Territory. The galaxy of the Mechanical Race that Chen Ming visited last time was also specially marked. Bai Quan continued, The machine tribe itself does not have much value. Although the Bai Yun steel material is good, it is not rare. You have to fight with the machine tribe to get it and the mechanical family's chip has not been deciphered so far. It has no value except for trading with Yu Wei or dismantling it into materials. But the things left by another civilization in the hands of the mechanical tribe are very valuable. In a sense, it can be equal to or even higher than the harvest from Yu Wei. Bai Quan paused for a moment and said the second half of the sentence. Of course it may be lower. This is a risk. But because of your existence, the Empire is willing to accept this risk. Chen Ming pursed his lips and didn't know what to say. Bai Quan didn't wait for Chen Ming to speak, and continued, Let me ask you a question. You can control the mechanical tribe. Right. Right. Chen Ming could answer this question, and there was no need to hide it. After all, Chen Ming had already controlled the mechanical cruisers in front of the entire pirate space station galaxy, and sent them back to his temporary stronghold. After getting a positive answer from Chen Ming, Bai Quan said, 
but we didn't find anything similar to Yue's situation on the mechanical side. Your control over the machine tribe is different from your control over Afterglow. Your spiritual energy cannot spread through the machine tribe. Chen Ming was surprised when Bai Quan said this, and asked, How do you say it? In the video of when you met the phase beast before, it was obvious that you were going to attack and plunder the mechanical colony. But logically speaking, you already have the experience with Yue before, and you can definitely send a machine clan to infiltrate the hinterland of the machine clan and gradually control their city. Be a parasite and keep taking in more supplies. When you find the right opportunity, take them all away. This is definitely the easiest and most effective way. But you didn't do that. You chose the most direct way to plunder the resources of the Machinery Clan. You also called in additional members of the Machinery Clan, almost blocking you in the galaxy. This speaks volumes. So we are speculating that it is the hive mind of the machine race that is different from that of the afterglow that affects your psychic energy on them. Chen Ming was silent for a moment and replied, Yes, all the individuals of the mechanical race controlled by me will break away from their hive mind and cannot help me stay in the original place and spread like afterglow. After Chen Ming finished speaking, he immediately added, I also have a question to ask. Isn't the Empire already fighting Yu Hui and the Machine Tribe on the borders in all directions? Why is it opening a new battlefield? And the Yue and the Machine Tribe here have been blocking the door for so many years. Why did they just decide to do this recently? Bai Quan said, Your two questions can be combined into one, which is why the Empire wants to open a new battlefield in the border star field of the Gallo Star territory at this point in time. The answer is actually quite simple. Chapter 204 Early War Bai Quan directly released the star map of the entire empire. The straight line distance from one end of the empire to the other end is almost equal to two galaxies laid flat there. But the entire territory of the empire can accommodate more than two galaxies. So although Chen Ming had some understanding of the vast territory of the empire before, it was still a bit shocking to see it again now. After the star map was completely released, Bai Quan pointed to the countless orange marked areas on the edge of the empire and said, First of all, not all places where battles occur are battlefields. Those low intensity battlefields are not battlefields at all. They can only be regarded as places for training troops. Just like the borders between us and the mechanical tribe. Although we fight them to the death. Most of the time it's just small scale friction. After all, the machine tribe are not fools. They don't have a cluster large enough to pose a threat to the empire on the border of the empire. On the premise that we have no intention of active expansion. They don't dare to harass us too much. The only truly large-scale battle is with Yuhui's headquarters. Bai Quan pointed to another star field called Sunset, which is at the opposite end of the empire from the Gallo star field. Only this place is marked in red on the star map. So we're just opening up a second battlefield where we're really going to have all-out war. And we open up a new battlefield. Or a reason to launch a war. Have you seen the recent news? A wave of deformed children has begun to appear throughout the empire. You should be aware of this. Right. Chin Ming nodded and said. The Empire seems to have no good solution. Of course, there is no solution. As a person who is the cause of this wave of deformed children, how do you think we should solve it? I can't come. Even the president of the Psychic Association has no solution. So what can he say? Bai Quan obviously knew what the answer was. And asked, Since this internal conflict cannot be resolved, what do you think the Empire should do? As a person who had taken a political class, Chen Ming understood immediately and said, of course, it is to transfer the conflict to the outside world and use the war to shift the blame to the mechanical tribe and Yue. Then why doesn't the Empire continue to invest in the frontal battlefield? Bai Quan explained. The war started a long time ago and has never stopped. But if you look at the front line, it is still very close to the border of our empire. And you will understand what the situation is like on the front line. The main force of Afterglow has blocked our attack. And as a defender, they have been shrinking. The progress of the front line can be said to be quite slow. Although we managed to advance a certain distance on the front line during the time when you just emerged and were taken away by the afterglow. Judging from the result, it was a failure. On the contrary, the front line is still completely deadlocked. We can only find another way. If we continue to invest in the battlefield on the front line, it is very likely that it will not divert the conflict, but make it further difficult for the empire to recover. Chin Ming understood. Once the Empire's investment on the front line fails to have an effect in the first place and is instead held back by the afterglow, the Empire's method of using war to divert conflicts will be ineffective, and the chaos that has arisen in the country may intensify. That's why the Empire must open up another battlefield where it can definitely win 
and open up the situation in local areas. Rely on this huge victory to ease the pressure caused by internal conflicts. Bai Quan continued. As long as the empire launches a war, relies on the war dividends to survive the first wave, and is not directly dragged down, and achieves the first results, all internal problems in recent years will be solved by themselves. As long as this tough battle can be completely won, the development of a mechanical race's star field will bring at least 50 years of development to the empire. In the future, if we thoroughly digest the star field, obtain the resources within the star field, and obtain the heritage of another civilization, the benefits will be even more unimaginable. What nonsense internal conflicts are all fake in the face of the dividends brought by the war. The entire empire is thriving. As soon as Bai Quan finished speaking, Chen Ming said as if concluding, So this is the reason for the war. That's right. Then you continue to think about it later. What happens after that? When the bonus is used up? 50 years is only two or three generations. The dividends that are eaten up by two or three generations are not called dividends at all. Dividends are things that the senior should leave to the juniors that can last for a long time. So take a longer view and consider. After we win the war in the Gala Star territory here, do you think we should continue? Chen Ming thinks the answer is yes. Of course. As the initiator of the question, Bai Quan also knew the answer. After nodding, he continued, So after the war between the Gala Star territory and the Machine Tribe is won, the Empire will return the focus of the war to the front line. The huge dividends ahead will allow the empire to easily drive its huge body. If the entire empire works together, can it cause trouble for Yue on the frontal battlefield? Or cause trouble for other mechanical races? Definitely. Then that's the complete answer to the question you just asked. Actually, the people at the top of the empire can guess what they are thinking. Isn't it normal to have a little logic? Moreover, it is said, I mean it is said, that the high-level officials' thoughts are not limited to obtaining war dividends. They even want to use this war to stimulate the entire empire and start the second era of development. Chen Ming knew what benefits the first pioneering era had for the empire. But the opening of the pioneering era, it's not that easy. Is it? Bai Quan said matter-of-factly. Of course it's not that easy. The expansion of the empire stopped not because of the enemy, but because of the empire itself. Because the size of the empire was too large compared to the technological level of the previous era. There was no way to effectively control it. The breadth effect of continuing to expand is far greater than the positive benefits. And after the period of barbaric growth, the empire must cultivate itself and recuperate for a period of time. In addition, there are mechanical tribes and Yue blocking the road outside. So there is basically no profit from winning. That's why the pioneering era will stop. Bai Quan suddenly gave an example and said, If a person goes for a long distance run, it will be difficult to start again if he stops halfway. You can imagine how difficult it will be for the empire to return to the pioneering era. But the recently developed antimatter technology and the energy crystallization technology you developed before ensure that the endurance and flight capabilities of all spacecraft equipped with these two technologies are almost doubled. Coupled with the advancement of technology during the many years of the empire's silence, the upper limit of the empire's management scale has been greatly increased. The prerequisites for pioneering the era have been met. As long as the empire that has stayed in place is allowed to move again, the empire will embark on the road of pioneering. This is the best opportunity we've had in years. If we can open up the era again, all internal contradictions will be submerged under the huge interests of the entire universe. This Gallo Star territory is where the show kicks off. As Bai Quan spoke, he felt the emotions in his words were slightly excited. However, Chen Ming didn't have any special feelings. After all, he didn't know much about the history of the Empire. It was only when I saw the actual map that I felt a little emotional. When Bai Quan saw Chen Ming's reaction, he did not continue to talk in a general direction, but changed the topic to something closer to Chen Ming. In fact, if you are concerned about commodity prices in normal times, the prices of some wartime supplies are slowly rising, and the prices of various raw materials are also changing. Although it seems to be just a normal fluctuation at the moment, it should rise soon. Even if I don't tell you now, you will definitely notice it in half a year. Shen Ming thought for a moment and said, Prices are indeed rising a bit. But you said it would take half a year for me to notice it. Does it mean that the war with the machine tribe will not start until half a year? Bai Quan immediately denied. No. It's just that a war against a star region is not that simple. It requires the entire empire to take action. Although the empire is a huge thing and it is difficult to move, it is not impossible to turn around. The Empire will try its best to maintain 
the normal prices of various war-related materials in the country. Generally speaking, it will be no problem to stabilize them for half a year. So I say that after half a year, you will definitely feel that various supplies are starting to be scarce and prices are starting to rise. But the war has actually started now. And it is still in its earliest stages. Chen Ming asked subconsciously, What stage? Investigation. Our war against the machine race can be roughly divided into five stages. Investigation. Infiltration. Destruction. Frontal attack and ending. There should be no other answer as to whether it can be executed completely from beginning to end. But whether it can be executed smoothly depends on the performance of our 14th Army Corps in the middle. Only the 14th Legion participated in the war? Of course not. The strength of the mechanical race in a star field cannot be achieved by one legion of the 14th Legion. We are only responsible for the initial work and overall coordination. When the war officially begins, the Empire's official army and other legions will enter the battlefield under our guidance and command. Chen Ming thought for a while this time and said, I understand. So the Empire was preparing to rely on war to divert conflicts. And then when selecting targets, it changed its targets because of me. That's the first half of the thing about me. So I guess the second half is that you want to invite me to join the war against the machine race. Bai Quan said without denying. Yes. I just said that the Empire's war against the machine race has begun. And the investigation has been ongoing since some time ago. But all investigations are shallow. The only deeper investigation is the investigation carried out by our ship quietly after having the video recording of the phase beast that you transmitted back before. The other initial investigations into the shallow areas of the mechanical family are almost complete so far. Next, we must go deeper. Your psychic power has the ability to control the mechanical race, which will definitely be of great help. Bai Quan suddenly stood up from behind his desk, looked at Chen Ming and said seriously, I now formally invite you, Mr. Chen Ming, to join the Empire's battle against the mechanical star field as a temporary tactical instructor as a psyker. Enjoy all the benefits of an Imperial Colonel level officer and only need to bear the obligations that an imperial citizen must bear. It sounds like a simple treatment, but the value contained in it goes beyond these two sentences. However, Chen Ning did not give a direct answer, but asked, Do you really believe that I can contribute to the mechanical clan's affairs? This is a major event in the Star Territory. You've proven yourself. Chen Ning was silent for a moment. Some time ago, Chen Ning went to Yu Hui Star Field, and when he left, Yu Hui was disturbed, and the Star Field of the Mechanical Tribe. Chen Ning didn't ask Bai Quan what would happen if he refused. Because it would just be nonsense. The Empire has already started to run. And it will not stop because of personal ideas. Being able to change the trajectory because of him was already something that surprised him. It was absolutely impossible to stop. Even if Chen Ming doesn't join, the Empire will definitely find other solutions. But they will be more difficult. Therefore, Chen Ming's silence at this time was indeed considering Bai Quan's proposal. After all, this proposal coincided with his previous idea. Chen Ming was already thinking about where to go next. Because in the next period of time, almost all searches for habitable planets that may exist near the temporary stronghold have been completed. And the second jump will begin soon. Then he would have only two choices. Either go out with his pioneering fleet, help out occasionally, and concentrate on research. Either continue to stay here and do some things that need to be done in the Empire. Such as providing some improved technology to Xiaoyang so that it is convenient to provide more logistical support in the empire itself. As for the previous option, to be honest, Chen Ming didn't really want to choose it. Of course, it doesn't mean that Chen Ming doesn't want to continue to develop. It's simply too uncomfortable to go out, since Chen Ming can basically do the same thing if he stays at home and goes out with the pioneering fleet. And whether he is in the pioneering fleet or not, his psychic energy can always reach where it should be as soon as possible. So given the choice, Chen Ning would rather stay in a place with more people. The feeling of being alone outside can't be alleviated by chatting on the phone with someone every day. He must return to the human world in person to experience the feeling of returning to the human world. Therefore, Chen Ming's idea itself is to stay in the Empire and remotely control Brilliant and others to develop. And it won't be long before Xiao Yang's side will send the second supreme point over. The matter of opening a hyperspace channel can even be left directly to other afterglow individuals. He could turn his head and do something else. That being the case, when Bai Quan suddenly mentioned this matter to him, he might as well just get involved in it. Not only for the benefits that Bai Quan said would come from participating, but also for the precious things or technologies contained in the relics of another civilization. 
Chinning could be said to be very greedy for that civilization. But the coordinates, he discovered, were far away. There is one nearby. And the chances are much greater than those coordinates. And since the Empire wants to take action against the Machinery Clan, it means that there will definitely be countless battles breaking out in the Mechanical Clan Starfield in the future. Large-scale battlefields are the best opportunity to test command capabilities. Chin Ming felt that he could give it a try. I can cooperate with you in researching the machine race. But, Bai Quan understood the meaning of Chin Ming's words very well, and added to what he said before. Any contribution you make in the war will be rewarded accordingly by the Empire. Any loot captured in the battles you participate in will not be restricted by the internal loot seizure rules of the 14th Legion. And it's not just rewards from the Empire. There is also a reward and punishment mechanism within our 14th Legion. If you don't want to directly participate in the battle, then you can stay under the name of our research institute. If various research institutes produce effective analysis reports or other research on the enemy during the war, they can receive corresponding military merits. Of course, if you don't need it, I can try to help you change it into something you may need. Bai Quan thought for a while and said, We can influence the local government and provide you with policy support. And all kinds of restrictions will give you the green light directly. And haven't you been purchasing supplies over there? I can provide you with a new way. All the basic supplies you need can be sold to you at cost prices. As long as the investigation and research on the machine clan goes smoothly. The policy release means that it is easier for Lao Wu to purchase materials. After all, transactions of bulk materials always have to go through the local government. Although Lao Wu has been at the pirate space station, all the supplies have been sent to the boss's colony. Although there will be no problems with government relations if there is a boss, Chin Ming still has a more stable relationship that is definitely his own. And Bai Quan said the cost price is even better. One third of Chin Ming's current temporary base's material sources are provided by his boss. Although the boss originally wanted to provide it to Chin Ming for free, Chin Ming refused and at least purchased it at the cost price. Later, a temporary stronghold was built, and a considerable part of it could be deducted from the data of these surveyed galaxies and planets. So this third of the supplies is not bad. But the other two thirds were bought by Lao Wu from various manufacturers, relying on his own connections or the factory director's connections. Comparing the current purchase price with the bosses, the profit is at least 50%. This is very unfriendly to Chen Ming. If these two thirds can be purchased at full cost price, that will definitely be good news for Chen Ming. Chen Ming currently has a capital flow of less than 20 billion. The supply of materials for the subsequent construction of a second temporary stronghold and two temporary strongholds will only last for three or four months at most. Of course, this is without counting Chen Ming's current regular income that has not yet been received, his hyperspace jump engine patent and the pirate business, which has been booming recently, can last for another month or two. If the second batch of antimatter patent royalties is obtained, it will last even longer. But Chen Ning is not sure when it will be delivered. So an open source is not that easy. Saving money is also a good choice. Therefore, Chin Ming said decisively, That's easy to say. As long as he is given money, he can directly take off the underwear of the machine clan. Anyway, his psychic power cannot completely control the entire mechanical clan due to the mechanical clan's own psychic network. He can trick the mechanical race even more easily than Yu Wei. Generally speaking, I don't participate in other combat matters. But if you are willing to come out of the spaceship, I will be happy to help. Bai Quan smiled and did not directly take up Chen Ming's topic. Instead, he took out a contract that seemed to have been drawn up long ago and sent it to Chen Ming and said, Let's see if there are any problems. If there's no problem, let's sign it. Chen Ming took a rough look and found that the content of the contract was the same as what Bai Quan said. Let him be a temporary tactical instructor without a military rank and without being forced to join the army. But they can enjoy the treatment of a colonel level officer and the obligations of an ordinary person. You must know that the one above the colonel is the senior colonel. And if it is higher up, it is directly the major general. This treatment is definitely not low. It's just that Chen Ning feels that something is missing. But before he could ask, Bai Quan spoke first. It's not easy to write down the preferential treatment in the policy, and when you actually purchase materials in bulk. But they will all be there. I can personally guarantee this. Chen Ming immediately suppressed his words. He thought about it for a moment and said, That's okay. After confirming that there were no other problems with the contract, Chen Ming signed his name happily. Bai Quan also received the contract with a smile and said to Chen Ming, A certificate will be mailed to Wuhan in a few days. Remember to sign for it. 
Then I want to confirm with you again. Is there any way for the mechanical clan you control to blend into the original mechanical clan? Chin Ming shook his head and said, There is really no way. The mechanical race is more troublesome than Yu Wei. Every individual of Yu Wei is different. I control it. As long as I don't give some obviously abnormal orders. It won't look any different from other Yu Wei. But the individuals of the mechanical race that I control will be judged as abnormal sub-individuals. And they are just like aliens in the eyes of the mechanical race. Chen Ming's serious answer made by Quan ponder for a moment. And then asked, Then how does the machine race judge whether the same kind is abnormal? Can it be achieved by modifying the identity mark of the machine race you control? Chen Ming actually never thought about this issue. After all, the machine race he controls is directly separated from the machine race's own hive network. This is not a matter of recognition at all, but rather the ability to detect anomalies and anomalies without identifying the machine race. So Chen Ning could only answer with some ambiguity. This may be more metaphysical. I'm not completely sure. Bai Quan reassured Chen Ning and said, It's okay. Psychers who officially join the Empire's official forces generally have a think tank behind them. Specialized people can help think about the direction of spiritual expansion. They can also help think about and test the upper limit of spiritual energy and how to use it. As long as you can figure out the basics. There will always be someone who can help you figure out a solution. Although you have not officially joined. I will definitely not give you anything less. Chen Ming was not happy because Bai Quan said he would arrange for someone to help him. Instead, he frowned slightly. Bai Quan noticed this keenly. And after his recent contact with Wuin, he quickly understood Chen Ming's concerns and said, I told you about your theory of psychic associations. It is said that psychers should develop naturally. But we generally think that this is for potential psychers. In fact, more psychers should carry out systematic learning. The sooner they start, the final achievements they will achieve will definitely be higher than those achieved by slowly exploring on their own. Of course, you definitely have potential and are a genius. So we definitely respect your opinion and will not conduct actual psychic tests. Our people will only give you some suggestions based on the situation you explain. If someone crosses the line, you can tell me directly and I will stop it immediately. Chin Ming nodded and said, do you have any researchers from the mechanical tribe? It's best if they know a little bit about psychic energy. It might be easier to talk to them about some things. I'll help you make arrangements right away. But I'm not in the headquarters right now. And it may take a day to mobilize the manpower. I'm not in a hurry. I think you might be more anxious. Two. Bai Quan had an expression on his face that he didn't know whether he was embarrassed or dumbfounded. Let's start what I said yesterday. Let's help you review the battle between you and Chang Xingha. Chapter 205 Net Worth The morning passed quickly. Bai Quan ended his communication with Chen Ming after summarizing to Chen Ming the problems that had arisen in the previous simulated battle. Then he saw the message on the terminal that Chang Xinghai had replied to him during class in the morning. The content is quite long. And it's basically a complaint about Chen Ming's psychic perversion. Bai Quan summed it up in one sentence. If you lose, you lose. Only when you win can you laugh back. This was in response to Bai Quan's words of comfort to her yesterday. It seemed that Cheng Xinghai had completely come out of autism. Much faster than before. At the end of this message, Cheng Xinghai wrote another sentence. Don't tell Cheng Xinghai about this incident. Bai Quan raised the corners of his mouth and put away the terminal. He might have told Cheng Xinghai the news before. After all, he was happy to see Cheng Xinghai and Cheng Xinghai compete with each other. But now that Chen Ming is here, and he happens to have other ideas, Let's just let Chen Ming compete with Cheng Xinghai. Cheng Xinghai will definitely go to Chen Ming later. He just needs to look at the situation from time to time and add fuel to the fire. Although Bai Quan himself does not understand this aspect of things. He is married, so he has external help. In this kind of matter, it is always right as long as he does what his wife says. Just when he thought about this, Bai Quan subconsciously thought of the wave of deformed children in the empire and couldn't help but frown. This is something he has to consider at his current age. But now, he has no suitable solution. When Bai Quan had a headache because of the child, Chen Ming also sorted out the mistakes he made in the simulation for the last time to ensure that he would not make them again in the future. Then he mentally reviewed his understanding of the mechanical race itself and the related knowledge he had mastered. Everything is clear to me. Just wait until Bai Quan calls someone over tomorrow to explain it to him. He will have to exercise caution when the time comes as there are some things that cannot be exposed. After figuring out what to do next, Chen Ming also planned to sum up his own power now. Now that you have decided to join this war, you should make the necessary preparations. 
although Chen Ming said that he would not take the initiative to help the 14th Army in a fight. And he could not even get up in a large-scale battle. He would eventually have the opportunity to fight in the autumn wind. Accurately measuring his own abilities and choosing the right time to insert is what he should do. But before Chen Ming started to do this, he suddenly received a phone call. A clear and lively female voice sounded from the terminal. Hey! H. Lo! Chen Ming! Chang Xinghai? What's the matter? Are you free now? Can you have another one? Chen Ming thought about it for a moment. He is not in a hurry to calculate his own strength. After all, his things are there and will not escape. And the Empire's war against the machine race is still in a very early stage. So he agreed. Okay. Ten minutes later, Chen Ming's consciousness once again sank into the simulation equipment of the 14th Legion branch. But what was different from last time was that when Chen Ming's consciousness appeared in the flagship command room, he suddenly heard Chang Xinghai's voice. Hey, can you hear me? Chen Ming tried to speak directly in the command room with his consciousness that had sunk into the simulation equipment. Can the simulation equipment still hold conversations? And Chang Xinghai's voice sounded again. Yes. Under normal circumstances, the communication between the two sides is not turned on. But it doesn't matter if it is turned on in private. It can be used to trash talk each other. Or it can be used to communicate and test. Chen Ming always felt that the order of the two purposes mentioned by Cheng Xinghai was reversed. But this was not a problem. The question was, What are you driving it for? Ha ha. It depends on the situation. Cheng Xinghai chuckled lightly and quickly entered into his last serious attitude and asked Chen Ming, Are you ready? Chen Ming did not reply for the time being, but first took a look at the rules of this simulation. Generally speaking, the rules were the same as those restricted by Bai Quan in the previous game. But the difference is that in addition to 50 destroyers and 250 frigates, the two sides fighting this time also have one more cruiser. It may be that Cheng Xinghai once felt that small-scale operations without cruisers could not fully utilize her command capabilities. So she made some modifications. Jin Ning looked at the ruler of the special model of the 14th Legion. And then at the unlimited logistics and completely unrestricted maintenance capabilities. Ready. Then let's start. I won't lose again this time. Um. Chen Ming responded. The ruler instantly jumped to the face of Cheng Xinghai's fleet. And the terrifying frontal firepower blessed by psychic energy instantly cleared a large number of low-level spacecraft that had just entered combat status from the rear of Cheng Xinghai's fleet. Cheng Xinghai didn't know Chen Ming well enough. So she didn't expect Chen Ming to play like this. However, she reacted quickly. The ruler who commanded the reformed 14th Legion of the same model in the center of the fleet immediately changed direction and took most of the damage. The other ships moved around the flanks, trying to put some side and stern pressure on the ruler, who had strong frontal firepower. But Chen Ning didn't care about the damage those boats caused to the ruler, and even bore the damage and stared at those boats that dared to get close. His goal was very clear. As long as Cheng Xinghai's boat was empty, there would be no chance of her overturning. Chen Ming relied on simulated spiritual power to almost force the ruler to take the damage of this fleet. It has to be said that the reformed ruler of the 14th Legion is also a tough one, which fits Chen Ming's stereotype of military spaceships very well. However, after destroying nearly half of Cheng Xinghai's boat, the ruler's armor was about to collapse. It is about to threaten the very structure of the spacecraft before the ruler could bear it anymore. Chen Ming started the jump engine and disappeared in front of Cheng Xinghai's fleet. And Cheng Xinghai was just a little shocked that Chen Ming's psychic energy could jump quickly and multiple times. And that a cruiser could kill half of a fleet of 300 spaceships that also had cruisers in one encounter. But now she was full of confidence to win Chen Ming. Because when the battle just started, she had already sent some spaceships to other places to lock the position of Chen Ming's main fleet. In the small scale battlefield, the overall distance between the two fleets is not far. She then inferred Chen Ming's rate of repairing the cruiser based on her previous observation of Chen Ming's repair of the spacecraft. As long as we rush over now, we can definitely take care of all the rest of Chen Ming's spaceships before Chen Ming's ruler completes repairs. Without Chen Ming's ruler staying with the main fleet, Chen Ming's main fleet would only be completely crushed by her ruler. As long as she can take this opportunity to kill the large force, even if she only has half of the remaining fleet, she can definitely defeat Chen Ming if she is prepared in advance. But, when Cheng Xinghai's fleet had just arrived in front of Chen Ming's main fleet, which was still standing still without moving, Chen Ming Kai has been fully repaired and the ruler with full health has jumped back. At this moment, he seemed to hear Cheng Xinghai whisper a dirty word. Chen Ming heard it right. Cheng Xinghai did not hold back. 
although she had already heard about some of the effects of Chunming's psychic energy from Bai Quan. But when she actually saw Chunming using the psychic effects that Bai Quan didn't tell her, she still felt perverted. And she now understands how Chunming's psychic repair power works. It's not the fixed repair speed she thought before, but the repair speed based on percentage. Whether it's a big ship or a small ship, it was purely because of the size of the spacecraft that limited the scope of Chunming's spiritual energy, which made her think that Chunming's spiritual energy could not be repaired very quickly, which ultimately led to this situation. It was too late to change her strategy now. She could only try to fight back on the battlefield and try to struggle. Naturally, Chen Ming would not hold back. With a full status ruler supported by a complete fleet, it was impossible to lose against an enemy that had already lost more than half of its strength on the frontal battlefield. This is no longer a problem of operation. It is simply the crushing of pure psychic values. For a while, only Cheng Xinghai's fleet could be seen disappearing on the battlefield. While typing, Chen Ming seemed to hear a hint of crying coming from the communication channel, which made him a little embarrassed. I made a mistake and threw away a few ships so that Chang Xinghai wouldn't be able to kill even a single ship. At the same time, the ruler quickly stepped up his efforts and ended the battle completely. Although Chen Ming did this, if he does it again next time, he will still hit him like this. It's just Chang Xinghai's side. Uncle Bai. It didn't take long for Bai Quan to receive another call from Chang Xinghai. He had just contacted the relevant personnel and was going to chat with Chen Ming tomorrow. He just had some time to chat with Chang Xinghai. Then he learned about the second battle between her and Chen Ming. It can only be said that Bai Quan knew that Chang Xinghai would definitely lose when the cruiser came out. In the case of the same fleet size, the higher the fleet level and the larger the scale, the easier it will be for Chen Ming to win as long as the overall fleet does not exceed the upper limit of Chen Ming's psychic power. So Bai Quan could only say, I forgot to remind you. Don't fight with Chen Ming's cruiser. Especially in a small scale battle without logistics. Chang Xinghai's tone was full of grievances. And he said, But he has only studied for more than a month. And he has never learned long-term combat. If I really do this, I will be bullying him. Bai Quan shook his head and said, Then you can only fight small-scale battles with him. My teaching progress is like this. He has already learned very quickly. Large-scale battles will be learned in the next few semesters. Or you can contact other people yourself and find a few more people who can take charge of logistics. You can divide your simulation into two teams and let Chen Ning be responsible for fighting. Right. Cheng Xinghai thought about Bai Quan's proposal carefully and felt that it seemed feasible. The cry he was pretending to be disappeared immediately. And he said to Bai Quan in a sweet voice, Thank you. Uncle Bai. Bai Quan put down the terminal and various thoughts flashed through his mind. In fact, at first glance, such a long-term operation with logistical constraints can indeed help Cheng Xinghai gain some advantages on the battlefield. After all, Chen Ming's spiritual power still has to rely on logistics. When logistics is restricted, Chen Ming's spiritual power will naturally not be able to fully exert its due effect. But Bai Quan knew how outrageous Chen Ming's psychic powers were. So he's ready for some fun. A simulation captain of this scale will definitely have to find him as the referee when Chen Ming is involved. He will definitely let Chen Mingling use his full capabilities. He also knew the logistical horrors of Chen Ming's psychic powers. All materials can be transported instantaneously. And all industrial equipment can maintain overload operation like spacecraft control by Chen Ming. And the time it takes to establish a complete spacecraft production industrial system is only limited by Chen Ming's mental power. And of course Chen Ming's own technology. But Bai Quan still believes in Chen Ming's technical level in this basic industry. So when the time comes, he could already see Cheng Xinghai being pushed flat by Chen Ming's fleet. I just don't know if Chen Ming has time to participate in this kind of long-term battle that requires deep consciousness connection. Of course, if Chen Ming is willing to participate and has a high probability of winning this game, Bai Quan will also find excuses to exercise his commanding ability to limit the use of Chen Ming's psychic powers in the simulation. As long as Chen Ming's psychic power can be restrained, Cheng Xinghai should be able to seize the chance of winning. It's best for the two of them to win and lose. And play more games. This is the situation he wants to see most now. On Chen Ming's side, although he was taken to simulate a fight by Cheng Xinghai for an hour, it was not a big problem, and it ended quickly anyway. A battle of this scale is not good for training his command ability. It seems that even if Bai Quan is not around, he will have to take the initiative to make some restrictions on himself. Of course, this will happen later. Now Chen Ming continues to count his own situation. The first is naturally the easiest to count working capital that Chen Ming currently has on hand. 
totaling 18.7 billion, which is used for the maintenance of temporary strongholds and the purchase of materials. The second is the spacecraft controlled by Chunming. Escorts and expulsions can basically not be counted now. After all, after the temporary stronghold was established, those spaceships that were not originally his afterglow have been completely attributed to him. However, it is still necessary to keep statistics on cruisers. Chin Ming currently has five human cruisers, including one Stardust class, one Supreme Point class, two Defenders and one Colossus class. Although Chin Ming planned to feed one of the Defenders to the Insect Queen, the Insect Queen has not eaten it yet, so it is still included in the cruisers he owns for the time being. The Supreme Point that Xia Yang promised before is still on the way, so there is no need to calculate it yet. In addition to the human cruisers, there are also four Afterglow cruisers Chin Ming. Brilliance level. Brilliance level. Refraction level and scintillation level. Brilliance. Brilliance and twinkling are all obtained by buying Afterglow and getting a spaceship. The refraction class cruiser was indirectly controlled by Chin Ming through the extraordinary when he cooperated with Bai Quan to invade the Yuhui giant shipyard. As the largest and highest quality spaceship that Chin Ming currently has on hand. It is driven by HR to be responsible for the security of the temporary base. There are a total of four spaceships of the machine race. The model names of the three mechanical cruisers are all very ordinary, mechanical standard cruiser. Obviously standard spaceships. It has a long and narrow hull and large weapons distributed in the front, middle and rear positions. The three spaceships have a total of nine large weapons, all of which are large live electromagnetic weapons. It can be seen that the mechanical race likes this type of weapon very much. Apart from having nanoscale robots responsible for the maintenance of the interior of the spacecraft, like the mechanical race ground units. There is nothing special about it. In terms of combat effectiveness, it is also relatively average and has no special value. So much so that Chen Ming considered whether to feed the machine tribe spaceship to the Queen of Insects instead of feeding it to the defenders. But Chen Ning considered that the Insect Queen's biological spacecraft itself left a lot of cavities for various insects to move around, rather than being a pure, solid, single creature with the appearance of a biological spacecraft. Therefore, it is better to feed the Insect Queen with a human cruiser with a similar structure. Then, there was another spacecraft of the Machine Tribe, which was the Mechanical Tribe Standard Class Colonial Ship that Chin Ming took away from the Machine Tribe City as the core of the city. It was controlled by Chin Ming and used psychic energy to repair it to its original appearance and then was lost to glory. Brilliance will find a way to get enough colonial technology from it to use in the future to demonstrate the moment of true colonization. Speaking of technology, the technology Chen Ming has on hand can also be counted as part of his comprehensive strength. After all, patents on antimatter technology and hyperspace jump engine technology can provide a large amount of funds and logistical support, which can certainly be counted as part of their strength. In fact, Chen Ming also has a high-value technology on hand, which is the blueprint of the new class unmanned battlecruiser he obtained. When Chen Ming's brain became hot, he took the thing by force with his brain and body, which had been on the verge of collapse after two days of high-intensity use. However, it has nowhere to play its role today. It can only be said that Chaofan can actually build a capital ship, as long as it is provided with a sufficient environment. But Chen Ning couldn't get a huge shipyard, so this technology could only be put on display for now, and then be taken out to see when it could actually be manufactured. In addition to funds, spaceships, and technology, real estate should also be counted as a part of comprehensive strength. Speaking of this, Chen Ning thought of the number 6 space arm of the Pirate Space Station. This is the space arm used for power generation on the Pirate Space Station. Although Chen Ning originally arranged for Yue to control it purely to restore the damaged power system of the space station, but the subsequent accident was over, and the company didn't mention it even though they knew what Chen Ning had done. Chen Ning didn't know what to do, so he just kept it like this. Maybe it would come in handy one day. As for the real estate that Chen Ning currently controls, apart from the space station. The most important one must be the temporary stronghold. Although there is only a castrated version of the temporary stronghold with a starport and a giant warehouse with simple maintenance and transportation functions. But the afterglow in the temporary stronghold is the most important part of this stronghold. So far, the number of after we that Chin Ming has on hand is still more than 50,000. Even if after we continues to be lost during the two-month exploration process. The loss is still relatively light in terms of the overall scale. Among these afterglows of over 50,000, there are nearly 48,000 gamma-level afterglows, a beta-level afterglow of over 3,000, 
and five alpha-level afterglows. It was Chen Ming's real entire family fortune some time ago. But things are different now. Now, with Chen Ming's efforts in pioneering the road, he has two more assets on hand. One part machine race. One part zerg race. And these two family fortunes are constantly expanding through Chen Ming's efforts. From the beginning, the machine race only had more than 40,000 individuals in that isolated city. After adding the 30,000 individuals that Chen Ming later snatched from the machine race colony, the number has increased to nearly 80,000. These tens of thousands of robots were placed in the city by Chen Ming, revitalizing the city that had been abandoned for many years. And the city itself is a city whose mere existence is enough for that civilization. So after Chen Ming used spiritual energy to repair the entire city during this period, he found that all the mechanical races in the city needed to be self-sufficient. Even nonobots are the same. Chen Ming found a factory in the city. A factory that only needs to input some materials and can automatically output nanorobots that can be used by the mechanical clan. It's a pity that there is only one factory in the entire city, which is smaller than the industrial equipment in other small cities. Therefore, nanorobots are currently still the main limitation to the development of the mechanical family. But as soon as he changed his mind, Chin Ming realized that he had already made a lot of money, because this is a nanorobot production factory, another legacy of another civilization. Originally, Chin Ning thought that there were only those mechanical races in this mechanical race city. It wasn't until he discovered the factory later that he realized he was still too young. Anything left by another civilization is extremely precious. At least to Chin Ning now. Although he can't understand the operating principles and manufacturing methods at all now, it is enough for Chin Ming to be able to use this factory. As long as the factory is still in his hands, he will always have the opportunity to fully master the technology in the future. And when the new 30,000 mechanical races were gradually controlled by Chin Ming, Chin Ming found that the number of mechanical races in his hive mind network had reached the standard, and he could directly generate the consciousness of new mechanical race individuals in the network. This means that the number of Chin Ming's mechanical clan can begin to increase, and he can start building new mechanical clans, coupled with the nanorobots produced by the nanorobot factory. Although the speed is not fast, the increase in the number of mechanical race individuals can always subtly provide Chin Ming with more mental power and thinking speed bonuses. And Chen Ming's other family fortune, the Zerg, is obviously even more heavyweight. Although the types of Zerg are the same as before, there are almost no changes when there is no battle. Moreover, only the larvae hatching tank has been completed for the Zerg biological buildings in the past few days. And the progress of the other ones is very unsatisfactory. However, the Zerg population is expanding at a rate that even the afterglow and mechanical races combined can't match even if they were doubled. From the size of a city at the beginning, the insect nest now covers an area close to half of the colony that Chin Ming first saw when he went to the afterglow star territory, occupying one-fifth of the planet's surface. If it weren't for the fact that the planet the queen is currently on is larger, and Chin Ming later deliberately restricted the reproduction of the queen on the surface, allowing it to expand underground to avoid damaging the surface ecological environment. Otherwise, Chin Ming even thought that he could see the insect nest on the ground directly from outside the planet. This resulted in Chin Ming being unable to estimate the size of the Zerg population. But at least one thing is certain. That is, the strength of the Zerg's current ground units is enough for Chin Ming to do many things. The queen's ability to devour everything, transform everything, and reproduce everything is exaggerated. Before long, I am afraid that the entire planet will be completely occupied by the insect queen and the insect queen will also have the ability to destroy the planet. Of course, Chin Ming is not afraid of this. His spiritual power will help him in all of this. Chapter 206 Technical Testing In addition to the above, Chin Ming also has some additional special beings on his hands, such as Shipling and Shaosher, although their current role seems to be just mascots. But a ship spirit is a ship spirit after all, and it needs to influence a spacecraft for a long time to play its due role. Two months is too short let alone Xiao Yang's rhythm will be at its peak for another month. Therefore, Chin Ming knew that the boat spirit was fishing, and it didn't matter. As for Xiao Tin, he was the hamster that had been with him from Ruimu to this day. He seemed to have some psychic potential. And then he ate too many fairy leaves at Yue and evolved into a psychic creature. Therefore, Chin Ming said that it was impossible to give up on it. In addition to the two living ones, Chin Ming also has some special dead objects such as two condensed psychic energy sources and mad words ectoplasmic stones, as well as a psychic pulse generator. It is the existence of these things that allows Chen Ming 
to still be able to exercise his spiritual energy even when he is extremely busy every day. In fact, Chin Ning still has a lot of things, such as materials and other things that he has not counted. But it is too troublesome to count the supplies. Just know that there is no shortage. And all these things add up to Chin Ming's entire wealth. That is everything Chin Ming has accumulated step by step until today. At the same time, it is also the motivation that supports Chin Ming to continue on. The next day, when the original scheduled time was earlier, Bai Quan contacted Chin Ming in advance and asked, How's it going? Chin Ming had already prepared it yesterday, so he could answer immediately. I have no problem here. Okay, let's go meet some people first. Who? As I told you yesterday, I found a think tank for you. Bai Quan gently tapped the terminal that Chin Ming had given him in his hand. This thing was very useful when talking in private, but it was a bit difficult to use when in contact with other people. You are in the Empire now. Why don't you just switch to the network of our 14th Legion? There is no need to worry about leaks. Okay. Chen Ming's communication code was never deliberately hidden. With the help of Bai Quan, he quickly connected to the internal communication network of the 14th Legion. After confirming that the signal was okay, Bai Quan left the office and went to a conference room in the office building where he was located. There are already five people waiting here. After entering the conference room, Bai Quan opened the conference room computer permissions to Chen Ming. Chen Ming's face appeared on the projection in the conference room, and the appearance of the conference room also appeared in front of Chen Ming's eyes. Bai Quan reached out and motioned to the five people in the conference room and said, These are the think tanks I told you about before. The five people originally sitting in the conference room immediately stood up and bowed slightly to Chen Ming. The man in the middle said, Mr. Chen Ming, we can rely on your description of your own spiritual power to help you analyze the future development of your spiritual power, prospects, and effects of use. Chen Ming nodded and quietly sent a question to Bai Quan using the terminal. By the way, how did you determine the candidates for the think tank? After all, as a think tank of psychers, they must have an understanding of psionic energy and a sufficiently broad mind, as well as imagination. Otherwise, these think tanks, which are not psychers themselves, make no sense. Bai Quan turned his hand away and replied to Chin Ming on the terminal. There are some people among ordinary people whose mental power exceeds that of ordinary people, but they cannot reach the point of awakening psychic powers and becoming psychics. These people with advanced mental powers are relatively easy to find among ordinary people, just like psychics, and it is easier for them to observe the effects of psychic powers when they assist some psychics in testing psychic powers. So the Empire has been specifically looking for such people. Some of these people are official employees of the Empire. They have been exposed to psychic energy a lot during relevant tests. Those who are interested will take the initiative to apply or participate in psychic energy-related departments according to the requirements of their superiors at work. So those who work in psychic energy-related departments are basically people with mental powers that are different from ordinary people. Then these people are screened based on their abilities, and finally the think tank is selected. Actually, the think tank didn't exist at the beginning. It wasn't until the Empire systematized the management and research of psychers that the think tank gradually came into being. If you don't need them, I can let them go now. That's not necessary. Chen Ming decisively rejected Bai Quan's proposal. Since the Emperor's think tank is a branch that gradually extends from the Empire's psychic department, it has always existed. Time has proven that the think tank is useful, and there is no need for him to deny it directly and it always helps to have someone to help you think about it. Although his spiritual power is not as simple as it seems from the outside, the answer that can be analyzed solely by the effects of those psychic powers that can be spoken may not be ideal. In addition, Chen Ming can completely see the possibility of developing his own spiritual energy in the future from the ship spirit. The analysis of outsiders may be somewhat unreliable, but it is still a reference option. Moreover, Chen Ming was indeed curious as to whether the think tanks in the Empire which had been screened at all levels, could think of a truly applicable direction for the development of psychic energy based on the simple description of the psychic conditions he dictated. After Chen Ming briefly got to know the five people, Bai Quan opened his mouth and said to Chen Ming, It's almost time. The matter of the mechanical clan must be discussed in the conference room of the headquarters. Please help you pick up the signal. When exactly does it start? You can do it at any time. Everyone should have arrived just now. Then go ahead. Bai Quan reached out and operated on the computer in the conference room, connected Chen Ming's communication signal to a new channel, and connected it to a conference room in the headquarters. And when the signal was connected, 
He took the lead in transmitting the conference room signal to Chen Ming. Chen Ning could see that there were about 30 people sitting scattered in this larger conference room. Seeing this scene, Chen Ming immediately asked by Quan through the terminal, Are there actually so many people? I thought there wouldn't be many people who are interested in psychic powers among those who study the mechanical race. Forehead. Bai Quan was stunned for a moment because of Chen Ning's words, and quickly replied to Chen Ning on the terminal. Actually, there are quite a lot. The machine tribe has a lot of things left over from another civilization, including a lot of psychic equipment. And so far we have not been able to create equipment that can produce psychic effects without relying on psychers. As a result, the use of psychic equipment by the mechanical tribe has often exceeded our imagination. So people who study the mechanical race will be more or less interested in psychic energy. Well, although there are only about 30 people coming this time, the number of researchers and scholar reagents from our headquarters who study the machine race can attend the meeting, which can fill at least three or four conference rooms. We are worried that the large number of people will make you uncomfortable. So we only let them choose representatives to participate. Chen Ning immediately looked at the conference room. The entire conference room could seat about 300 people. According to Bai Quan, there are actually thousands of researchers related to the mechanical race at the headquarters of the 14th Legion. And there should be more. Bai Quan just said that those who can come can fill three or four conference rooms. For those who cannot attend, there must be more researchers who have to stay at the institute. Then Chen Ming did have a misunderstanding. 30 people were not too many at all, but rather pitifully few. It can only be said that the human environment where Chen Ming stayed the longest was the pirate space station. Although the people here basically know something about the mechanical clan and their psychic equipment, there are not many people who have actually come into contact with the mechanical clan and their spiritual energy. But the 14th Legion is different. The army has an absolute understanding of spiritual energy and is at war with the mechanical tribe all the year round. Naturally, there are more people who can come into contact with the mechanical tribe. Just like if Chen Ming had continued on step by step and was just an ordinary person. He would never have imagined how many people on the pirate space station had committed crimes and became pirates. Only when you get to the pirate space station do you find that all the people on it are pirates. Of course, they basically didn't have any high bounties on them. So Chen Ming generally didn't bother to care about them. Moreover, comparing pirates with researchers from the mechanical race is indeed a bit insulting to scholars. In short, what kind of environment will have what kind of people? Seeing that Chen Ming had nothing to say, Bai Quan asked, then I will take you over? Good. The moment the two-way communication was connected, Chen Ning's appearance appeared in the conference room. Chen Ning suddenly saw a familiar person in the conference room again. Xiao Yang. Although he looks like an ordinary researcher wearing a white coat and black-rimmed glasses, there is an arrogance in his eyes that cannot be hidden. Although Chen Ming didn't see him the first time he came up, as long as he glanced at him a few more times, he couldn't hide his eyes. So Chen Ming still noticed him. Xiao Yan also noticed that Chen Ming's eyes on the projection screen in the conference room were locked on him through the screen. So he nodded slightly to Chen Ming. He was actually a little surprised. His research focus is mainly on spacecraft design, not specifically on the mechanical race. However, his interest and understanding of psychic energy are greater than any researcher of the 14th Legion. So he is still more interested in matters related to the mechanical race that are closely related to psychic energy. I heard from my colleagues in the research institute next door that the 14th Legion's research on the machine race has recently made progress, and a report meeting will be held remotely at the branch. He came here out of curiosity. As a psyker who recently joined the 14th Legion, Xiao Yang still has this reputation. The other person attending the meeting was Chen Ming. As the organizer of the meeting, Bai Quan knew that Wu had connected Chen Ming and Xiao Yang, so he naturally opened a back door for him. As a result, after Xiao Yan arrived, when the meeting officially started, he discovered that it was Chen Ning who was going to speak at the meeting. This really surprised him. But besides being surprised, he also thought of something incidentally. Because in his opinion, the fact that Chen Ming could appear in the internal meeting of the 14th Army Corps meant that Chen Ming had also joined the 14th Army Corps. This is a good thing for him. They are all from psychic associations. And they are all psychics brought by Wuhan. There have been cooperations before. And there are also ongoing cooperations recently. With a previous foundation, they can communicate with each other more. So he also took the initiative to say H, Lo to Chen Ming. Chen Ming also nodded and didn't respond much. Nor was he affected by seeing someone he knew. The report meeting on the research on the machine race that he promised started normally. 
after the conference room quieted down. Chin Ming organized his words a little and said, The hive mind network of the mechanical tribe is composed of psychic energy. The attention of everyone in the entire conference room was instantly attracted by what Chin Ming said. Someone in the conference room immediately started discussing this topic. Have you ever made such an assumption before? Yes. But the psychic devices of the mechanical tribe are mechanical and rigid. Without spirituality. And the mechanical tribe itself is the life that best fits the term spirituality. So no one has agreed with this proposal. Chin Ming did not continue speaking at this time. But listened silently. When the discussion in the conference room is almost over. It becomes quiet again. He continued to describe his understanding of the machine race based on his psychic control and understanding of the machine race. It can be said that these researchers have a very good understanding of the structure or design of the machine family and may be the best in the entire empire. But in terms of understanding the nature of the machine tribe, no one can compare to him who actually controlled the machine tribe and built the machine tribe's hive network. The subsequent meeting process was not like the situation at the beginning, apart from sometimes causing some small discussions. No one directly raised objections to Chin Ming's words. After all, everyone present has heard of Chin Ming more or less. And no one can guarantee that what Chin Ming said at first glance, which sounds outrageous, must be wrong. Bai Quan, who was in the branch at this time, also received a call soon after. In addition to the conference room of the headquarters, there are actually many people watching Chin Ming's meeting, but they can communicate directly with Chin Ming in the conference room. The call Bai Quan received now was that someone from above had given an order to come down. Bai Quan walked to the door of the conference room, looked back at Chin Ming who was talking on the screen, and turned to leave. After an hour, Chin Ming's own account of his understanding of the machine race came to an end, and Bai Quan also returned to the scene again. As soon as he came back, he saw someone in the conference room of the headquarters asking Chin Ming, Mr. Chin Ming, can you come to the headquarters in person to demonstrate to us the changes after the mechanical race is controlled? We have captured them here. Mechanical family samples are available for your use. Just when Bai Quan thought about wiring in to stop it, Chin Ming had already replied, I need to stay in the Gallo Star territory and cannot leave at will. The researcher who just asked the question immediately said, We can take samples of the mechanical race to the Gallo Star field. Chin Ming did not explicitly refuse, but just said, Then I will consider it. Thanks. The researcher thanked him and sat back immediately. Chin Ming also said the last words. Then that's all I want to talk about today. If you still have questions or opinions, you can ask Lieutenant General Bai Quan later. Then Chin Ning cut off the screen and sent a message to Bai Quan. It's over here. I saw it. You don't really want someone to bring the mechanical race to the Gallo Star territory. Do you? Chin Ning said immediately. Of course, this is just an excuse. I can't just say in front of so many people that I am too lazy to help them demonstrate. Right? Then I will lose both of our faces. Chin Ming suddenly took a deep breath, relieved his nervousness and said, I have never spoken in front of so many people. I am quite tired. I don't think you acted like it was your first time. Maybe it's talent. Chin Ming responded casually and said, That's it for today. Do you want us to continue if you are still free? Yesterday I had another fight with Chung Shinghai. Do you want to review it? Bai Quan thought about his task and said, Then it may not be, okay, today. We have to talk about it tomorrow. But there is no need to review the battle between you and Chang Shinghai yesterday. Because you never directed it at all. I think it's better for you to limit your psychic abilities. Otherwise this simulated battle will be meaningless. Chen Ming said in agreement. Actually, I think so too. So let's do it. See you tomorrow. Just when Chen Ming was about to end the communication, Bai Quan stopped him and said, Wait a moment. Some people from the think tank have something to say to you. Okay. The person who was supposed to be the representative of the five people said to Chen Ming through the communication channel of the 14th Army, Mr. Chen Ming, we would like to ask you a few questions. You asked, are the psychically controlled machines completely controlled by you? Yes, I said it at the meeting. Does the machine clan controlled by you still have self-awareness? It exists, but each individual will become very weak after leaving their hive network. Their thinking ability will be greatly reduced, and they will only have the most basic ability to obey orders. One more question is, do you know anything about the mechanical hive network? As far as I know from what I said in the meeting, the machines I control have no way to go back after they leave the hive network. After the think tank representative asked Chen Ming three questions, he immediately had an urgent discussion with others. Then he turned back to Chen Ming and said, Mr. Chen Ming, 
We are wondering whether your spiritual power can integrate the consciousness of these mechanical races as abnormal sub-individuals and build a new one with your spiritual power as the core. Hive Mind Network? Question mark. Chen Ming was silent. He didn't know what to say. Is this the value of a think tank? At this time, the representative continued to say to Chen Ming, We don't know much about your psychic abilities, but according to what you said personally, your control of the machine race will cause the machine race to become abnormal sub-individuals and unable to reconnect to the machine. The Hive Mind Network. This, and the theory you put forward in the meeting just now. This should be feasible. Chen Ming subconsciously glanced at the city of the mechanical tribe he controlled and said with some uncertainty, I can give it a try. What's your name? Yen Ze. After the matter with Bai Quan was over, immediately afterwards, good news came from the Queen of Insects. A new biotechnology experiment was successful. Is another ongoing technology besides bioarchitecture. This is very good news for Chen Ming. He immediately transferred his consciousness to the bugs near the queen in the nest, preparing to go over and verify this technology. After the verification was completed, he directly transferred the consciousness of the insect queen temporarily to the body of the insect queen at the highest point. That night, Chen Ming left the highest point alone and went to the pirate space station. It was still the same as before, without any protective clothing or other equipment. And just like last time, he ran directly to the bar where Lao Wu often went. The bar at night was much noisier than the last time Chen Ning came. The crowds crowded into a small space made Chen Ning feel uncomfortable. However, he still held back. After entering, he first asked the bartender for a glass of very exciting liquor, and then went to the corner to find Lao Wu fooling around. When Old Wu saw Chen Ning coming over, he asked with extremely strange eyes, Chao Ming, are you so free today? Chen Ming took a sip of the wine in his hand and said, Yeah. I just did something mind-numbing with someone during the day. So I came out to hang out and relax. By the way, how did the food taste last time? Old Wu recalled the taste of SH. Lack before. And his mouth instinctively secreted more saliva. The taste is very good but... The corners of Chen Ning's mouth curled up. It was obvious that Old Wu had also been tricked. He immediately took out a fresh keeping box containing a portion of SH. Lack from his bag and handed it to Lao Wu and said, I still have a lot here. Seeing Lao Wu's hesitant look, Chin Ming took out a new piece of SH. Lack took a spoon and stuffed it into his mouth. When Old Wu saw this, although he still felt a little hesitant in his heart, he still took the box. After all, the smell is really tempting. When taking the fused box, Old Wu couldn't help but ask, So what exactly is this thing? Chin Ming asked back, Do you know the Thorn Zer clan? Old Wu searched for this somewhat familiar name in his mind and finally found the Thorn Zerg clan in Chen Ming's past memory, and said, I have an impression. This is what they produce. You? I came across a nest of wild bugs and found them in their nest. I looked through the research report on the thorn bugs. This thing is edible. Don't worry. Old Wu nodded, and suddenly said with some regret, That's a pity. I thought this thing could be produced, and it felt like a good business. With that said, he also opened the crisper and then took out a spoon from nowhere and tasted the taste of S.H. Lack like Chen Ming. Chen Ming was a little surprised by the idea proposed by Lao Wu. Because this idea is actually good. He can indeed mass produce S.H. Lack. And he shouldn't have to worry about sales. The 0.2% food poisoning rate is a bit troublesome. But it can also be solved using the allergen argument. But unfortunately, the situation of the thorn zerg must not be exposed. Therefore, Chin Ming could only give up the idea of raising funds through this new open source for the time being. After eating the SH. Lack. Chin Ming didn't stay much longer and said, I just came here to wander around for a few times. And I'm leaving. Walk slowly. Chin Ming drank the wine in his hand and turned around to walk out of the bar. Although his face was visibly red. And he looked like he was drunk. But he still walked out of the bar steadily. Chapter 207 Prosthesis. Chin Ming left the bar where Lao Wu drank and stood on the street outside. He shook his head slightly, like a man recovering from drunkenness. However, there was no drunken stupor in his eyes at all. Instead, he was as sober as usual. After identifying the direction, Chin Ming walked into the city on the street, where the entire space station lowered the overall lighting brightness at night. The factory director's home is near the center of the space station, very close to the administration building. It seems to be the employee dormitory of the administration. To be honest, Chen Ming didn't even know how the second-generation factory director 
the son of a chairman of a large company, could master maintenance skills and be willing to actually work in the maintenance factory. And he usually lives in this kind of humble place compared to his status. Although the staff dormitory seems to be pretty good, something doesn't look right. But this is the factory director's private matter, and Chin Ning won't ask any questions. At this moment, Chin Ning suddenly remembered that the company seemed to have arranged a special dormitory for him before. Although he didn't ask for it, the factory director seemed to have withdrawn it during a chat before, and the dormitory was still reserved for him. Forget it. It doesn't matter. Chin Ning didn't bother to go and take a look. He still has to go to the factory director. When Chin Ning came to the company's employee dormitory, it was because Chin Ming told the factory director in advance that he was going there. The factory director also took Chin Ming directly to his residence at the gate of the community and stayed in his study. After asking the same question as Lao Wu, Chin Ming also gave the same answer. Chin Ming just casually chatted with the factory director about the recent situation. By the way, I also asked how the repair shop's business was. At any rate, it was a place where he stayed for a while, and he had some feelings for it. But while chatting, Chin Ning noticed that the factory director looked at him strangely. Chin Ning thought the factory director had noticed something and asked, What's wrong? Fine. The factory director shook his head and continued chatting with Chin Ming. But after a while, he said to Chin Ming hesitantly, Let me ask you something. What are your plans in the future? After what? That's after the colony was established. Chin Ming still followed the idea of chatting and said casually, I haven't thought about it yet. But colonization is not that easy. It will be possible in a few years or more. I will definitely think about it by then. You will definitely be able to continue your career smoothly. So is it almost time to start a family? Chin Ming pointed to his face with some confusion and asked, Am I very old? I just feel like it's almost done. Then I can only say that I don't have this idea yet. Chin Ming pulled up a schedule for his period on the terminal, placed it in front of the factory director, and said, Look, where do I have time to do other things? The factory director asked, you will do it if you have time? That requires time. And I'm not saying that I'm totally against it. But I really don't have the time. Oh, that's how it is. Yes, that's it. Why do you ask so suddenly? The factory director extended his thumb and gestured to the door of the study room and said, You know I'm married. Sometimes I talk about you with my wife. And then we get involved in this aspect by the way. She asked me to take care of you. Care. Chin Ming smiled and said, there's nothing I can do about it. Right. It's still my own problem. Yes. It's okay if you put your career first. Chin Ming chatted with the factory director for a while and then left. Finally, go to the boss's place. At the entrance of the hardware store in space arm number two, Chin Ming happened to see the boss closing the store when he arrived. Chin Ming searched around for everyone he knew. And when he finally arrived at the boss's place, it was almost late at night. Chin Ming stopped. However, the boss noticed Chin Ming and waved to him to let him pass. When he approached the hardware store, the boss suddenly looked Chin Ming up and down and asked, Why do you feel like you are a little nervous? Chin Ming explained casually, I just completed an experiment. The experiment process was a bit difficult, but the results were pretty good. When Chin Ming was talking, the boss could feel that he calmed down quickly and said nothing. After a few brief chats, Chin Ming took the initiative to leave here and time did not allow him to continue disturbing others. And when the boss disappeared from his sight, Chin Ming suddenly let out a long breath, and then walked all the way back to the highest point, boarded the spaceship, and went to the captain's cabin of the spacecraft. There is someone waiting for him here, and this person looks exactly like Chin Ming. To be precise, Chin Ming on the spaceship is the real Chin Ming. And the Chin Ming, who had just gone out to meet with factory director and boss Wu, and the others was just a prosthesis that looked exactly like him controlled by Chin Ming's consciousness. This is not a cloning technology, but a technology mastered by the Insect Queen, a pure fake body created through Chin Ming's genes and using it to create ordinary Zerg. The effect of the prosthetic body is simple and direct, and he has experienced it personally just now. This prosthetic technology is a technology that Chin Ming specially asked the Insect Queen to develop some time ago. That was the only thing that he thought the Insect Queen was doing some time ago that could be considered good news. Originally, the Queen of Insects was doing two things. One was to cultivate Zerg biological structures, and the other was to cultivate special individuals of Zerg. Biological buildings are extremely difficult to build, and the efficiency of advancement is very low. Chin Ming has no good solution for the time being. 
and the process of another special individual is also difficult to achieve the ultimate goal that Chen Ning wants to achieve, which is to cultivate high-intensity fighting individuals. The Zerg are a species that wins in numbers, relying on their strong reproductive ability to crush them. It is also very difficult to start cultivating high-strength combat individuals out of thin air that the Zerg do not need. But in the process of cultivating special individuals, Chen Ming suddenly had an idea. Could the Zerg use human genes to make Zerg individuals show some human characteristics? Although the human body itself is too weak, and the developed human brain can only serve as a carrier for the hive mind Zerg, it is of no significance to the Zerg. But Chen Ming just wanted to try. Even if the insect queen is like him, she has to do several things well at the same time. Because he saw a glimmer of possibility in this idea. And after Chen Ming fed the insect queen with his own blood, he came to a definite answer. The insect queen can indeed manually create some human organs and body tissues. But many Zerg genes will be mixed into them. Causing the final product to be very weird. But at least it means it's doable. Then Chen Ming asked the insect queen to try a further idea that he had thought of from the beginning. An idea that would better ensure his own safety. Make a prosthesis just like him. Such a new idea that is independent of a special individual. The Zerg race created by the Queen of Insects will be affected by the Queen of Insects and controlled by Chen Ming. Then the people created by the Insect Queen should have the same effect. So Chen Ming has been letting the Insect Queen try it and has been paying attention to this matter. The number of failures in this research is far behind compared to the biological buildings the Insect Queen is working on. Moreover, if the research on biological architecture failed, it would only result in more growths and undigested energy crystals. But once Chen Ming's prosthesis failed during the experiment, it would often produce many weird and twisted things with his face. Finally, it will be wrapped in a carpet of bacteria and redigested into the most basic nutrients. The process makes Chen Ning feel a little bit sanity. His own body, which had died so far, could almost circle the highest point together. However, after seeing his grotesque corpse too many times, Chen Ming no longer felt anything. In other words, he has been used to it since Yu Wei used his genes to clone and produced a bunch of weird clones that were infected by the dimension. So when the insect queen found a pile of his corpses, Chen Ming felt weird at first. But then it didn't matter at all. Sometimes, he would even point at his mutilated body in order to clearly explain his needs and thoughts to the insect queen. Today, the experiment finally succeeded. When Chen Ming used the cellular network to control the prosthesis, his mentality in controlling the prosthesis is the same as using a piece of biological armor. Without any fluctuations, it can be regarded as training Chen Ming's resistance when facing various strange things. He can control his prosthesis and go out to meet people without changing his expression. Originally, Chen Ming wanted to give the people he knew a little surprise and see if he could be seen to be abnormal. But no one seemed to realize he was a fake. The prosthetic effect is really good. Moreover, Chen Ming also used the prosthesis to confirm the sensory issues. It is certain that he can share the senses of the prosthesis and can actively accept or resist it. In other words, after the prosthesis eats food, Chen Ming can directly taste the taste of the food. And the same goes for the taste of alcohol. However, the effect of alcohol on the prosthesis will not affect Chen Ming. Even death is just prosthetic death. Therefore, the prosthesis is also an excellent substitute for Chen Ming. During this process, when he approached the factory director and was stared at with strange eyes. Chen Ming thought he had been exposed. It turned out not to be the case. The factory director only came to urge the marriage. Only the last time he went to see his boss was the most nervous moment in this test. As a result, his subconscious nervousness on the prosthesis was seen. But the boss didn't even notice that the prosthesis was fake. Because Chen Ming's consciousness controls this prosthesis through the hive mind network link. Chin Ming's hive mind network was constructed using his own psychic energy, which meant that his psychic energy completely enveloped the prosthesis, allowing the prosthesis to possess its own normal psychic energy fluctuations. Of course, if you find a way to penetrate into the prosthetic brain, you will definitely find abnormalities. After all, Chin Ming's spiritual nerve does not grow here. But the boss would not just use his spiritual energy to probe Chin Ming's head. Normally, there is no simple way to easily investigate what is in other people's brains. Especially the brains of psychics. Only last time, Chen Ning left the pirate space station for a while. And when he came back, he had two spiritual energy fluctuations connected to something inexplicably. Only then would the boss be surprised. Thinking that Chen Ning was parasitized by something. He used his mental power to forcefully check Chen Ming. After he checked that there was no problem at that time. 
and Chen Ming also said that it was fine. Chen Ming's two mental fluctuations that are connected to the outside world are normal in the boss's opinion. Therefore, the boss didn't notice anything unusual just now. Even if someone comes to perform a genetic test on his prosthesis, the final result will definitely be Chen Ming's own genes. When the prosthesis was made, the insect queen was specially adjusted, and there would be no zerg parts in the prosthesis. So since these people who are close to Chen Ming can't see the problem, then in the eyes of anyone else, the prosthesis is Chen Ming himself. However, once Chen Ming stopped consciously controlling the prosthesis, then it will be like this. The fake body that was still standing in front of Chen Ming instantly collapsed to the ground. After it lost Chen Ming's consciousness, it became a ball of dead flesh. Of course, Chen Ming has not completely withdrawn his consciousness. He will still leave some subtle consciousness in the prosthetic body. In case the non-self-aware prosthesis is invaded by things from another dimension that cause dimensional infection. Chen Ming immersed his consciousness into the prosthesis again, controlled it, and climbed up. He and the prosthesis simultaneously stretched out their hands and made different gestures. It is also very simple for Chen Ming to divide his mind into two tasks. And the prosthetic wrist in front of Chen Ming also had a bracelet made of the insect queen's body tissue. After the prosthesis raised its hand, a mixture of metallic color and bright green liquid also flowed from its wrist, gradually wrapping it to form a set of biological armor. After putting on this armor, the prosthetic's combat capabilities should be the same as Chen Ming's own. After all, the physical quality of the prosthesis is based on his condition. And the armor is just that. It does not have the body tissues and organs of the Zerg that have abnormal combat abilities. But this ordinary prosthesis can do things for him that he would never risk doing. For example, go to the 14th Army Corps on his behalf, which he himself would never dare to go to. After Chen Ming agreed to buy Quan's invitation to join the war yesterday, he was thinking about how he could get the maximum benefit from the war. That must be deeply involved in this war. Because this war must be won. It was a war that must be won. And he had no reason to refuse to participate. However, just being responsible for helping with the research on the machine race, as he had agreed with Bai Quan, before was not enough. Although you can get certain benefits, it is definitely not as good as participating in something deeper. The answer to how to deeply participate in this war initiated by the Empire, and prepared by the 14th Legion is also obvious. Go to the 14th Legion. As interim tactical instructor on the contract he just signed, Jin Ming does not need to actually join the 14th Legion, because he now has the contract he signed. After all, the 14th Legion was the main force in the Empire's early war against the machine race. They definitely have first-hand information about the war. As the person who currently knows the most about the mechanical race, Chen Ming can definitely get it. But if Chen Ming is not in the 14th Legion, then Bai Chuan's speed of giving news will definitely lag behind. Only by going there in person, at the station of the 14th Legion, could he get the information he needed immediately. Then he would find an opportunity to remotely command his afterglows to seize the benefits. But the problem with this is obvious. It was impossible for Chen Ming to run to the 14th Army Corps at the risk of being placed under house arrest because he has used his deep repair psychic power several times and optimized some techniques. Not only is it the cooperation with Xiao Yang, the hyperspace channel jump technology itself is the result of reverse research through a death maintenance. Even if Chen Ming, clearly, disguised the research and development process in his paper. But once traces are left, it is impossible for him to guarantee that his abilities will not be leaked. It would only be a matter of time before his psychic powers were exposed unless he used them completely. But it's impossible without psychic powers. So once the spiritual power of this optimization technology is leaked, although his own safety is the least of his worries, countless people don't want him to die. But he and Freedom will also say goodbye. Therefore, not only the 14th Army Corps, but also other places belonging to the government army, he would definitely not dare to go there. Although the relationship between Bai Quan and him has been good recently. But Bai Quan is a soldier, and Qin Ming really can't guarantee what Bai Quan will do. Therefore, the importance of false identity is heightened here. It allows Qin Ming to do many things without any burden. Qin Ming actually didn't expect the prosthetic body to be so powerful before actually making it. It doesn't seem right to say it is powerful. It should be said that it has such a unique effect. At first, he just thought prosthetics were a good life-saving technology and feasible. So he tried it. Finally got an unexpected surprise. Chin Ming threw the prosthesis that had become limp again to the Queen of Insects and asked her to help take care of it. Tomorrow, the fake body will be useful to get it. It's dawn the next day. 
Chen Ning asked the fake person to contact him with the terminal. When Bai Quan appeared on the screen and before starting teaching, the fake person suddenly asked Bai Quan, Does your 14th Legion have any places open to the outside world? When Bai Quan came up, he was stunned by Chen Ning's question. He thought about it and said, It shouldn't be possible, especially at this time when the army is under lockdown. Why do you suddenly ask about this? Nothing. I just suddenly became curious about what the territory of your 14th Legion looks like. Bai Quan said casually. Would you like to come over and take a look? Okay. Huh? Huh? Bai Quan didn't expect Chen Ning to give such a reply at all. He had invited him so many times before. But Chen Ning never agreed once. At this time, he suddenly agreed. And Chen Ming took the initiative to express his intention intentionally or unintentionally. Bai Quan hesitated for a while. Upon seeing this, Chen Ming added, Didn't I just promise your people in my headquarters yesterday that they would bring the machine race over and I would help them demonstrate what the machine race under my control would become? Just be satisfied. Do you believe this reason? Chen Ning himself also knew that the reason he made up casually was unreliable. After thinking about it, he continued according to his current situation. Well, actually, I want to see the technology of your 14th Legion. You also know that many of your technologies are not available on public academic websites. Well, I've recently hit a bottleneck when learning cruiser skills. I want to see your skills and change my mind. And you said before that I help you conduct research on the machine race. And any results you get will be rewarded with military merit. I will go directly to your place so that I can use the equipment to get some results or something. Bai Quan immediately grasped the key to Chen Ming's words and said, Are you interested in our equipment? Chen Ming spread his hands and said, I can't help it. I'm short of money recently. Your place is a good place to make money. Chen Ming's half-truth and half-false words made Bai Quan a little confused for a while as to what Chen Ming wanted to do. He could only use a joking tone and ask in a direction that might cause Chen Ming's attitude to suddenly change. How do you make our 14th Legion not look like a serious place? Isn't it okay for you to speed up the progress? It's okay. But it's just too. Good. So the money is flowing out like water. How about you help me a little? I remember that the Empire seems to have a pioneering law, which can provide certain financial and technical support to pioneers. Bai Quan said repeatedly. Stop. 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 That was the law of the pioneering era. Are you going to use it now? You know this as well? Yes. The laws of the Empire now stipulate that there are no restrictions on personal exploration and development. And the establishment of colonies outside the Empire does not require approval. What else is there? Gone. Right. It seems like it's gone. So I have to find a way to solve the money problem. Right. Really. There is nothing wrong with just listening to the explanation. Many people know about what he is doing outside the country. And Chen Ming's material circulation follows serious trade routes and is taxed. So it is easy to investigate. Otherwise, Bai Quan would not have been so decisive before and said that he would arrange a way for Chen Ming to purchase supplies at cost price. They can roughly estimate the basis of the power Chen Ming has developed based on the amount of supplies Chen Ming purchased. However, all the materials purchased by Chen Ming will eventually be sent to the boss's colony and will be transported away by Chen Mingling. Therefore, the final transportation process cannot be determined. But it is easy to tell whether Chen Ming is short of money. According to the recent flow of materials in the boss's colony, Chen Ming did indeed spend a lot of money. And it was normal to be short of money. After all, the material purchase route he arranged has not yet been fully implemented in Chen Ming's hands. And it will probably take another week. Therefore, Chen Ming's reason for being short of money is totally justified. But Bai Quan always felt something was wrong. After thinking about it, he opened his mouth and said, I can let you come here. But aren't you worried about anything? Chen Ming asked back. Worried that you will use violence to keep me here? No way. Probably. Many people already think that you are not suitable for leaving the empire. So I can't say. Chen Ming said again. It's okay. You don't have to worry for me. Why didn't I go to your place before? Because to go to the 14th Legion, you have to be from the 14th Legion. But I still don't want to join directly. The army is too troublesome for me. It's different now. I'm a temporary soldier. I've read everything on the contract. This identity war will be over. I'll have to go take a look if I get the chance. Bai Quan frowned and suddenly took off the badge of the 14th Legion on his chest and said to Chen Ming, Seriously? Why did you suddenly have this idea? This doesn't seem like something you would do. If you aren't talking to me with your spiritual power now, 
I wouldn't even think you were Chen Ming. Chapter 208 Arrival Bai Quan's actions made Chen Ming feel that Bai Quan was asking him questions as a friend he knew, not as a lieutenant general of the 14th Army Corps. In fact, Chen Ming could indeed choose to take his time, choose a gradual and euphemistic approach, and slowly express his desire to go to the 14th Legion with Bai Quan. But after thinking about it, he found that he could not find the key point of his attitude change at all. It's just that he couldn't find a completely reasonable reason to hang out at the 14th Legion station while his external exploration and development process was still going on. No matter when, he must face Bai Quan's doubts. Therefore, Chen Ming simply found an excuse to go there. Of course Bai Quan may find Chen Ming's behavior strange, but he has no reason to refuse. Moreover, he only decided to go to the 14th Legion because he had the prosthesis and the courage to go to the 14th Legion. He did not have any negative thoughts about the 14th Legion itself. This can be proven by time. So Chen Ming did not explain much now. He just replied to Bai Quan's question just now. Because I have the ability to have this idea. Bai Quan could see that Chen Ming did not want to answer this question in detail. And his attitude was also very firm. He didn't say much more. After all, inviting Chen Ming to join the 14th Legion. Even if it wasn't joining in the actual sense. But just joining the 14th Legion was what he had always wanted to do. Bai Quan put on the badge he had just taken off. And finally confirmed. Are you sure you want to come? Sure. With the safety guarantee of the prosthesis. Chen Ming can even take the initiative to go to more places that are more dangerous for him. When? Now? After the communication between Chen Ming and Bai Quan ended. Bai Quan thought about it in his office. And finally decided to pick up the terminal and contact the psyker friend who helped him detect Chen Ming's location. After briefly telling him what had just happened, Bai Quan asked, Why do you think Chen Ming came? The other end of the phone was silent for a long time before replying, You don't understand. So you came to ask me? I'm very busy. I have to confirm the suspected important targets of the machine tribe that you sent over there. I really don't understand. Where did so many false targets come from? Bai Quan coughed twice in embarrassment and did not answer the topic. He continued to bring it back to the topic he had just talked about. You are a psychic. So you can always understand Chen Ning's thoughts better than me. His psychic abilities are constantly improving. When his value continues to increase, sooner or later he will be put under house arrest in disguise. There is nothing I can do to stop him. The psychic explorer still didn't answer Bai Quan's question and asked. I can't think of how you should put him under house arrest. Bai Quan said with certainty. There is a way. But it won't be realized so quickly. It's not so fast. What are you worried about? Maybe Chen Ming really wants to join your 14th Legion? Is he just planning to investigate? Then, he wouldn't have emphasized before coming that he didn't want to be restricted by the military. After Bai Quan finished speaking, he sighed, and then said, If he really wants to come, it will be too late for me to be happy. As long as he is sincere, let alone our 14th Legion, the Empire will invest a lot of resources to support him. But look at what he has done along the way. Is it possible? The psychic explorer thought for a while and said, That's right. If we think about it differently, maybe he will leave in two days? If you don't have time to prepare your method, wouldn't it be fun to have a conflict with Chen Ming in advance? You can't just want to leave and have others stop you. Right. Bai Quan's eyes suddenly flashed with disgust. And he said, There are always people who have their own ideas and want to realize them. Even if the idea is wrong, who could have such an idea? It's not you who has the final say here? Bai Quan shook his head slightly and said, I know several people who have a lot of self-righteous ideas. And the place where I have the final say is only the station of the 14th Army Corps. And the outside is not my territory. He came very smoothly this time. But if he wants to leave the station, it may not be so safe. As soon as Bai Quan finished speaking, the psychic explorer changed the topic again and said, Why do I feel that your temper has improved a lot? If you hadn't just opened the door on the ship to warn others that I have your last name. It was before. But now I have been in charge of so many things in an army for several months. There are many things that I really can't do at once. Even if there are many people sitting in key positions. It is difficult not to make people suspect that their heads and butts are in reverse. I still have to try my best to speak well to other people's things that I don't know if they are heads or butts. The psychic explorer directly stated the essence of the problem by Quan encountered. The era of pioneering is over. New cakes can no longer be made. Then what is left is the relationship behind it. Bai Quan nodded in agreement. And at the same time, 
he suddenly understood the thoughts of the Empire's senior officials who initiated this war. In fact, he has always been eager for something to happen. But he has never said it out loud. That is, let's open up the era again and let the capable people below kick all the shit out of the top. Are you scolding one of your own? Right. Even if the 14th Legion undergoes a reorganization, Baekwon cannot guarantee that all the 14th Legion will be filled with sane people. Otherwise, how could his old boss have sent him to the Galastar territory to find these soldiers mixed with a bunch of spies to make it more difficult for him and let him command them? He had to adjust and screen by himself to select useful people. And he was deceived and seriously injured once in the process. Only recently has he created a team that he can really trust. Today's 14th Army Corps, which was established only 20 years ago and is still the main force fighting against the Afterglow Front, cannot avoid such problems. Then the situation within those forces that have been established for a longer period of time is definitely not optimistic. And this is even more true for the most powerful gathering of all forces. The Empire. Wait a minute. I almost led you astray. Bai Quan suddenly realized that he was not looking for someone to talk about this. And quickly returned to the previous topic and said, Do you understand why Chen Ming took the risk? Seeing that he couldn't escape. The psychic observer casually guessed. Maybe Chen Ming has a way to escape? How about I help you check on his situation? No need. Your psychic ability was discovered by him last time. And it will definitely be the same this time. Forget it. Never mind. The best I can do is pretend that I haven't seen anything done at that time. With my position, I can't do much. After chatting for a while, by Quan's original confusion, because of Chin Ming's irrational behavior, and the somewhat angry feeling in his heart had almost dissipated. Originally, if someone whom by Quan didn't know did something obviously irrational. He wouldn't even look at it twice. But Chen Ming happened to be someone he knew. And they had become very familiar with each other over the past few months. So when he couldn't stop Chen Ming from making the decision to jump into a pit of fire, even though he knew it was a fire pit, he had that anger. But now that he has calmed down, he has nothing to say. He is an adult and must be responsible for the decisions he makes. But at this time, the psychic explorer suddenly said, Hey! You have to think on the bright side. Chen Ning is not a fool. Right. No. Then he must have been well prepared before coming. Didn't he say that himself? He made this decision only after he gained the ability. His psychic ability should have improved again. What you said makes sense. But I don't know if his spiritual progress is a good thing or a bad thing. The psychic explorer said in the tone of a very experienced person. Don't care what happens to Chen Ming. And don't think about what he is here for. If you think about what he can do when he comes, you can make him do it. It's as if even if he really followed your ideas and joined in normally, you wouldn't be wary of him being a psyker of the current level. Where is his psychic energy? Should I guard against it? Is your attitude different than from now? Bai Quan thought about the hypothetical scenario and said, At least then, I don't have to worry about Chen Ning having any bad thoughts. The psyker immediately asked, How is your relationship with him? Well enough. Then since he is in contact with you every day and learns techniques from you, he suddenly prepares to mess with you without any warning? What do you think? The main thing is that his performance was suddenly very strange today. And it was difficult for me not to think about it. Then let's think about it again. What if he is just playing tricks on you? Maybe he doesn't want to study today and just found an excuse. Is this possible? Not too possible. The probability is not zero. Right. By Quan thought again. Chen Ming's mental state has always been quite stable. If he has something to say, he will generally consider it normally and speak appropriately. It is unlikely that he will suddenly express his meaning in such a twisted way. But today's Chen Ming always gave him a very familiar and unfamiliar feeling, which made him not sure. However, Bai Quan's mood stabilized quickly at this time, and he soon realized that this was his friend making a joke again. Normally he would just treat it as a joke, but now he actually thinks about it and thinks about the possibility. Bai Quan quickly brought the topic back to the original topic. The matter about Chen Ning has been concluded. In other words, Chen Ning will be responsible for his own decisions. So the psyker stopped talking nonsense and said seriously, Anyway, just do your own thing well. Just consider that Chen Ning wants to join your 14th Legion to participate in the war. Make arrangements for him. Order a mission or something. Bai Quan also said matter-of-factly, Actually, it's a bit difficult to arrange. He is the strongest one in the research of the machine race. And it is even more impossible to let him go directly to the battle. Then just arrange a research institute for him and let him be the director. 
then call him to any war meetings and let him sit in on them. A capable person will find suitable things to do by himself, and there is no need for you to arrange everything for him. You should be better at this kind of thing than me. Right. Wait. You haven't arranged it at all. Right. By Quan denied. How is it possible? The arrangement must have been arranged. But since I have come to you, I will come to you for some advice by the way. You are the easiest psyker for me to find. You said how should we arrange Chen Ming? My point of view. Actually, let me tell you. It might be okay for him to participate in your current small-scale reconnaissance missions. This is not a large-scale conflict with the machine tribe. You can't just throw in some people who may not obey the command. Isn't it just a small-scale thing? He knows the machine race. So maybe it will be beneficial? And Chen Ming's spiritual energy can act on things controlled by his spiritual energy. As long as he stays at your station. It can be used as a device that can accurately transmit information back without any delay. Chen Ming's spiritual power can do not 10,000 times more than what I said. If people are willing to come, they must be willing to do something. Otherwise, why are they here? Just to come to your place for free meals? At this time, Bai Quan remembered what Chen Ming had just said. That he wanted to borrow the equipment of the 14th Legion for research. Although they would definitely give it to him. Chen Ming's behavior was no different from coming to rob him. So Bai Quan said smoothly at this time. Maybe. TSK. Why did you start after I finished? The psychic scout didn't realize that Bai Quan was actually telling the truth. Not bullshit. However, he still chose to say seriously. If you are worried that he will not be able to contribute when he comes, then you can simply send him a destroyer in one mission. Is that okay? The cost is not big. Right. Just treat it as a loss during the mission. Do you think Chen Ning will help you? Bai Quan thinks the answer should be yes. Half an hour later, Bai Quan, who was busy in the office, suddenly saw the news that his subordinates had just reported that a Stardust-class cruiser had appeared in the hyperspace of their base galaxy and applied to enter the galaxy. It's really coming! Bai Quan muttered something, put down the work at hand, and quickly left the office, and soon boarded a cruiser that was ready to take off. At this time, Chen Ning was still waiting patiently on the Stardust level in hyperspace. Since he had said it before, of course he would come. As for the reason why he chose the Stardust class to fly here, one is because the Stardust is the spaceship he has that is most suitable for his psychic abilities. Another reason is that Chen Ming will use the highest point to conduct a one-month transaction with Xiao Yang. Moreover, his true body also needs to stay at the highest point and be used separately with a fake body for subsequent daily study and research. Without those research equipment, his learning efficiency will be much lower. Chen Ming has actually been able to divide his mind into two tasks a long time ago. But there was no second person to share the work pressure at hand. So he had to perform different study tasks at different times throughout the day. It's different now. With the existence of prosthesis, Chen Ming even feels that he can do what five people can do by himself. However, this will cause his thinking to be too scattered and reduce his learning efficiency. Therefore, one body and one prosthesis are already the limit of how they can continue to work without reducing efficiency. Just when Chen Ming was thinking about how to distribute tasks between the main body and the fake body, the Stardust class suddenly received a new communication request. When Chen Ming connected, Bai Quan's face appeared on the screen in front of Chen Ming. Chen Ming directly greeted Bai Quan as usual. After all, the little conflict they just had was nothing at all. Hello Bai Quan. This is the temporary tactical instructor of the 14th Legion. Can I come in? Bai Quan suddenly stared at Chen Ming strangely for a while and said, Come with me. With that said, Bai Chuan's spaceship turned around, started the channel engine, and left hyperspace. The five cruisers of the 14th Legion, which had been guarding Chen Ming's Stardust class, finally lowered their guard. Chen Ming followed directly. After also entering the galaxy and approaching the planet where the 14th Legion was stationed, Bai Quan asked Chen Ming, Is there any afterglow on the ship? Chen Ming answered honestly. No. Well, the spacecraft entering the port later will need to undergo a complete deep scan. Remember to turn off the shielding device. Okay. Everything was done according to normal procedures. Chen Ming himself had no idea about the 14th Legion. So he naturally had no objection. And when Chen Ming followed Bai Quan and gradually approached the giant shipyard of the 14th Legion, the cruiser where Bai Quan was sitting suddenly stopped. His communication was immediately sent over saying, I will drive the shuttle boat to pick you up. We will go directly to the ground. Can you remotely control the Stardust to drive in? Can. Chen Ming still agreed decisively. 
Bai Quan did this because he was obviously worried that Chen Ning would use psychic powers at will on their giant shipyard. He knew very well what happened at Yu Wei's giant shipyard. Chen Ning would definitely do this even if he were in Bai Quan's position. So he didn't have any objections. So he should be considerate of Bai Quan. Soon, Chen Ning stood on the Stardust class flight deck wearing a heavy protective suit. Not long after, he saw a shuttle boat growing from small to large, gradually approaching Stardust from the starry sky outside, and landed on the Stardust level. Chen Ming turned off the opacity function of the mask and exposed his face. A few people randomly walked off the shuttle boat. Bai Quan's face was revealed under the helmet of the leader, who was also wearing heavy protective clothing. Bai Quan took a few steps forward and reached out to Chen Ming. Chen Ming also reached out and shook it, and said in the connected communication channel, Is this the first time we have met in person? Yes, but we just met half an hour ago, and there is no sense of ceremony at all. Bai Quan let go of his hand, turned around and greeted Chen Ming and said, Get on the boat. I have to make arrangements for you as soon as you come here suddenly. Chen Ming didn't say much, followed Bai Quan onto the ship and touched the shuttle boat. Bai Quan obviously noticed Chen Ming's little move, but he didn't say anything. After the shuttle boat took off again, the Stardust class continued to follow the signal from the cruiser in front and the giant shipyard and entered the shipyard, staying in a separate ship's position. The shuttle boat went to the volcanic planet under the orbit of the giant shipyard. After passing by an ecological dome that Chen Ming saw covering an area three times larger than the mechanical city he controlled, it landed in a small independent dome nearby. Bai Quan had already explained it to Chen Ning while the shuttle boat was still on the way. This is a dome specifically designed to house laboratories. It has a large square covered with green plants and three triangularly opposite buildings in the square. An office building, a laboratory building, and a dormitory building. Small-scale experiments can be conducted in the laboratory building. Large-scale experiments are conducted in the independent large laboratory in the middle of the three buildings. However, when Bai Quan personally took Chen Ning into the large laboratory hall, somehow, Chen Ning suddenly had a sense of deja vu as when Yu Wei sent him to the research institute. However, the treatment he received then and now were very different. Moreover, the laboratory in front of him was also different from the research institute arranged by Yu Hui. It was the empty laboratory in front of him, except for some basic power systems and basic living facilities in the living area where Bai Quan took Chen Ming at the beginning. It can be said that there is no equipment that can be used at all. Bai Quan explained, Originally, I thought you would not come to our place. So there was no arrangement at all in this regard. So I could only temporarily find you a dome like this to stay in. The equipment that was originally intended to be provided to you will have to be shipped here again. It may take two or three days. That's just me being willful. Chin Ming took the initiative to apologize at this time. Anyway, the purpose has been achieved and an apology will not lose any meat. Bai Quan waved his hand and said, It's okay. You have the willfulness. But then again, I remember that you seem to have a hamster. Did you forget to bring it with you on the spaceship? Chen Ming's body turned and glanced at Xiao Shi, who was wandering around on the highest point every day and didn't know what he was doing, and was a little speechless. However, the prosthesis still looked normal and said, No, I put it out of foster care temporarily. Bai Quan nodded and didn't ask any more questions. Instead, he took out the contract he had with Chen Mingqian and said, Have you read the above contents? Originally, I was supposed to explain to you some key points and precautions in the upcoming war with the machine race after class every day. After you are familiar with it, I will slowly give you some tasks. Now, it's still the same, and we can still teach face-to-face -face when you come. The effect will definitely be better than remote teaching. The time will still be according to your original schedule? Chen Ning had already thought about this problem before and said, No, since I'm here, the focus of the next period of time must be on command. I will directly follow the schedule of the 14th Army. I will do the rest by myself. I will find time to do it. But the physical training is still the same as before. There is no need. After all, Chen Ming went to the 14th Army Corps with a fake body. And exercising the fake body was as meaningless as taking off his pants and farting. Bai Quan nodded to indicate that he understood. And then he said, Then I am more worried that you may not be able to spare the time, in addition to the daily teaching and war knowledge that I have to make up for you. There are also some tasks that you need to complete in the original plan. Before Chen Ming signed the contract, he read it carefully and knew what he needed to do. Although Chen Ming can enjoy the treatment of a colonel-level officer and only needs to bear the obligations of an ordinary citizen. However, 
while signing the contract, he must assume a separate obligation to assist the 14th Legion in researching the machine race, since Chen Ning wants to take advantage of the benefits provided by the 14th Legion. He must take on some tasks. Even without this restriction, Chen Ning would not refuse some reasonable requests from the 14th Legion. So now he said simply, What kind of mission do you want? We need you to analyze some of the machine tribe's equipment. Chip? Even if it's a chip. I can't understand that thing. It's not a chip. It's something else we don't understand. Besides chips. What else don't you understand? This. Bai Quan said. Placing a mechanical device with red lines. Chapter 209 Arrangement. Chen Ning was very familiar with what Bai Quan put in front of Chen Ning. It was the purgatory core that he had obtained not long ago. Chen Ming pretended to look at the purgatory core for a few times and asked, What is this? Did you get it from the machine tribe? The purgatory core is the core of a special type of machine. The name of that machine is the Purgatory Demon King. Although Chen Ming had used his spiritual power to know the name of the Purgatory Demon King before. But now, he couldn't help but say what he had wanted to say before. Is the Chenibu prisoner with this name? That's not the case. The translator found the name directly from the ruins document. Speaking of this, I will also give you some data on rare individuals of the machine tribe that you may have never seen before, as well as various documents related to the machine tribe that have not been made public to the public. Chen Ming nodded and asked again, So what do you need me to do to get this thing? I need you to investigate the effect of this thing and see if it can be used. Question mark. Chen Ming was confused for a moment and said, I heard you talk about that thing called the cryogenic computing engine before. It is also a relic of that civilization that is used by the Empire in various star fields. So now that the cryogenic computing engine can be used, is there no way to figure out this purgatory core? Bai Quan explained. The situations of these two are different. Although most of the cryogenic computing engine was found in ruins, we have never found the accompanying instructions. Even the way it is used is the data obtained from the cryogenic computing engines in the operating military bases of the machine race when we captured the machine race's frontline colonies. By analyzing and replicating these running low-temperature computing engines, it took us a long time to slowly master the use of the low-temperature computing engines, and then we completely perfected them. The Demon King of Purgatory is different. It can control the increase of entropy on a large-scale battlefield, turning the entire battlefield environment into a high-temperature purgatory. This is too threatening for us. It is definitely a target that must be attacked as soon as possible. It is impossible to capture it alive while it is running. Even if there are remaining purgatory demon kings, they will often choose to self-destruct when the battlefield situation is completely out of control. At this time, we can't get anything. So we can only ensure that there will be no major problems on the battlefield by completely destroying the demon king at the beginning of the battle. By Quan's words seemed to prove that they had made such an attempt before but the result was obviously a failure. But the destroyed wreckage cannot capture the condition of the Purgatory Core when the Purgatory Demon King was running. Currently, no backup Purgatory Demon King has been found to have been captured. When a ground war occurs, no Demon King can survive until the end of the battlefield and keep running. So we can't observe the core operation in sufficient detail. Bai Quan continued to add. Then during the battle, the entropy gathered by the Demon King will also drastically interfere with the use of any sensing equipment. As a result, we have no way to scan it directly on the battlefield. So, the most we can do is analyze this core function from the Purgatory Demon King, which is the control of entropy displayed by the Purgatory Demon King. The actual use of the core, the internal energy flow, and the entropy control effect are constructed are difficult to determine. Shen Ming suddenly asked by Quan a question at this time. How are you sure that the Purgatory Demon King is controlling entropy instead of simply creating high temperatures? Have you ever seen a situation where the entire battlefield on a habitable planet remains at 200 degrees Celsius for several hours without changing? This, Chen Ming has never seen it before. The Demon King he acquired before was obviously an antique from the Mechanical Clan. Perhaps because of the constant interference from the giant phase beast. The Mechanical Clan's investment in that colony was somewhat lacking in many areas. That Purgatory Demon King doesn't even have the core chip that carries the consciousness of the mechanical race. So naturally it can't do what the Demon King in good condition can do. Now that Bai Quan has answered Chen Ning's question, Chen Ning has no other questions to ask. Finally, he said, Are you sure you want to hand this thing over to me? Bai Quan understood what Chen Ming meant. It was already established that Chen Ming's spiritual power was not only for controlling the spacecraft, but also for controlling any mechanical body. Therefore, 
The Purgatory Core handed over to Chen Ming will only belong to Chen Ming after being touched by Chen Ming. However, the answer has been determined since Bai Quan took out the Purgatory Core from the beginning. We have fought many ground wars with the mechanical race. And this thing is not too rare. If we can use one or several Purgatory Cores as the cost in exchange for a thorough understanding of how Purgatory Cores operate, I think it should be worth it. Chen Ming nodded and took the Purgatory Core from Bai Quan's hand and the spiritual energy instantly saturated the core. In Bai Quan's unmistakable eyes, the crimson lines of the purgatory core in Chen Ming's hand flickered with a shimmer caused by the stimulation of some spiritual energy fluctuations. Chen Ming withdrew his spiritual energy fluctuations, and the glimmer of light at the core of purgatory became silent again. Chen Ming said, So this thing should be regarded as an initial test for me. Choose the simplest thing for me to study, and see if I have the ability to study other more expensive things obtained from the mechanical tribe? Bai Quan replied directly. Absolutely. The 14th Legion does still have many things on hand that have not yet been researched into actual effects. And they are basically all stolen from the mechanical tribe. Although their research could not produce results. It would not be possible if they were handed over to Chen Ming. As long as Chen Ming can study the basic effects of this purgatory core, Bai Quan can hand over more things to Chen Ming for research even some things whose principles have been clarified, such as low-temperature computing engines, can be handed over to Qin Ming to study again. After all, Qin Ming's spiritual power is sometimes more accurate than the results obtained by using various equipment, at least in fields related to the machine race. Qin Ming didn't say much. After all, Bai Quan had a very normal reason for choosing to do this, and it was also good for him. But he still has some questions to ask. What is the value of a machine race like the Purgatory Demon King? It's not bad. The ability to control entropy in a large area is there. It can be regarded as a top-notch ground combat unit. It will be very effective in ground combat when combined with high heat-resistant robots. But it doesn't mean much to us. Because the main enemies the Empire currently faces, the Afterglow and the Machine Tribe, are not afraid of high temperatures. So my evaluation is that it's okay. So the core is more important. Is the core more important? Chin Ming asked by Quan again. If I have indeed developed the core method of use, what are your ideas for using it? According to you, it will definitely not be used on the battlefield. Yes. So our current main purpose is to understand the operating principle of the Purgatory Core. But I have heard of a possible use, which is to combine the Purgatory Core with a cryogenic computing engine to achieve the effect of installing a cryogenic computing engine on a non-volcanic planet. Chin Ning thought about this idea for a while and asked, Is the output power of the Purgatory Core enough? It seems that it is not enough at the moment. But we can also choose to use multiple purgatory cores at the same time to match a low temperature computing engine. The quantity gap between the two we have is not at the same level. Bai Quan's answer successfully solved Chun Ming's confusion. After Chun Ming thought about it for a while, he suddenly expressed an idea that he had always had. Then can you drive a capital ship to bomb a desolate planet with no resources? and manually create volcanic planets in some galaxies that don't have volcanic planets by destroying plates and attacking the planet's core? Bai Quan suddenly gave Chen Ming a thumbs up and said, Good idea. This idea has been mentioned by people in the research department in the Imperial Army over the years. But you should also expect the result. It is too difficult to achieve and too dangerous. It has never been implemented in practice. Chen Ming just casually mentioned that if there is no feasibility, forget it. He didn't get too entangled and said, I have no problem here. Okay. The equipment to help you research the mechanical clan will be delivered one after another in a few days. I'll give you a list later. If you need anything else, just ask. As long as it's installed by the Institute, it's fine. Bai Quan said something suddenly occurred to him and said, By the way, at the meeting at the headquarters yesterday, you said that you would help people actually verify the situation of the machine tribe being controlled by you. Those individuals did I let them come over? Um, that's fine. Although Chen Ming said before that this was an excuse he made casually. But the situation is different now. The timing of the successful research on prosthetic technology is too lucky. Those people can really call him over and actually see the effect of his use of psychic energy on the machine race. It can be regarded as proving the authenticity of what he proposed at the meeting. Chen Ming's answer surprised by Quan. After all, he didn't expect Chen Ming to agree to this kind of thing. Since the situation was different from what he thought, he immediately ignored the matter that Chen Ming had agreed to, and then said, Then do you need some assistance or something? Assistant? You can have one too. Although Chen Ming can control all the devices, 
it is still a bit tiring to control too many devices with too many distractions. If some things can be left to the assistant, he can save a lot of trouble. Well, then some of the people from the headquarters can stay as your assistants. Bai Quan said it matter-of-factly, but Chen Ning immediately realized something was wrong in his words and quickly asked, Wait a minute. I have no objection to assistants, but they are willing. Chen Ning thought that Bai Quan was going to select some freshly graduated college students from the 14th Army Corps. Why did he suddenly select those professional researchers who might know more about these aspects than he did? Bai Quan explained, The research on the machine family that you talked about at yesterday's meeting was very clear. So yesterday, someone used the psychic power of a special psyker overnight to completely block the psychic energy fluctuations around a machine race that was captured by us. Although it seems to have no impact at all, there are no other psychic fluctuations at all. But the machine that was blocked did have extremely obvious intelligence problems. It should be due to the weakening of its computing power. This just proves your statement. And there are some other things you mentioned about the machine race that have been verified since yesterday. Some of them have already produced results. It can be said that all of them are fine. So, you are now the authority on the research on the mechanical race. There are many researchers who study the machine race and are willing to assist you. It is not shameful to be the assistant of a psyker like you. All right. It seems that there is no need for him to prove that what he said is correct. Someone has already verified it for him. What about these researchers who want to be his assistants? I have to choose myself. It's better to give me some new people. Bai Quan immediately agreed. No problem. I will send you the list when the time comes. And you can choose by yourself. After seeing that Chen Ning agreed with his idea, Bai Quan said, Okay. Then this will be your research institute from now on. Do you want to give it a name? My institute? Chen Ming shook his head and said, Just call it the Chaofan Research Institute. Bai Quan was stunned for a moment, then smiled and said, I have a suspicion that you are working in a certain research institute. But it's okay. Then let me say it first. Your research institute needs to regularly study some special items similar to the Purgatory Core that we sent to you. In addition to studying these things, you can study anything you want as long as it is related to the machine family. All your needs related to the research of the machine family can be met. Chen Ming asked with some uncertainty. You can study anything? Anything is fine. You can even study how many kilowatt hours of electricity the machine race consumes for breakfast every day, as long as it is related to the machine race. These seemingly useless contents accumulate, and someone will find important connections in them in the future. Chen Ning asked with some confusion. What is this statement? Over the years, the Empire has encountered more opponents than just Yu Wei and the Machine Tribe. But most of the other opponents are now dead. Thanks to our continuous research on those things, there will always be someone who can find the key points from the complicated research results and then integrate them to discover the enemy's fatal weakness. And then, there will be no more. Chen Ning instantly thought of an enemy that matched what Bai Quan was saying now. Thorn Zerg. When Chen Ming looked for the Thorn Zerg before, he found a large number of papers and they were extremely complicated. These papers seem unrelated to each other and make no sense. But it seems that Chen Ning did see a bunch of cited articles at the end of the paper that describe the various situations of the Zerg itself in great detail. When an enemy has been thoroughly studied from what he eats in the morning to what color quilt he wears at night, it is really easy to deal with this enemy. That's okay. I'll remember it. Okay. Let's do this for the research institute first. I have to explain your own affairs clearly to you. What's the matter? Bai Quan reached out and patted Chen Ning's shoulder, and at the same time put his other hand on his chest and said, You have arrived at our 14th Army Corps, and you plan to change your original study schedule. But I don't have that much time here. Half a day is the limit I can spare. I'll have to let someone else take care of teaching you for the remaining half of the day. Chen Ming understood, nodded and said, That's right. I understand. It's best if you understand. It will be normal teaching in the morning. I will come directly to you then. In the afternoon, I will assign the personnel tomorrow, and I will ask the instructor to meet you in the morning. No problem. Okay, now let me ask you one last time. Are you sure you really want to stay here? You can also see your current situation. Although Bai Quan didn't explain clearly, Chen Ming already understood. Even after he came to the 14th Legion, he could no longer leave the dome where he was now at will. His psychic ability makes too many people fearful who would expect that the place where they stay every day would suddenly be controlled by a psyker, and everything else would be controlled by the psyker. So the meaning of Bai Quan's words is very clear, and it's not too late to regret it now. But now that Chen Ming is here, 
He will definitely not change his mind at will. He said firmly. Sure. Bai Quan stared at Chen Ming for a while and said. I hope you made the right decision. Okay. That's all you have to deal with here. Is everything okay? If you have any problems, tell me now and I'll help you solve them. Chen Ming thought about it and said. You said that all the equipment and manpower will be sent to me soon. And the research subjects will be sent to me when I complete the research on the core of purgatory. I can do whatever I want when I don't have research tasks. And about the learning aspect. Because you don't have so much time to prepare to find an instructor for me. That's it? It feels like something is missing. Bai Quan immediately asked. What's missing? Aren't we at war with the machine tribe now? Although you said it's still in the early stages. You don't seem to have mentioned this aspect at all. Chen Ning's reason for coming to the 14th Legion was largely to participate in the war with the Machine Tribe. Bai Quan couldn't help but mention this now. Bai Quan immediately said, This, I know. But can you understand these contents now? Chen Ming. On the other hand, most of the content of Bai Quan's sect at this stage is about Battlefield Fleet Command. And it really does not involve too much depth in this kind of star field level war. If Chen Ning were really asked to understand, he might not be able to understand the detailed situation of the current empire and the machine clan. Bai Quan also continued, I have actually thought about this matter. I will talk to your new instructor about it later and ask him to give you intensive training in this area in the past few days. At least you must be able to understand combat-related matters before I can let you be exposed to these things. Is that okay? No problem. That's it. I don't have any other questions. Bai Quan nodded and said, Then I'm leaving. See you tomorrow. When Chen Ming and Bai Quan walked to the entrance of the research institute, they saw another shuttle landing outside the edge of the dome in the distance. The original shuttle boat was parked in the technical secondary school area between the dome and the outside world. Although it did not turn off, the driver on it had already switched to the shuttle boat that had just arrived. Bai Quan nodded to Chen Ming one last time and took steps. And when he stood at the door of the transit area, he put on the helmet he took off after entering the dome. He waved his hand to Chen Ming and said, This shuttle boat is left for you. If you have any questions, tell me before we set sail. Chen Ming remotely controlled the shuttle boat that had come before to shut down and parked aside. Watching Bai Quan board another shuttle boat, disappear into the dark sky of this volcanic planet with firelight, and then return to the large laboratory behind him. The laboratory is still empty, and when Chen Ming turns around, he can even hear the echo of his footsteps. A feeling of loneliness suddenly came over him. Chen Ming instantly felt his scalp numb and immediately returned his attention to his body. When he saw the flow of people coming and going in the ordinary dock not far from the highest point, Chen Ming breathed a long sigh of relief, and his tense nerves relaxed again. Sure enough, this feeling of loneliness is still a bit torturous. The previous journey in space for more than half a year seemed to have left him with some psychological problems. Chen Ming felt that he had to find a way to ask Bai Quan for some small animals to raise. Anyway, the square outside is so big, and the area covered by green plants can be used to raise some animals or something. By the way, you can also ask Bai Quan for a few guards to increase your popularity. After Chen Ming calmed down again, he focused on the core of purgatory again. He already has some ideas about researching the core of purgatory. Although he had a purgatory core before, that core was installed by him in the purgatory demon king to conduct various tests that could only be carried out in cooperation with the purgatory demon king because Chen Ming's idea was to use the Purgatory Demon King as a ground combat force. Apart from the Zer, he only had the Purgatory Demon King left to fight with, and it's hard to take out bugs directly in front of people now. Therefore, the mechanical race has become his best method in this situation. So he must use the Demon King with the Purgatory Core installed to conduct combat tests. And he has indeed never done experiments that directly use the Purgatory Core itself to achieve some effects. That's different now. Chen Ning can even use this purgatory core to conduct some destructive experiments. Anyway, the dome is under his control. And no one knows what is going on under the dome. No one can question the results of his experiments. He will try his best to make up a reasonably acceptable process when the time comes. Try to make it possible for people to use the purgatory core and replicate the process of Chen Ning's research. After all, relics of another civilization are often designed to allow ordinary people to use psychic powers. Of course not now. Chen Ming put away the purgatory core. The research plan that he already had in mind could not be completed in a day or two. He was not in a hurry, so he might as well get familiar with the environment of this experimental dome now. By the way, based on the list of research equipment sent by Bai Quan, 
Plan the installation location of the equipment inside the laboratory. Chapter 210, The Magical Use of Purgatory Core On the Baekwon side, after he boarded the shuttle boat, someone immediately came up and held his arm, holding a small steel knife and scratching by Quan's hand that had just touched Chin Ming's shoulder. At the same time, he said, the pupils, fingerprints, and voice prints have all been compared and confirmed to be Chin Ming's. My lord, the skin fragment tissue has now been obtained, and genetic comparison can be carried out soon. If the genetic results are okay, then there is indeed no problem. It's just that I've already used psychic powers. Is there still a need to check? Bai Quan shook his head. Of course he knew there was no need to check. It was just the feeling he had before. That Chen Ming in front of him didn't look like Chen Ming. That made him make this decision. Although judging from the actual contact just now, Chen Ming is indeed Chen Ming. And the result has been determined. But for some reason, he still felt that there was something wrong with Chen Ming's behavior. Bai Quan shook his head again temporarily letting go of his entanglement on this issue. Anyway, Jin Ming is already here. If anything happens, you can slowly find a chance to deal with it later. Early the next morning, Bai Quan took the shuttle boat and landed on Jin Ming's dome, and soon found Jin Ming, who was studying the core of purgatory in the laboratory with the equipment he made yesterday. As soon as he came up, he said to Jin Ming, There is bad news. Our volcanic planet is now entering a period of periodic geological activity. Volcanic eruptions and earthquakes will become more frequent. And the dome may also be damaged. If you encounter an accident, you can hide underground in the laboratory. Chen Ming knew that the underground floor of the laboratory was still a laboratory, while the second underground floor was a pure refuge center. Almost all domes built on similar extreme planets will have such a design to protect the safety of the personnel inside, and facilitate subsequent rescue in the event of an accident. And Chen Ming also knew that something was wrong outside the dome today. When he got up during the day and walked from the dormitory building to the laboratory, he could see that the environment outside was even worse than yesterday. Not only is the visibility reduced, but the activity of the magma is increased. From time to time, Chen Ming could still see red lights rising into the sky outside. The dome was also hit by splashing magma from time to time. But fortunately, the dome seemed fine. This is the manifestation of a geologically active period. So when Bai Quan told the specific situation, Xin Ming directly asked, Then you are still coming? Bai Quan still had a calm look on his face and said, It's okay. It's just that the geological activities have become a little more frequent. You'll get used to it. Under normal circumstances, the safety of the dome can be guaranteed. Don't worry too much. I just want to remind you that if there is an accident, you won't know what to do. Chin Ming nodded, put down the glowing red purgatory core and said, That it's still normal teaching today. Right. Yes. That's it. I've brought all the information you need. Bai Quan shook the terminal in his hand that Chin Ming had given him. Chin Ming didn't say much, and took Bai Quan to a rare room in the laboratory that was equipped with some basic equipment. Before the class officially started, Chin Ming said to Bai Quan, I have something to tell you now. Didn't you send me an equipment list yesterday? Yes. They are all equipment sent to you. Do you want to add new equipment? Chen Ming denied. I don't need new equipment for the time being. I just need some equipment on the list to be shipped quickly. Then, there are a few pieces of equipment that must be delivered first. The sooner the better. Which ones? Chen Ming resent the list by Quan sent him. And he checked some items on it. In addition to equipment, he also needs some additional materials. Bai Quan muttered the name of the equipment that Chen Ning checked in a low voice. High precision thermometer. Temperature and pressure stabilizer. Temperature conduit. Large constant temperature repeater. And thermal insulation materials. At first glance, it is obvious that this thing is related to the research on the core of purgatory. So it must not be delayed. Okay. I'll help you make arrangements now. Bai Quan took out another terminal and asked Chen Ming while contacting the person. Is there anything else? There's no rush at the moment. Just this priority. Good. Bai Quan quickly put down the terminal and said, It's been arranged. Let's start normally. Chen Ming nodded, sat down and looked at Bai Quan. The morning lecture quickly ended normally. And at the end, another shuttle boat landed on Chen Ming's dome. Coming down from the top was the instructor assigned by Bai Quan to Chen Ming, responsible for Chen Ming's afternoon teaching. The instructor has a very ordinary face and a very ordinary name. He was conscientious in class but his level seemed to be a little behind by Quan's. However, 
Chen Ming was thinking too much about having someone with Bai Quan's level as his instructor. Anyway, it's not a big problem. The instructor in the afternoon was to help him supplement some theoretical knowledge. There is also the knowledge of large-scale battlefields that he needs to learn more recently. Of course, it is just basic knowledge and does not include any actual combat command and other knowledge. So it doesn't matter if the level of education is less than clear. To really learn command, you still have to learn from Bai Quan. Time soon came tonight. Chen Ming did not review and consolidate the content during the day as usual today. Even though the difficulty of the content taught by Bai Quan has gradually become abstract recently, the basic knowledge of large-scale wars and front lines in the afternoon is also relatively complicated. Chen Ming did not choose to review, but directly took the equipment and materials that he had specially asked Bai Quan to speed up during the day to the laboratory. He wants to continue the research he left unfinished yesterday because he saw some potential from this research that he had not discovered before. In fact, at the beginning, Chen Ming only regarded the research on the core of purgatory as an ordinary task. But yesterday, Chen Ming became familiar with the situation of the dome and completely controlled the dome. And after completing the experiment of connecting a simple ordinary power system to the core of purgatory in the laboratory, he discovered a strange place. It is his spiritual energy itself that allows him to master the method of controlling mechanical equipment. Of course, he can master it according to the function of the equipment itself. There will be no effect of mastering more than the ability to use the device. For example, there was an electromagnetic gun in front of him that Chen Ming had never used before. As long as he used his spiritual power to control it, he would be able to master the technology of using the electromagnetic gun. Not only can he use his psychic energy directly, he can also directly operate the electromagnetic gun himself. But if Chen Ming wants this electromagnetic gun to walk on the ground, he can only use psychic energy to modify a pair of mechanical legs. The electromagnetic gun is no longer the original electromagnetic gun. And the various equipment he modified are not the original equipment either. In other words, Chen Ming's psychic power cannot do things beyond the functions of the mechanical equipment itself. And it can only be achieved through transformation. Chen Ming's original understanding of the Purgatory Core is the core component of the Purgatory Demon King. It is matched with the Purgatory Demon King and has no other functions. And he himself does not have the ability to transform the core of Purgatory. Therefore, Chen Ming had always believed that the Purgatory Core could only be used in conjunction with the Demon King. Even after getting the Purgatory Core given by Bai Quan, his research was in this direction. What he has to do is help analyze the core effects and sort out the functions into a version that others can understand. The actual modifications and further applications should be left to others. Since cryogenic computing engines can be used on a large scale within the empire, it means that there is always someone studying the technology of another civilization. And they are definitely better than him. He just needs to figure out the principles and then assign the task to the right person. But now, after yesterday, Chen Ning relied on some hand rub equipment to conduct a rough test that he would never have done in the first place. He found that the situation in the core of purgatory seemed to be a little different from what he thought. When he used spiritual energy to directly control the core that was removed from the demon king, he found that a new function appeared on the core, or a new module, an independent running module. And the reason for this new independent module, after the core is disassembled, its internal structure will deflect and create a new structure. It is not a module used to support the purgatory demon king, but it can directly call the basic functions of the purgatory core. So what does it come with? Chen Ming already had a guess in his mind. So he increased his efforts in researching the core of purgatory yesterday. However, yesterday's time was obviously not enough for research. And the laboratory equipment was completely insufficient. Chen Ming is not outrageous enough to master the licensing methods of all research equipment. So he can only wait for Bai Quan to send some important equipment. That was the device he asked Bai Quan to deliver during the day. Today, he had to figure out the reason for the core situation. Chen Ming's spiritual energy once again took over the purgatory core, penetrating every corner of the purgatory core. If the situation is really what he thinks, the purgatory core should bring him some surprises. The next day, Bai Quan came to the laboratory like yesterday and saw Chen Ming, who was also studying the core of purgatory. After saying H. Lo, he asked Chen Ming, How is the situation? Chen Ming's face was a little anxious, but his eyes were still locked on the core of purgatory. And he said without raising his head, I researched until late at night yesterday, and I did make some interesting discoveries. But I still need time and some equipment. There are some equipment that are not on the list, 
and there are some on the list that I need you to send quickly. Jin Ming reached out and clicked a few times on the terminal next to him, then sent the list to Bai Quan. Several research equipment related to the Purgatory Corps were checked again on the list, and a few more things were added by Chen Ming himself. Bai Quan took a look and said, Two types of thermal insulation coating materials, a device that can cool down extremely quickly, and a high-intensity temperature detector that can operate in extreme environments. Chen Ming was not surprised that Bai Quan knew what he needed. These were materials and equipment commonly used in the manufacturing process of spacecraft engine nozzle components. Bai Quan checked for a while, and then said, No problem. I can arrange a batch for you right away. Is there anything else you need? Bai Quan's question reminded Chen Ming of his previous thoughts and said, My place is a bit deserted. Are there any small animals that I can raise? Well, we have a special breeding farm. Chen Ming raised his head unexpectedly and asked, A breeding farm? Otherwise, where do you think the meat and vegetables in the cold storage in your dormitory building come from? Chen Ming lowered his head again and asked, isn't it packaged survival food? Of course, there are packaged survival foods. But not for times like this. Of course, we have to supply fresh food to the army in normal times. This has an impact on the morale of the entire army. And the main reason is that the transportation cost of the volcanic planet is high. And the regular transportation of meat and vegetables that are difficult to preserve fresh for a long time is too expensive. Although the cost of building a complete recycling system for farmland and livestock farms is also very high. It is a one-time investment and can always be harvested. I will definitely choose this. Chen Ming had some questions and said, I remember that the military in the previous sector was quite corrupt. Is this kind of facility still maintained? It is maintained, but only partially. To provide fresh food to the local military's top brass. The entire facility was mainly rebuilt after I took over. And it was also partially expanded. Ahem. That's too far off topic. What pet do you want? The animals I breed there are all improved breeds with high meat yields, short growth cycles, and short lifespans. They are not suitable as pets. If you really need it, you can just tell me, and I will help you arrange it and bring it from other places. The anxiety on Chen Ming's face due to the unsatisfactory progress of the experiment eased a little. He suddenly turned to look at Bai Quan and asked, Anything is okay? Bai Quan quickly went through common pets in his mind. Even strange pets like spiders and scorpions and finally said, everything should be fine. I want the Aurora Wind Spirit, the giant butterfly that can create Aurora. Question mark. Do you want to keep butterflies that live in the atmosphere in a dome? Chen Ming said, I heard that the larvae of Aurora Wind Spirit live on the ground and will emerge as pupae after three or four years of growth. After it emerges, it will continue to live at low altitude for about a year. During this time, its size will soar to the point where it can fly into the atmosphere. I should be able to raise it for a few years. Right? Bai Quan's face was still full of confusion and he asked, How do you know so much about this thing? Of course Chen Ming understands. Because this Aurora Wind Spirit was one of the creatures he had originally planned to feed to the Insect Queen. Behind the natural phenomenon that produces beautiful auroras are terrifying creatures that can control plasma. It is simply the best source of genes for the Insect Queen. But precisely because it can control plasma, it is very difficult to capture the Aurora Wind Spirit. This is not the key point. The key point is that the Aurora Wind Spirit only exists on one planet in the prosperous star field of the Empire. And the Empire has also established an ecological protection zone. It's impossible to get it through normal means. But bite you inside is obviously not a normal way. After thinking for a moment, he picked up the terminal and called someone. Finally, he turned to Chen Ming and said, Aurora Wind Spirit can do it but we can only get its eggs or newly hatched larvae. Don't think about it as an adult. Just because the plasma generated by the Aurora Wind Spirit could damage the dome. It was impossible for Bai Quan to support Chen Ning. The larvae will do. Two. That's it. I'll make the arrangements. But let's make it clear first that the ecological environment in the dome is not suitable for the Aurora Wind Spirit. And you will most likely feed it to death. It's okay. I won't want a second one if I raise it to death. Chen Ming didn't care whether Aurora Wind Spirit died or not. He just wanted to feed the queen the worms. If it wasn't so easy to survive, it would be hard for him to find an excuse for Aurora Wind Spirit to die. Anyway, the insect queen has metamorphosed to the point where it can express the genes it has devoured directly through its consciousness from a body that has no new genes it acquired at all. As long as the queen can separate some tissue to eat the larvae sent by Bai Quan, the rest is easy to say. Bai Quan was slightly relieved that Chen Ming didn't ask for too much. 
after the two of them arrived in the classroom. Bai Quan suddenly said, By the way, some people from the think tank asked me to ask you a question. What happened to the conjectures they raised before? Chen Ming was stunned for a moment and said, Are they still paying attention to me? I thought they were just a one-time think tank you hired. It's not a one-time thing, of course. It's just that I can let them do other things if you don't need it. Then I still want them. After all, the think tank directly discovered the huge potential of his psychic ability and the machine race to build a hive mind network of the machine race through what he said at the meeting and a few casual introductions to his psychic powers. The think tank's logical thinking ability, divergent thinking ability, and association ability are really exaggerated. Maybe there will be some performance in the future? Therefore, Chin Ming does not want to reject the existence of the think tank now. They didn't show up two days before I came here. I thought it was because you didn't make arrangements. Bai Quan explained helplessly. I am actually making arrangements. But their continuous transfer of personnel will take time. Originally, they have just joined the think tank. Their identities have just been transferred from other departments. And then they have to transfer to you. This always takes time. They'll be here in two days. It won't be long. Also, after understanding the situation, Chen Ming said, Let's wait until they come over at that time. Well, let's start class. The day passed in a blink of an eye. Night comes again. Chen Ming still came to the laboratory. Yesterday, he basically analyzed the special internal structure of the purgatory core. It is a semi-independent nested structure. The same components can be used in different modules to perform different functions. Although the two functions cannot be used at the same time, this design does achieve the most functions with the least materials and the smallest space. Chen Ming couldn't understand the key design related to psychic energy inside the purgatory core. But the core design, this special pure structural design, can still be understood and mastered. But Chen Ming's focus is not on this now. What he wants to find out most now is the effect that the other layer of purgatory core can use under his spiritual control. Chen Ming lowered his head and devoted himself wholeheartedly to the research on the core of purgatory. When Chen Ming raised his head next time, the time has reached late at night like yesterday. A smile and a trace of regret appeared on Chen Ming's face. Although the research has not yet completely succeeded, he is very close. There's just one last step left. It's a pity that this last step can't be completed yet. So he can only rest first. It's dawn again. Another day of teaching. Another day. Bai Quan opened the door of the laboratory and saw Chen Ming standing in front of the laboratory equipment. Bai Quan greeted Chen Ming as usual and at the same time sent a list of personnel to Chen Ming on the terminal. Chen Ming turned his head slightly, glanced at the terminal and asked, What is this? This is a list of the researchers who came to the Gallo Star Territory. There are two lists. One is for those who came to see it and then left. And the other is for those who are willing to stay and be your assistant. Chen Ming didn't click on it and asked directly, How many people are there? The total number of people who came is more than 1,200. And the number of people who are willing to stay is about 500. Chen Ming's hand suddenly stopped and he said, So many? But Chen Ming had previously thought that the number of assistants would be around 50. If there were more, it would be difficult for him to manage. After all, he has no experience in managing too many people. And these 50 are almost the limit. It's just that there are so many people who are willing. But it doesn't mean that you have to keep so many people. Can't you just pick the people you think are useful and keep them? Two. Chen Ning was relieved and let go of the purgatory core. He opened the list and selected people to serve as his assistants. When Chen Ning returned the selected personnel list to Bai Quan, Bai Quan said to him, People should be able to arrive tomorrow. After the effect of your psychic energy on the machine race and the experimental verification are completed. Who should leave and who should stay? Stay. And the five think tanks will come to you tomorrow together with others. Chen Ming and Bai Quan didn't chat for too long about trivial matters. The day of teaching started normally. Time professionally came to night. Chen Ning had just seen off the instructor when he received something from Bai Quan. During the day today, he also asked for some equipment from Bai Quan. Although it took a while, it was finally here. Chen Ning brought the equipment to the laboratory. The regrets of yesterday were completely gone because he knew he would achieve his goals soon. Chen Ming clenched his hands and held the delicate equipment. A miniature antimatter reactor that Chen Ming had seen before. This is the equipment that Chen Beitian and Bai Quan want. This reactor will be able to play its role immediately. Chen Ming's research process yesterday was much smoother than the day before yesterday. It was basically confirmed that his guess was correct. 
Jin Ming has now completely mastered the method of using spiritual energy to directly activate the core of purgatory. Instead of the original normal one, he had already used spiritual power to master it by using the matching system of the purgatory demon king to activate the purgatory core and then use the core. This is equivalent to skipping the repeater of the purgatory demon king and letting Chen Ming directly use the purgatory core himself. Chen Ming himself controls the entropy increase and entropy stability of the entire environment by controlling the core of purgatory through spiritual energy. Now, he's going to the final step of the experiment, the actual test. That's why he needs an antimatter reactor to completely activate this purgatory core. Chen Ming took the purgatory core and the antimatter reactor and connected them with the relay device he had just made, thus plugging an energy source into the purgatory core. Just when Chen Ming was about to start the test, the terminal next to him suddenly rang. Bai Quan made a phone call late at night. Chapter 211 The Backdoor of Psychers Chen Ming, who was just about to activate the purgatory core, frowned and answered Bai Quan's call. Bai Quan's voice came immediately from the other end of the phone. The geological activity suddenly became violent tonight, and the volcanic eruption will be more serious. It's best to go to the second underground floor to rest. Chen Ming's frown relaxed. He thought Bai Quan came to inform him in the middle of the night because someone was causing trouble for him. But that was it. New! Chen Ming responded and hung up the phone. Chen Ming didn't need to be reminded by Bai Quan to know that geological activities had been very frequent in recent days. And tonight was the peak of activity. Because the main control room in the dome is connected to an observation system at the 14th Legion stronghold. There will be regular weather reports sent to each dome. Although this, weather forecast, is not about sunshine and rain, but about the intensity of geological activities and the intensity of volcanic eruptions. The effect is still the same. Although Chen Ming basically didn't leave the door, as long as he entered the laboratory during the day, he still paid attention to the situation outside every day. In fact, he has been waiting for this day, the best day to test Infernal Core. The extremely hot environment of the volcanic planet is the most suitable environment for testing the core of purgatory. Chen Ming put away the terminal, took a line and connected it to the purgatory core in the laboratory, and walked out of the laboratory. Through the transparent dome, the outside world appeared in front of Chen Ming. Although the entire planet looked like it was shrouded in gray volcanic ash, fortunately, the hot magma emitted firelight, allowing Chen Ming to see clearly the general situation near the dome. But it can only be said that the situation does not seem optimistic. Intensified geological activities have caused surging magma to accumulate on the surface and there is now almost an orange-red ocean near the dome. Well, isn't there something wrong with this situation? Chen Ming remembered that when he came two days ago, he specifically asked about the location of the Baikuan Dome and whether it would be affected by geological activities and cause damage to the dome. Baikuan said that all the sites for the dome are located on large geologically stable plates. Generally speaking, only magma erupted from far away can fall near the dome. Why do I see that everything around me is flooded with magma now? But it's not a big problem. Since Chen Ning wants to test the purgatory core, the testing environment must be as difficult as possible. Although the purgatory core cannot reduce entropy, it should be no problem to transfer the entropy to farther places. Chen Ning raised the purgatory core connected to the miniature antimatter reactor in front of him so that he could observe the core's condition during the subsequent test. Then, he poured his mental power directly into the core entropy in his hand. The psychic energy fluctuations immediately spread from his body to the core of purgatory. The purgatory core was stimulated by Chen Ming's psychic fluctuations, and the psychic fluctuations generated by the activation of internal psychic components were all restrained in the core by the isolation material of the isolation layer. Only the final effect produced after the purgatory core is activated takes effect outside the core. The core of purgatory, which was as cold as iron, gradually began to become warm. The surrounding ambient temperature which was originally stabilized by the dome's life support system, but was deliberately raised by Chen Ming for testing today, is gradually decreasing. The entropy that exists within the dome does not disappear, but is expelled outside the dome. The magma activity near the dome quickly became active. However, since the temperature inside the dome did not change much, the magma activity outside was only active for a while. The entropy dissipated in these domes dissipates into the surrounding environment on its own. Integrating with the environment, no longer exert undue influence on the local environment. Chen Ming was quite satisfied with the effect. The set temperature of the life support system was easily readjusted to the appropriate level to avoid further wasting the dome's power, then continue to control the purgatory core and conduct subsequent tests. That is, 
continued to transfer the surrounding entropy in further directions. After the magma near the dome surged for a while, it gradually subsided under the influence of the purgatory core and cooled into pieces of pitch black rock covered with magma lines. The area covered by these rocks, which suddenly appeared in an environment full of extreme heat and magma, is still expanding in a circular shape at a speed visible to the naked eye. However, it takes time for the effect of the purgatory core to reach the bottom of the magma. Therefore, the magma in those areas that have not had time to transfer the entropy out has experienced some situations due to the sudden increase in temperature and sudden change in the environment caused by the dissipation of entropy to the surroundings. Rocks that have been solidified due to the transfer of entropy are constantly being blasted by the active magma below. The broken rock melted again under the high temperature, and the sprayed magma continued to flow towards the dome. This situation made Chen Ming immediately change his idea of calling the purgatory core, choosing to give priority to transferring the entropy at the bottom while stabilizing the entropy at the top. Soon the situation was controlled by Chen Ming again. The area covered by the cooled rocks is continuously expanding in a circular shape, and the originally turbulent magma is like boiled water in front of Chen Ming. Everything went very smoothly. Even if there seems to be magma continuously erupting from the nearby ground, Chen Ming can quickly call on the purgatory core to cool it down completely resolved all current issues around the dome. During the testing process, Chin Ming had also become thoroughly familiar with how to use the purgatory core. But at this moment, out of the corner of his eye, Chin Ming suddenly saw a bright fire appearing behind him, completely covering all the redness of the spewing magma in front of him. He immediately turned back and found that behind the dark dust shrouded in volcanic ash, a mountain peak full of cracks and flowing magma suddenly rose up on the originally flat ground. The appearance of this mountain, which was almost vertical to the ground, caused the surrounding terrain to instantly become rugged. It was like a bamboo shoot suddenly protruding from a small hill where only some weeds grew. And then the bamboo sprouted many bamboo shoots that could destroy the terrain. And that vertical mountain with flowing magma is obviously a volcano. If you can see it clearly from this distance, this vertical volcano is probably 2,000 meters high. When Chen Ming turned his head to look at it, its first eruption had just reached its peak moment. The jetting lava flow is the tree branches, and the flying volcanic ash is the leaves. This volcano is like a world tree with magma at its core. Turtle, is this the power of nature? Chen Ming just sighed. Then, after a brief gap in the volcanic eruption, the second violent eruption of the volcano instantly enveloped it in thick smoke. Chen Ming could only barely see the huge lava column reaching the sky. Although Chen Ming could see that the volcano was some distance away from the dome, and the magma inside the cracked volcano mainly poured from the top to the bottom. But some of the magma ejected during the volcanic eruption will soon fall on the dome. Although the magma ejected by the 2,000-meter huge volcano does not seem to be a threat at first glance. After all, Chen Ming has heard of many larger and taller volcanoes. It was just based on the size of the vertical volcano he had never seen before that he actually saw before it was shrouded in volcanic ash. Chen Ming felt that the dome seemed a little unreliable. Even with Bai Quan's previous assurance that the dome was safe, Chen Ming's armor should be enough to cut off the high temperatures from the outside world. But it was impossible for him to risk his life. So Chen Ming made a prompt decision and hid on the second floor underground with the purgatory core. By the way, he also used his own high-grade metal inventory at the temporary base, mixed with various metal materials, to fill the entire underground layer between the second underground layer and the surface, completely protecting himself. At the same time, Chin Ming has not stopped monitoring the surface and outside the dome. Even underground, testing of the infernal core can continue. The target of Chin Ming's test also changed to the vertical volcano. It's just that the magma flying from the sky is not easy to test. After all, if it cools in the air, the magma may turn into stones and hit the dome, which is no different from meteorites. Just in case, it's best not to do this. Just when the scope of influence of Chin Ming's purgatory core continued to expand, extending towards the volcano. Lava is constantly falling nearby and onto the dome. Looking out from inside the dome, there are all large areas of magma. And when the magma flows to the bottom, all the magma has been transferred to the entropy. The temperature of the magma decreased, quenched, and cooled, forming the rock that accumulated around the dome. Although some rocks near the dome that had incomplete entropy transfer exploded, bursting out clouds of magma, but magma also tends to cool within seconds of exposure. All the magma flowing near the dome was completely controlled by Chen Ming. Testing of entropy control has been completed. Next, we only need to test the effect of the purgatory core on the volcano. 
and find out the ultimate effect of the purgatory core. And the test will be over. But surprises always happen quickly. Very close to the dome. The solidified magma suddenly exploded. Completely exploding. This was not caused by the original small-scale entropy instability. But by the sudden appearance of a new heat source underground. And a new magma flow underground that erupted at a very close distance. At the same time, an extremely violent earthquake occurred underground near the dome. Even if the dome had complete earthquake-proof measures, Chen Ming, who was on the second underground floor, could clearly feel the direction of the earthquake source, looking along the source of the vibration through the dome's monitoring. Chen Ming suddenly saw a bulge on the ground covered with magma. It seemed that the sharp, vertical volcanic peak that shot straight into the sky just now was about to bulge very close to him. If the 2,000-meter volcano appeared at this distance, then the dome above his head might not be able to protect him at all. Chin Ming's face showed some seriousness for the first time in a long time. He had to find a way to solve this problem. Just a few minutes before Chin Ming saw this fatal vertical volcano rising suddenly from a position very close to the dome where he was. Bai Quan just finished handling most of the work he had to do today and went to the control center of an external device. This control center communicates with satellites in orbit around the volcanic planet. One of the satellites was observing the situation on Chin Ming's side. Of course, there is no worry about the dome being destroyed by the volcano. In his opinion, there was no need to worry about the protective capabilities of the dome. He has been here for a while and knows the local geological environment and the scale of various disasters, as well as the protective properties of the dome. So he was relatively assured of Qinming's safety when he observed the situation in the Qinming dome. In addition to maintaining the caution that anyone should have towards the psyker, he was also curious about one thing. Now that Chen Ming has the purgatory core in his hands, will he do anything? The core of purgatory and the volcanic planet are a perfect match. If Chen Ming has any results, there may be news. Today, when Bai Quan came to the satellite control center, he found that something unexpected happened near Chen Ming's dome. It's true, Bai Quan said silently in his heart, and randomly asked the person on duty to zoom in on the situation near Chen Ming's dome. You can see the completely solidified magma in the circular area near the dome which is obviously Chen Ming's attempt to use the purgatory core. It seems that Chen Ming's research should soon have results. Bai Quan nodded slightly and prepared to leave. However, just when he was about to continue doing his own thing, the picture on the satellite suddenly changed. The unique vertical volcano rising from the ground instantly attracted Bai Quan's attention. Lava waterfall? The staff nearby immediately locked the satellite completely on the volcano and said at the same time, Yes, it is the magma waterfall. Why is there such a phenomenon near the dome that only occurs outside? The staff member looked bitter, and he obviously couldn't give an answer. Bai Quan didn't make things difficult for him. He knew something was wrong. So he immediately took out his terminal and called someone from another geological monitoring department to ask about the problem. The other end of the phone suddenly became busy. After a while, the head of the geological monitoring department appeared on the other end of the phone and replied to Bai Quan. There is only one possibility for a magma waterfall to occur. There is a problem with the flow direction of the underground magma veins. We are conducting testing here. Please wait a moment. Bai Quan knew that just urging was useless. So let's just take advantage of this and let the staff of the control center start to detect whether there is a special phenomenon in the shape of a vertical volcano. Actually called a magma waterfall. Near the surface of the dome cluster here at the stronghold. While arranging the work of the people in the control center. Baikwan also notified several domes in the area near the magma waterfall, asking them to all evacuate underground and wait for subsequent rescue. The signs of a magma waterfall have appeared, and the protective ability of the dome may not be able to withstand such a close distance. What's more, more than one magma waterfall may appear next, which may cause problems. Just after Baikwan had arranged all the rescue teams, the geological monitoring department finally responded. Lieutenant General Bai, the results are out. Explain. We detected high-frequency entropy fluctuations underground. These entropies affected the originally solid plates, which eventually caused problems with the direction of the underground magma and overflowed directly from the middle of the plates. Fluctuations in entropy? Yes, it's the fluctuation of entropy. Bai Quan frowned and glanced at the situation on the satellite, and several thoughts quickly flashed through his mind. Is there something wrong with Chen Ming's research? Or is it a problem with Purgatory Core itself? Is the effect of the purgatory core so powerful? No matter what the actual situation is, it is always right to rescue people first. Just when Bai Quan was thinking about the reason for this situation, Chen Ming is busy on the second underground floor. 
just when signs of a vertical volcanic spirit appeared very close to where he was. He directly used his own spiritual power again, and directly reinforced the foundations around the first and second underground floors with his own materials several times. Then he continued to move all the research equipment in the laboratory to the second underground floor. Chen Ming has felt relieved. In the current situation, even if the entire volcano's lava flows towards him, he should be able to survive until Bai Quan realizes something is wrong while soaking in the magma sea. But when Chen Ming returned his attention to the ground, he saw two new huge bulges appeared again in the magma around the dome, together with the previous vertical volcano that had risen from the ground. It formed a triangle and completely surrounded the dome where Chen Ming was, counting the previous one. For volcanoes? Chen Ning looked at the surveillance camera in the other direction. At exactly this moment, the vertical volcano that first appeared far away from the dome had finished erupting due to the internal magma. The bottom structure was melted by the high heat of the flowing magma. The bottom structure was damaged and began to collapse. The continuously falling boulders with sporadic lava hit the ground, causing a terrifying shock. These earthquakes seemed to stimulate the underground environment, and the already continuous earthquakes became more frequent. The earthquake seems to be still stimulating the remaining three volcanoes. The second vertical volcano that appeared after the collapsed volcano was close to the height of the original vertical volcano in a short period of time. But it hasn't stopped yet. Countless rocks and magma are still pouring out from the ground, constantly raising the height of the vertical volcano. Lava is constantly overflowing from the cracks on the side of the volcano, falling from high altitude and hitting the dome. The obvious vibration made it really difficult not to wonder whether the dome would be damaged. The other third and fourth bulges that just emerged also formed two huge volcanoes in just a few dozen seconds. Chen Ming's purgatory core was constantly trying to dissipate the entropy in the volcano throughout the process. But the effect is not significant. As if the magma underground seems to be endless and supports these volcanoes. The purgatory core is currently still a little too weak in the face of the planet's power. However, Chen Ming still did not give up trying. And his spiritual energy surrounded the entire dome. Soon. The third volcano rising from the ground showed signs of rupture just like the second volcano. Raging magma sprayed out from the crater and rushed high into the sky. And the sides of the mountain peaks were completely cracked. The terrifying magma waterfall poured in the direction of the dome where Chen Ming was. Take a look at where the cracks appear on the volcano. It can be found that if nothing unexpected happens, the direction in which the three remaining volcanoes will collapse will all be in the direction of the dome where he is now. Chen Ming's face was solemn. He did not dare to hesitate for a moment and continued to control the spiritual energy inside the dome. At the same time, the purgatory core in his hand was still transferring the entropy inside the nearby magma. But there are still large pieces of magma hitting the dome from the direction above the head. It was obvious to the naked eye that the dome was unable to withstand the continuous damage that it should not have endured. A large number of cracks gradually appeared on the top. In just a few seconds, the third vertical volcano erupted. A big hole opened in the top of the dome where Chen Ming was. Magma and turbulent hot air flow were instantly drawn in from the breach. The vegetation inside the dome quickly shriveled up and burst into flames. And at the moment this scene happened, the metallic liquid controlled by Chen Ming seeped out from the ground, instantly extinguishing the flames and instantly enveloped the entire dome, repairing it as before. Although the plants here will never come back, but at least the dome was saved, temporarily. The reason why Chen Ning's reaction was slightly slower was because of the purgatory core in his hand. Chen Ning needs to activate a function in the core of purgatory that adapts to psychers. Since this purgatory core has left an interface for psychers to use at will, how is it possible that only psychers can exert effects similar to those of the infernal demon king when using the purgatory core? If psychics can only do things that ordinary people can do to the same extent, then this design must be a failure. The design of purgatory core is obviously not a failure. Just yesterday, Chen Ning found another thing on the core of Purgatory during his research on the core. Psychic Triggering Device. This is one of the backdoors specifically reserved for psychers when the Infernal Core was designed. It allows the intensity of the psychic energy fluctuation of the psyker to affect the final output of the Purgatory Core. The stronger Chen Ming's mental power and psychic energy fluctuations act on the core of Purgatory, the greater the scope and intensity of the entropy control he can perform. But there is a limit to the triggering of this feature. That is, the purgatory core requires a continuous supply of large amounts of energy. The miniature antimatter reactor that Chen Ming carried was limited by its size. And its output power was not enough. Therefore, Chen Ming also needs to maintain the power system of the dome connected to the core of purgatory. 
It was the process of transforming the internal circuitry of the dome that he had never actually touched before and shutting down the dome's life support system with complicated shutdown procedures that took him a while, causing his speed to be slightly slower. After all, the life support system is the most important equipment to maintain the survival of the people inside the dome. Shutting it down it will, will lead to heavy casualties. Except for the independent design of the second underground floor, all spaces above the second underground floor will become a restricted area for humans after the life support system is shut down. Anyone who doesn't wear special protective clothing will definitely die. And those who wear it may not survive the raging magma outside. So it cannot be shut down proactively without three administrators present at the same time. This resulted in Chen Ming having to use psychic energy to find relevant designs and then prioritize transforming the life support system. Completely shut down this system which consumes more than 80% of the power system inside the dome. The purpose is to concentrate all the power used by the power supply equipment in other facilities and apply it to the purgatory core. Although it was a little slow due to lack of experience. Fortunately, the result was no problem. Chin Ming stood up from the sofa. He walked to the wall and put his hand on the wall. A modified thick cable protruded from the wall and was connected to an adapter. Afterwards, Chin Ming connected the other end of the adapter to the purgatory core. Almost all the electricity under the entire dome was concentrated in the purgatory core at this moment. At the moment when the purgatory core was connected to enough power, the fourth volcano finally began to erupt. The magma inside the second volcano that had erupted before had flowed clean at this time. The intense heat at the bottom is about to completely melt the volcano's support. The volcano is about to collapse. The direction of the fall was just as Chen Ning thought. Right above his head. Chapter 212 Hui The vertical volcano slowly tilted like the sky and soon, it would topple over the dome. At this moment, the surging spiritual energy fluctuations in Chen Ming's own body were being absorbed by the purgatory core in his hand that had been charged to the extreme. All psychic energy fluctuations are restrained within the core by the isolation material of the purgatory core. Without any excess escaping, Chen Ming suddenly felt inspired when he saw the scene. But now was not the time to worry about it. He controlled the core of purgatory and instantly transferred most of the entropy inside the magma at the foot of the vertical volcano that had melted and started to tilt to the naked eye to the surroundings. Under the premise that all psychic energy fluctuations are transformed into the most practical effects. The effect and scope of entropic transfer have become so powerful that even the force of nature cannot resist it. The flowing magma solidified in the blink of an eye. And terrifying heat filled the surroundings of the volcano. But the volcano that was still flowing with magma and began to collapse has become a pure and solid pillar of cold rock. The pouring movement has stopped. Chen Ning's operation seems to be successful? Just when Chen Ning was a little surprised, he suddenly discovered that magma was pouring out from under the second volcano that he had controlled. You damn thing! Aren't you a loser? It was obvious that the magma supporting this volcano had already erupted before and was all piled up at the foot of the mountain. But now more magma has appeared. This is definitely not good news for Chen Ming. And just when the second volcano became active again, the magma activity of the third and fourth volcanoes suddenly became more active. Obviously, the magma inside the volcanic column has not drained out and accumulated at the bottom of the mountain. The bottoms of the two volcanoes have already begun to melt, and they may collapse at any time. Jin Ming was forced to control the core of purgatory and control the entropy of the three surrounding volcanoes. Otherwise, whenever a volcano collapses, there will be no difference between the dome and its disappearance. This not only requires a huge investment of mental power, but also requires Chen Ming to focus on transferring the entropy inside the bottom magma and find a suitable opening specifically for channeling the magma. Otherwise, this entropy will accumulate underground. And sooner or later there will be another volcanic eruption. But the more he communicates, the more difficult it becomes for Chen Ming to deal with all the problems. It was obvious that his mental energy was constantly being consumed, and he was becoming more and more tired. But the magma under the three volcanoes seems to be endless. And the entropy that needs to be dissipated seems to flow out from the core of the entire volcanic planet, which cannot be dealt with at all. Chin Ning even felt that what he was doing was in vain. The difficulty of a person's struggle with a planet is somewhat unbearable. But this shouldn't be impossible. The only psychics Chin Ning knew were Xiao Yang, who, like him, had just become a psychic. Others, whether they are bosses, presidents, or even Yin Xiong should have the ability to fight against an entire planet. Chen Ming's desperate efforts and spiritual energy during this period should not be unable to deal with these small volcanoes. He can't stop yet. However, 
whether to stop or not is not determined by Qin Ming's own thoughts, but by his mental strength. In just a few minutes, an amount of mental energy that once took days was consumed. Qin Ming not only felt that his mind was empty, but his consciousness was blurred unconsciously. He could hardly bear it anymore. Although he himself would most likely survive, the dome would definitely be gone. At this moment, near Chen Ning's body, the ship spirit, which had been staying at the highest point, suddenly felt something and poked out its almost substantial head from the hull. After sizing up Chen Ning, who was covering his head for a short while, it became blurred and penetrated directly into Chen Ning's body. The spiritual power of the ship spirit instantly filled the gap in the spiritual power consumed by Chen Ning. The somewhat chaotic brain suddenly became sober. Chen Ning nodded to the ship spirit and once again transferred the spiritual power given by the ship spirit to the prosthetic body. The mental power given by the ship spirit is temporary and will dissipate immediately if not used. He must seize the time to deal with the three volcanoes. The moment Chen Ning was ready to invest his mental power again, the raging magma that was flowing to the outside at the bottom of the three volcanoes suddenly stabilized and stopped flowing to the outside. This scene that came to an abrupt end made Chen Ming, who had just prepared, feel as if he had been unable to sneeze in the middle of a sneeze. And at the moment when the magma at the bottom of the volcano stopped, Chen Ming saw several destroyers landing outside the dome. Some soldiers of the 14th Legion, wearing extremely thick heat-insulated power armor walked down from above. They appeared to be a rescue team. Just after they came down, Chen Ming suddenly saw a bright light flashing for a moment on the mountainside of the three surrounding volcanoes and something exploded on the mountainside. After the flash of light, all three volcanoes collapsed on the spot. They were broken into pieces without any inclination and piled up on the ground. It seems that the people of the 14th Legion took the initiative to blast those volcanoes, solving the problem that they might hit the dome after they fell. Although this collapsing volcano also caused violent ground shaking, the current shaking no longer poses any threat to Chen Ming. And on the ground near the dome, Chen Ming saw someone wearing armor wading through the magma arranging special explosives, and actively blasting holes in the ground to drain the magma deep underground. In addition, some people climbed to the top of the dome, seemingly to check for damage to the dome. Others came to the laboratory wrapped in metallic liquid, just when they were looking at each other in confusion. The metallic liquid in front of them suddenly separated. Chen Ning came to the entrance of the laboratory wearing the locust-powered armor that Bai Quan had given him the blueprints for. He held a purgatory core that was directly exposed to high heat in his hand and appeared in front of the rescue team. The leader of the rescue team immediately said to Chen Ming, Mr. Chen Ming, please come with us to a safe place quickly. I don't think it's necessary. Mr. Chen Ming, the team leader wanted to dissuade him. So Chen Ming pointed directly around. The metallic liquid that originally enveloped the buildings and domes gradually revealed those safe and sound buildings. People who went to the top of the dome also reported back that there were no signs of damage to the dome. The team leader still had a troubled look on his face. Chin Ming said again, I really have nothing to do here. Let's go to other nearby domes. They should have been affected by the volcanic eruption just now. Go and help them. By the way, where is Bai Quan? He should want to see me now. Lieutenant General Bai is directing the rescue. I will notify him immediately. Thanks. No, no, you are too polite. The team leader quickly turned around and informed by Quan of the situation. Although Chen Ming was still a little gloomy because of what had just happened, he was generally quite happy. The test was successful. Infernal Core works wonders when used independently. When he holds the Purgatory Core, the psychic structure inside the Purgatory Core is almost equivalent to allowing him to master a psychic power that controls entropy and increases entropy. After counting the psionic powers of the Queen and his own psionic powers that can be used through the Hive Mind Network, the combination of three spiritual powers into one can no longer be described as outrageous. Chin Ming breathed a sigh of relief. His research on the core of purgatory has been completely completed up to this point. Next, after the geological activities are over, he can start manufacturing supporting equipment and create external devices that are originally suitable for the functions of the purgatory demon king, but have different effects from the purgatory demon king. Allowing others to use the infernal core through this device instead of just being the core of the Inferno Lord. It should be done soon. In addition to this ordinary external device, Chen Ming also needs to help the 14th Legion realize another function he is testing that is operated by psychic energy. Although the Purgatory Core itself has a backdoor for psychers to use, direct use of this backdoor places high demands on the psychers themselves. At least the user's ability to perceive the surrounding environment 
and the amount of mental power must not be less. Other psychers still need to have suitable supporting facilities when using the Infernal Core. It will definitely be much easier to use if you have supporting equipment. But Shin Ming does not know how to manufacture psychic-related equipment. So he only planned to explain the principles clearly, leaving the rest of the design of professional psychic devices to Bai Quan and the 14th Legion. Thesis. Then do it last. Anyway, once all the previous things are taken care of, the paper will just be about writing down the thoughts in your mind on paper. It's a pity that he may not be able to do these things yet. Because there is something wrong with what happened late tonight. Just a few minutes after the rescue team leader called Bai Quan. Bai Quan also arrived at Chen Ming's dome in a spaceship. When he got off the spacecraft, his face was extremely dark. He felt slightly better when he saw Chen Ming standing in the laboratory intact. Chen Ming looked at Bai Quan, who looked like he was about to eat someone and asked, Why don't you call me? Bai Quan breathed out, calmed down and said, I wanted to fight at first. But when you saw the situation outside and entered the laboratory, I knew you must have gone to the second underground floor. You will definitely not have time to leave when our rescue team comes out. Calling you is just a waste of time. Chin Ming thought about it for a while. Bai Quan could only tell him two things when he called him before. Reminding him to hide first and waiting for rescue to take him away. There is no need to remind him anymore. He can see the rescue team coming. It's really no problem if I don't call. Several thoughts quickly flashed through Chin Ming's mind. But Chin Ming did not dwell too much on the phone call. However, Bai Quan continued, And this situation is a bit embarrassing now, which makes me not want to call. Although this sentence was talking about the phone call, it also confirmed Chun Ming's previous conjecture. It seems that this geological activity is not a simple natural phenomenon. You can see it too. Yeah. The location of the three volcanoes at the back is so coincidental. It's a coincidence. Do you still remember that the psyker I once helped you investigate was the psyker who stopped Wu and when you and Yin Xiong were fighting? Chen Ming's tone became as low as Bai Quan's. I remember him. Hui. You previously investigated that his psychic ability is to control temperature. But now it seems that it is not simply controlling temperature. It's no wonder that his mental power can't even handle three volcanoes. If there is someone behind him who has been supporting the flow of magma at the bottom of the volcano, everything will make sense. How did he get here? Bai Quan raised the terminal, which displayed a person's identity history. A researcher from an institution that cooperates with us who voluntarily applied to come to the Galastar territory was replaced by him. Except for the fact that the photo is similar to him. All other information is false. I will ask people to increase management efforts in this area in the future so that it won't happen again. Hui recorded this look in his mind. And then said to Bai Quan, I have two questions. You say, why didn't Hui create a volcano directly under the dome? Bai Quan pointed to his feet and said, just below the dome, there is a passive detection equipment that can detect the direction of the magma directly below. If he creates a volcano directly below, he will be discovered very early. The time when magma accumulates underground is enough to evacuate the entire dome, separating at distance so that the equipment cannot accurately detect it, and not being discovered until the volcano emerges is the best way to attack the dome. Chen Ming knew that there was detection equipment when he controlled the dome, and now he asked Bai Quan just to confirm. Then why are there only four volcanoes? For a psyker like him, why can he only hold back Boss Wu Psyker to this extent? Bai Quan explained again. Because this is the 14th Army Corps, who he cannot use psychic powers too much. Otherwise he will be discovered soon. We also have psychers here. Combat type psychers. He won't be able to escape in a real fight. And if he causes large scale casualties to our legion, he will be hunted on a large scale by the entire empire. You also know what our 14th legion is doing now. Chen Ming paused and said, but since you are like this now, who he should have run away? Bai Quan's face darkened instantly, and he admitted. Yes, he also brought another psyker to assist him. When we found him, he ran away and disappeared into a black mist. Black mist? What psyker? You can't tell from the repel. It must be a psyker that has never been registered before. A civilian psyker. Of course, not all psychers are willing to be bound by the empire. Everyone's ideas are always diverse. Some psychers willing to be governed by the empire have long since volunteered to join the government or the military. There are also some who want to join a force and want to get the benefits that can only be obtained by joining a force, but do not want to join the government or the army. So they will find forces within various empires to join. For example, companies and research institutes welcome psychics to join. Of course, 
There are also psychers who simply don't want to get involved in government, military, or internal company matters. Then, they can choose to join a loose organization like the Psychic Association. There are people who don't want to join at all. In fact, the Empire doesn't force these people. They just need to register and let them go. No one will pay too much attention if they don't cause trouble. Unless a psyker like Chen Ming has special psychic effects and cannot give up no matter what. He will always attract the attention of the Empire. There are also psychers who don't want to be controlled at all. They have always been hidden in certain places in the Empire and are not exposed to anyone's sight. Therefore, it is not impossible for a psyker to suddenly pop up with a teleportation ability. After all, Hui is a veteran psychic. So it's not surprising that such a person appears in his network. So why did he suddenly come here now? Revenge? I haven't even bothered him yet. And he came to me? I remember that he was employed by the top management of the war zone before. I never faced him head on. He just killed Yin Xiong. He has a good relationship with Yin Xiong? Bai Quan thought about it and said, I have never heard of such a thing. I have been paying attention to Hui for a while because of you. After the last incident, some high-level officials in the war zone fell out. He shouldn't have taken the lead. And I originally heard that the higher-ups meant that Yin Xiong should be ignored. After all, the relationship between him and the people in the war zone is an employment relationship from the very beginning. What Hui did was just wander around the galaxy and stop Wuin. Even within your psychic association, you couldn't find the problem. After all, the person who did it was not a member of the Psychic Association. This is a conflict between psychics. It needs to be resolved by both parties. As long as it does not affect other ordinary people, the Empire will not take care of it. Chin Ming grabbed the key words in Bai Quan's words and said, Well, since you said it was true, yeah, I don't know who made him a wanted person later. You don't know who it is? Yes, I can't find it. There is only a hidden conflict between you and him. But someone made this matter visible. And originally there was no need to worry about this kind of wanted person. But Yin Xiong really disappeared after that incident. I didn't expect it would happen in this situation now. Xin Ming frowned and asked. Why do you think he chose to take action now? It doesn't matter if he offends me. He has already offended me. Did he think he had a long life when he took action on the chassis of your 14th Army Corps? Maybe he thinks that you will have no chance in the future after joining our 14th Legion? Does he want to kill you before you are strictly protected and mature? Chin Ming nodded and said, It's possible. Bai Quan suddenly received a message on his terminal. He glanced at it and said, I have already posted the situation. Soon there will be a special notice for wanted psychers in the military and government systems. Put his name on the website. Is there such a website? No wonder the wanted list is useless. Doesn't Hui know about this website? Bai Quan explained, Not many people know about this website. But logically, he should know that the wanted notices posted outside are completely useless to psychers. I don't understand what his situation is. It's unlikely that he really has anything to do with Zui Jing Che. Right. Chen Ming could only say casually. Who knows? No one knows what he thinks. But you have to pay more attention in recent times. If he has the ability to escape, he should have the ability to come back. It's okay. If he comes to me again next time, it won't be my problem. Bai Quan was stunned for a moment before he reacted and said, It's true. If he can touch you again, then I must bear full responsibility. If he dares to come next time, we will definitely be able to keep him. But we may not be able to completely stop him from touching you. You may still be in danger. I know. I will be on guard. Hui, a hostile psyker who knew that Yin Xiong died at his hands, was extremely wary of him, and was still able to fight with his boss made Chen Ming feel troublesome just thinking about it. Tell me about his situation if you have the chance. And I'll find a way to kill him. Okay, let me tell you when I have time. By the way, how is your research going? Bai Quan's abrupt turn made Chen Ming unable to hold back a laugh. It's okay. You should have seen the situation nearby. Give me a few days, and I can sort out the details and write them out. Just as Chen Ming and Bai Quan finished talking, Bai Quan continued to direct the rescue. At the other end of the empire, in another prosperous star field near the Sunset Star territory where the Empire and the main force of Afterglow are fighting. On a planet with a pleasant climate, Hui, who was lying on the deck chair in his backyard, suddenly received a call. He opened his eyes and glanced at it. It was the President's call. Hello? You want to kill Chen Ming? Hui was stunned and asked. What did you say? The President quickly explained to him the news he had received from Mai Quan. Hui responded with questions on his head. 
but I didn't do anything. I hid somewhere else after I told you last time. How about I videotape you now? Then let's do the video. Hui immediately got up and headed to the local government department. Ten minutes later, the president confirmed that Hui had indeed not gone to the 14th Army Corps. But the news from the 14th Army Corps has been confirmed. Due to your relationship with Chen Ming and Wuhan, I can't intervene directly. You can find a way to solve it yourself. I will give you the contact between the 14th Army Corps and Chen Ming. Wei, who he could only return to his home with a sense of anger that he had been impersonated. He knew from the previous incident that he had made a wrong decision. A psyker supported by the Empire and the Psionic Association was not someone he could offend. So he completely cut ties with Zhuijing, ran to the other side of the Empire alone, and found a place to live in seclusion far away from the Gallo Star territory. I was afraid that Chen Ning would find him out one day. He even wanted to sleep for 180 years and then crawl out when Chen Ming died of old age. However, he finally gave up on realizing this idea and found a place to just enjoy life. Anyway, after getting the money, no one would hold him accountable as a psyker because of an employment relationship. But now, this situation means that he does not have enough evidence to prove that he did nothing. After all, no one knew what he was doing in seclusion. He had to find a way to solve this problem. He doesn't take the blame for Chen Ming's assassination. At most, he just chatted with Wuin for a while. Who he thought about it for a while and dialed Wuin's number. Chapter 213 Accident. Two days later, the laboratory dome was thoroughly inspected and found to be intact. The underground of the dome has been tested and the magma has receded. The structure has not been damaged. And there is no problem with safety. It would be a big problem if something went wrong with something that Chen Ming's psychic power had repaired. After waiting for the people arranged by Bai Quan to rearrange a batch of new green plants, Chen Ming returned to the dome. The days before continued. Although he continued to pay attention to Hu Yi's affairs. But it is not easy for him to investigate now. And there is no suitable way to investigate. The investigation still has to be left to Bai Quan. He actually wanted to ask the boss. But after thinking about it, I decided to forget it. After all, the source of the problem lies with him. It is his existence that causes the conflicts and problems between the boss and Hui. If he can solve it himself, he shouldn't bother others too much. What's more, the boss's side is very well informed. It is impossible for Hui to assassinate him this time without any information from his boss's side. Since the boss didn't contact him, he probably planned to let him handle it personally. He has the ability to do it now. But it was impossible for Chen Ning to focus all his energy on Hui. As long as you are a thief for a thousand days, there is no reason to guard against thieves the day before. Who he was taken away by a psychic. How could he pursue him in such a big empire? We can only investigate slowly and see if there are any clues to follow. In the process of tracking clues, Chin Ming still has a lot to do. Not only did he have to create the supporting facilities for the core of purgatory, he also had to finish writing the thesis. The researchers and scholars from the 14th Legion headquarters had to be given actual demonstrations and cooperation to test the situation in which the mechanical race was controlled by a spiritual energy. In the original plan, Bai Quan should have summoned Chen Ming yesterday. But because of Hu Yi's incident, for the sake of safety, it was better to wait until the three-day geological active period was over. It was today that Bai Quan sent over a thousand researchers to Chen Ming. Among these researchers, those who wanted to stay were called to the domed office building alone by Chen Ming. Chen Ming planned to meet them all in person. This is not a review. The review has already been done on the resume. Chen Ning simply met everyone individually so that he could remember their faces. It only took a while to meet and chat for a few words. So more than 50 people quickly reached the last one. When the last researcher came in, Chen Ning suddenly said to him, I remember you. You are the one who wanted to bring the mechanical tribe here before. Lu Kong. Researcher Lu Kang's tone contained a hint of invisible excitement. Mr. Chen Ming, do you still remember me? Remember. Chen Ming happened to see this face on the list of people who applied to stay. So he chose him. Of course, there is also the reason for his youth. At such a young age, he can act as a representative and listen to him in meetings. People must not be able to speak in terms of technology. I just don't know if the people over there will scold him. There are other researchers who are willing to stay here. And there may be people scolding them where they originally stayed. But it doesn't matter. The matter of being scolded came to Bai Quan. And it was Bai Quan who brought it up in the first place. Chen Ming stood up from behind the desk, stepped forward and patted his shoulder and said, Okay, you are the last one. Go out. The others should be waiting impatiently. Good. 
when Chen Ming came outside. There are already more than a dozen restrained robots placed in the square under the dome. A large number of large-scale equipment have also been installed densely near these mechanical groups. And someone is doing final debugging near the equipment. These people, plus the people using the equipment, and the thousands of people watching outside, made the dome seem a bit crowded. Fortunately, there is a large broadcast screen near the square that displays images of the machine clan and various complex data, so that people on the periphery will not be able to see the specific situation. Of course, each researcher also directly uses his or her own terminal to connect to the devices in the center of the square, so that the most accurate data can be obtained immediately. The large broadcast screen is mainly for show. Bai Quan, who had just chatted with Chen Ming, was currently talking to people in the crowd. He nodded to Chen Ming when he noticed that Chen Ming was coming, and immediately brought an old man who was surrounded by many people to greet him, and introduced to Chen Ming. This is the director of the Mechanical Research Institute of our 14th Army Corps. Wu Hao has made great contributions to the research on the mechanical family. Wu Hao waved his hands repeatedly and said, Don't take it seriously. Don't take it seriously. All contributions are made by the people of the Institute. Jin Ning has read many papers related to the mechanical family. In recent decades, the name Wu Hao has appeared very frequently when he was studying mechanical technology on his own. He also referred to many papers in which he participated. So Chen Ning took the initiative to reach out his hand and said, Hello, Director Wu. Wu Hao immediately held Chen Ning's hand enthusiastically and said, Nowadays, the world is dominated by young people. One generation is better than the other, which is the wave of history. Everything we can't research will have to rely on you. It's too much praise. I only gained a little advantage by relying on my psychic powers. That's also your talent. But it can't be said to be overly praised. Chen Ming smiled, withdrew his hand and said, then we won't keep Director Wu and so many people waiting. Let's start early and finish early. After receiving signals from all equipment users that they were ready, Chin Ning went to the center of the field and approached the machines trapped by the electromagnetic restraint devices. As he got closer, he could easily observe the appearance of the surrounding equipment. It is that these devices look like old ones that have been used before, rather than newly prepared devices. Those researchers should have brought it over, not by Quan. The equipment Bai Quan gave Chin Ming a few days ago was 100% new equipment, and there was no mistaking this. The types of these devices are mainly monitoring devices that can record the details of everything that happens to those mechanical races. Although the equipment is a bit old, a lot of thought has indeed been put into it in terms of quantity and type, as well as the dense arrangement without interfering with each other. It can only be said that psychic network, hive mind, and individual consciousness these terms that seem to be incompatible with machinery have troubled these researchers, scientists, and scholars who study the mechanical race for countless years. Chin Ning now gives him this opportunity to find out what is going on with the mechanical clan. If they didn't prepare more equipment, they would be sorry for the hardship they have endured for so many years. In addition, there were many devices in this batch of equipment that Chin Ning had never seen before, and most of them exuded faint psychic energy fluctuations. They are all psionic devices. Although the mechanical race does not have psychic energy fluctuations, just like the things controlled by Chen Ming do not emit psychic energy fluctuations. After someone has tested that a complete blockade of psychic energy is useful for the mechanical race, all the preparations should be made. I just don't know what the specific functions of these psychic devices are. Chen Ming glanced at the equipment twice, and then returned his attention to the blazing silkworm machine closest to him. Although the researchers have also prepared samples of various mechanical races, ranging from small to large, but Chin Ning felt that it would be better to choose something that was somewhat iconic at the beginning. Machines like the Chizikin, which were relatively large and could easily leave a deep impression on the battlefield, were very good. After selecting the target, Chin Ming continued to move closer to the inside of the electromagnetic restraint device. All the metal objects on his body have been taken off in advance, so there is no need to worry about him being locked. However, his steps suddenly paused midway, and then he continued to approach as if nothing was wrong. No one noticed Chen Ming's little movements. At the moment when Chen Ming reached out and touched the blazing silkworm in front of him, the signal light of the electromagnetic restraint device above his head suddenly began to flash rapidly, and finally went out completely. The researcher who was controlling the equipment next to him had his brain shut down for a moment, and immediately shouted to Chen Ming in a broken voice, The electromagnetic restraint device has failed! Back away! As soon as he finished speaking, the nearby researchers abandoned the equipment 
they were using and ran away. His movements were so skillful that it didn't look like it was his first time encountering this situation. The burning silkworm in front of Chen Ming was already out of trouble. However, the moment the blazing silkworm escaped from trouble, a small explosion suddenly occurred on its body, and several weak arcs of electricity flashed on the surface of the blazing silkworm. This is an electromagnetic pulse bomb that was originally designed to affect the machine race and paralyze it. But it seems that due to the location, the arc of the electromagnetic pulse explosion set here is a little too weak. This power was not able to completely paralyze the silkworm, but instead paralyzed the surrounding equipment, especially the electromagnetic restraint device that bore the brunt. Fortunately, Chin Ming's hand was already on the electromagnetic restraint device. The visual sensors of the 11 mechanical tribes present, except for Chizikin, had just started to rotate, and they immediately locked onto Chin Ming, who was closest to them and definitely had the highest hatred value. Their movements froze, but the blazing silkworm that was the first to escape the trap had escaped the restrictions of the electromagnetic restraint device. It moved a little faster, and it sprayed surging flames at Chin Ming. Although the other researchers were standing far away from the beginning, the flames of the blazing silkworm did not cause harm to anyone else. But Chin Ming's figure had been completely submerged in the flames. Bai Quan's original smiling expression disappeared. Some bloodshot eyes appeared. And anger instantly filled his mind. But as the burning red light emitted from the silkworm, the flames also enveloped the silkworm. The surrounding vegetation was ignited by the flames. And the thick smoke completely covered the square. The surrounding protective soldiers immediately surrounded Bai Quan. I want to take Bai Quan to the second underground floor to take refuge first. But before they could make a move, the fire inside the dome dissipated in an instant. And the thick smoke from the surrounding vegetation was dissipated by the dome circulation system in a matter of seconds. Chen Ming, wearing a locust-powered armor, stood intact in the smoke that had just dissipated, in a position invisible to everyone. Under the armor on Chen Ming's chest, there was the purgatory core embedded. The reason why the firelight dissipated instantly, and Chi Kan, who struggled to break free of the restraints and resisted, was already lying on the spot like a good dog. All the surrounding electromagnetic restraint equipment has been controlled by Chen Ming. Repairs have been completed, and all the machines are firmly locked in place. Chen Ming had already analyzed the reason for the sudden failure of the electromagnetic restraint equipment in just a few seconds. Some parts in the equipment are aging. This was the source of the danger he sensed just now, when he got close to the mechanical tribe. Chin Ning had almost made an estimate in his mind when he stopped before. This was another incident that was specially planned by someone. Although this incident may appear to be an accident, it is normal for equipment that has been used for a long time to deteriorate. There is no substantial evidence that this is man-made. But combined with what just happened two days ago, and the fact that the equipment is aging, something will happen sooner rather than later. But it happened at this time. It's really hard not to suspect something. Chen Ming firmly believes that there are no such coincidences in the world. He knew that the incident was definitely not over. But the fact that the second incident happened so soon really surprised him. In fact, Chen Ming was still considering whether to take the initiative to trigger this danger. After all, he sensed the danger in advance. As long as he wanted to, he could directly eliminate the danger invisible. And after all, this is on Bai Chuan's territory. Bai Quan must be responsible for any accidents that happen. It would definitely be best for Bai Quan if the problem could be eliminated invisibly. But Chen Ning thought about it at the moment when his movements paused and found that things were not like this for him. Something must have happened in order to better investigate. If something didn't happen, then Lieutenant General Bai Quan would have no legitimate reason to investigate something that had never happened. So after thinking that these equipments were most likely brought by researchers who came over, Chen Ning took the initiative to take this risk. But with so many people watching now, Chen Ning couldn't really say that someone was going to cause trouble. He just wanted Bai Quan to help. Not to slap Bai Quan in the face. So after Chen Ning got the situation under control, he immediately connected to the broadcasting equipment and broadcast in the dome. Don't panic. The problem has been solved. There are aging parts in the electromagnetic restraint device, causing the restrainer voltage to be unstable and the output power to deviate. The repair has been completed and can continue. Chen Ming's voice covered the slightly chaotic dome. The researchers here are also smart people, and they settled down quickly. After confirming that there was no problem, everyone quickly returned to their posts to overhaul and debug the equipment as if they had rich experience. Although these researchers of the mechanical race seem to be used to this situation, the mechanical race is indeed prone to problems. But Chen Ning still didn't think his idea was wrong. 
taking advantage of the time to re-debug the equipment. Chen Ming came to Bai Quan, who was talking to someone on the phone. Bai Quan's expression at this moment was only cold. After Chen Ming came over, he hung up the phone and said to Chen Ming immediately, This is my problem. Bai Quan obviously had the same idea as Chen Ming. This incident was not an accident, but a deliberate arrangement. Chen Ming was not in a hurry to accept Bai Quan's initiative to take responsibility. After looking around to see if there were no more people nearby, he said, Not necessarily yet. Let me ask you a few questions. Are all these equipments brought from the headquarters? Right. Bai Quan quickly admitted this, just as Chen Ming guessed. Then you don't have many manpower in the field of mechanical research. Right. Not much. Although you know the situation here, there is a difference between selecting representatives to attend meetings and relocating the entire laboratory. Our originally small number of researchers are all very busy. Chen Ming asked again. Have you checked it? Going through the most stringent entry scan. Oh, that's the headquarters problem. Not yours. It's impossible to tell there's something wrong with these devices given the conditions on your side. Chen Ming smoothly helped Bai Quan get rid of the blame on his back. It doesn't look like who he did it. He had deliberately restrained himself before and would not affect other people. It is unlikely that such a dangerous machine would be released in such a place with nearly a thousand people. Who do you think did it? Who benefits from it? Who loses from it? Whoever has deeper interests behind all this is likely to do this. Do you have an idea? Probably a little. Okay, let's talk about it later. There are still things to do now. Chin Ning glanced at the place not far away where thousands of researchers gathered. They are all smart people. And they seem to be used to accidents happening while studying the mechanical race. Just now, the mechanical clan had no impact. And there was no stampede accident. The rebugging of the equipment is also progressing very quickly. And Chen Ning will soon be able to start controlling the mechanical clan for the second time. Bai Quan didn't say much when he saw this. He just echoed. Indeed. After waiting for a while, Chen Ming suddenly asked again. Where is Director Wu? He is fine. He was protected by other researchers immediately and was not frightened at all. He's the most powerful person here. Right. Right. Well, then the equipment I saw other than the equipment I originally ordered must have been brought over at his request. Please help me ask him who provided him with the equipment he brought and who dared to give him the aging equipment. When Bai Quan heard the word aging, he frowned and promised. I will ask. After Bai Quan agreed, the two waited quietly for another ten minutes. When the researchers on the other side started to disperse around one after another, Chen Ming said, it's almost done. Get it done as soon as possible. So many people are going to die after me. I'm a little panicked to be honest. I'm also panicking. Those who can come to participate are either important figures in the research of the machine race or have made contributions. If you lose one, you will lose. Speed up. When Chen Ming started to control the mechanical clan this time, there were no other unexpected incidents. Under the watchful eyes of many people and the monitoring of instruments and equipment, Chin Ming completed the control of the mechanical family. Some additional testing was completed in conjunction. All data is recorded and will later be shared throughout the empire. Bai Quan took away most of the people after the incident was over. The other more than 50 people who stayed and the think tank given by Bai Quan were arranged to move into the dome by Chin Ming and a secretary specially assigned by Bai Quan to help Chin Ming. Basic living facilities have been arranged two days ago. There is basically nothing that researchers cannot do to take care of themselves. Chin Ming just needs to hand over the task to them and... That's it. Chin Ming had already arranged their respective tasks when selecting people. Anyway, this dome has an experimental building and a laboratory. There are so many places. So there is no need to worry about not being able to accommodate people. These researchers came mainly to participate in Chin Ming's research on the machine race. So Chin Ming arranged for them to take over part of the design tasks of the Inferno engine. Revealed some data about Purgatory Core supporting equipment to the assistants. They are all researchers of the machine tribe. Since Bai Quan let them here without reminding him, it means that it doesn't matter if these researchers know about the core of purgatory. Of course, Chin Ming did not show the key research results to others. He could only complete the most important part of this thing. That night, Bai Quan, who had arranged the researchers, came to Chin Ming again, sitting with Chin Ming in a lounge specially designed for him on the second underground floor. After Bai Quan took a bite of the green souvenir on the table that Chin Ming said he'd brought, when he came here before and found it while exploring outside. He said to Chen Ming, I asked Director Wu, How did he say? The process, he said, was a little bit bizarre. 
Director Wu said that when he applied, he applied for a new set of equipment. There is no problem with that. I have seen his application form. Then when loading the goods, Director Wu said that he had personally gone to the site to inspect and accept it. And there was no problem. There was also video recording and sampling inspection of the process. A problem occurred when we disembarked from the ship and unloaded the cargo. At this time, all the equipment became old equipment. He didn't have much contact with me. He thought I was getting a kickback and didn't dare to tell me. He just reported it to the headquarters privately. Then he arranged for people to check all the old equipment on hand. If no problems were found, he used them. Xin Ming interrupted. It's impossible not to see problems with the aging of key parts. Someone among the more than a thousand people must have a problem. We need to check the person responsible for the maintenance of the electromagnetic restraint device. I checked it. It was checked by an apprentice led by Director Wu. Director Wu's apprentice? Yes. I heard that he is the youngest disciple of Director Wu. He cannot be alerted. So I will leave him alone for the time being. The problem at the headquarters is more serious. I don't believe that a batch of equipment can be switched without internal personnel as promoters. So? Bai Quan was silent for a while and said, I can only investigate first. But there is no way to guarantee the result. The more you come into contact with high-level things in politics, the more powerless you feel, in many cases, unless you can get evidence that can directly pull someone down. It will all be false. Shen Ming asked back. So you mean there are people in the top brass of the 14th Army who don't want to see this situation? Just a guess. Shen Ming shook his head and didn't delve into it further. Forget it. Let's not talk about it. At least I have good news. With these new people, the Purgatory Corps should be finished soon. Bai Quan's tense expression relaxed a little and said, I'm looking forward to it. After Bai Quan left, several people from the think tank also came to Chin Ming's lounge. Chin Ming had already thought about his rhetoric before. So when he met them, he said directly, Your idea is feasible, but I need more detailed content. Yen Ze, the representative of the think tank, immediately said, We currently don't know much about your psychic abilities. If you need more detailed information, you may need to conduct a psychic test or explain it in more detail. I know. That's why we took your photos here. We have a lot of time to chat slowly in the evening. Chapter 214 Results and Invitation The next day, the more than 50 assistants under Chen Ming's dome were assigned their due tasks. After all, Chen Ming had been the leader of the maintenance team before, so these people were still under control. With the assistance of more than 50 people, Chen Ming quickly organized all the research results and summarized all experimental records and files. Another day passed when Bai Quan came to Chen Ming for daily teaching. Chen Ming took out a set of half exoskeleton like equipment that could be worn on his body. In Bai Quan's confusion, Chen Ming explained, This is the result of my research during this period. Go back and find someone who has studied thermodynamics, machinery, and preferably some psychic energy, and let him test this thing. Remember to take good heat insulation measures. If the energy supply is sufficient, ordinary people should be able to achieve the same level of effects as the Infernal Demon King. It's up to you how to use it. Anyway, all the operating methods are written in the instruction manual. If you can't use it, come back to me, Jin Ming said and sent another document to Bai Quan's terminal. In addition to the necessary experimental records, papers, data, etc., there is also a video of Chen Ming specifically looking for the young researcher he left behind for testing after all the experiments were completed. I can only say that the effect is very good. Bai Quan glanced at it for a while, and then impatiently picked up the set of equipment that Chen Ming put on the table. The haze on his face because of the two previous incidents was wiped away. I saw before that you can even cool down an erupting volcano. I guess the demon king of purgatory can't do this. Right. At most... It can only slowly cool down the magma flowing on the ground. Chen Ming did not deny this and said, That's right. So I divided the paper into two parts. One for ordinary people and one for psychics. But this is not the device used by psychers. This device is specially used by ordinary people. Bai Quan glanced down at the slightly bloated device in his hand and asked, Do psychics need such a device? It doesn't need to be used. But not all psychers can directly use their mental power to support the transfer of entropy. And not everyone can directly control this thing with their hands like me. You still have to use the equipment that needs to be used. And it must be an external device exclusive to psychers. I don't have the technology. In terms of psychic equipment, I will at best write down the principles of implementation. How to implement it is your business. 
Anyway, you saw the effect two days ago. If you can't do it, there's nothing I can do. Bai Quan nodded, his eyes constantly scanning the device in his hand, and said, That's also very good. As long as the principles are mastered, the subsequent development will be much simpler. Seeing Bai Quan showing this attitude, Jin Ning took advantage of the situation and asked a question that he was very concerned about. How is the research and development of this kind of thing calculated in the 14th Army? At least it's a second-class merit in scientific research. Second class? We internally divide military achievements in scientific research into four levels. Special level, first level, second level, and third level. Generally, the ranking depends on the type of research and the final application scope of the technology. Then the specific types can be divided into three types, military, civilian, and scientific research each with different standards. Chin Ning suddenly interrupted at this time. Wait a minute. The military is also researching civilian technology? Of course. Research. Many military technologies are actually derived from civilian technologies. If you don't do research, you will break your own arm. You can't really expect that all technologies will emerge from the civilian world. Right. I'm fine. Okay. Then I'll continue. If military technology can be applied to the front line, and after glow wars, as soon as it is developed, and plays a major role, then it will definitely be assigned special merit. Those who can be applied to the front line immediately, or have a major effect will be considered first. The rest are second or third class depending on the situation. Bai Quan paused for a moment and continued. Then the technology in the civilian field. This is difficult to define. After all, the scope of this technology is too large. It mainly depends on the influence of the technology and the coverage after the technology is launched. If it is enough to directly improve the people's livelihood of the entire empire, then it is a special class. Actually, your previous hyperspace jump engine should also be considered a special class. Although the technical level of this technology is not the highest, since no one has done similar research, and the convenience of the effect and wide range of application, it is enough for a special class. That's it. Then why don't you give me a replacement? Ha ha. Bai Quan laughed dryly and turned away, pretending not to hear what Chen Ming said. In the field of scientific research, it is difficult to define this specific area, and I don't know clearly. Anyway, it depends on the contribution. There is also another grading method for scientific research and military merit, which is to look at the type of technology. The important technologies that can be used by capital ship-level spacecraft must be special level, such as antimatter technology. If this technology is the first to be developed in the military, then everyone involved has special level merit. Then it's your hyperspace jump technology. Currently, in-depth research shows that capital ship level spacecraft can also install this system. And it can also be a special class. Cruisers are generally first class. But they also have special class under special circumstances. Special circumstances. Forget it. This is also very complicated. And it's a bit too complicated. It's definitely not clear now. Bai Quan gestured to the equipment in his hand and said, Let's go back and take a look at your technology. It's difficult to judge the major impact. I can only say that it definitely has an impact. Whether it's important or not depends on the situation. The frontline currently doesn't need the Purgatory Core technology very much. Because the current frontline is mainly Afterglow. Not our side. And the Purgatory Core doesn't play a big role. But this technology is valuable in both civilian and scientific research fields. Bai Quan suddenly thought about it and said, I specifically asked someone about the purpose of the Purgatory Core before. They said that the Purgatory Core can maintain the stability of a colony's entropy based on the power output of the Purgatory Demon King on the battlefield. Ignore any environment. Offset the negative impact of extremely cold and extremely hot planets on the colonies. And reduce the pressure on the life support system. Chin Ming was a little confused about this and asked, Does this count? It feels like the Purgatory Core and the Life Support System are not on the same level. You are right to say that. But some planets with extreme environments will have valuable resources. If you want to develop these resources, you still have to build colonies. The cost of Life Support Systems for colonies on these dangerous planets is quite high. It is worthwhile to use a Purgatory Core captured on the battlefield that is not too scarce to offset the pressure of temperature on a planet with an extreme environment. Jin Ning thought about the possibility of Bai Quan's statement. As long as it's not the kind that's more than 200 degrees below zero, or the kind that's directly soaked in magma, that's over a thousand degrees Celsius. The Purgatory Core should be able to support a colony. 
in addition to the purgatory core. The cost is only the power consumption during use, which is definitely cheaper than the normal temperature life support system. The life support system still needs to be maintained and replaced. So Chen Ming also agreed and said, It does make sense. Well, there shouldn't be much to say in the field of scientific research. You have provided a complete basic framework of the purgatory core, and all the remaining research is conducted on your framework. This is already of sufficient value. So you use the most basic and conservative view of the research on the core of purgatory. Just look at its own value as second class. If you take into account the effects of other fields, it has a high probability of being first class and a small probability of being special. At this time, Xin Ming interjected again and said, including psychic-related technologies, they are only first class? But Quan held his forehead and said, I already said it's a high probability, but it's not certain. Furthermore, there is a new criterion for technical research on psychic powers, which I am not familiar with. My understanding of your technology is limited to the extent that you fixed the volcano a few days ago. The potential of your technology on ordinary people, other psychers, and subsequent development of the technology will all affect the final decision. This is not something I have the final say on. It has to be decided by the headquarters. Don't worry. Your military exploits will not be less with me at your side. But there is something I need to tell you in advance. The patent for this technology definitely belongs to you. But your technology must be developed together with our 14th Legion. Question mark. A question mark appeared on Chen Ming's head. And he asked, I have given you my technology and physical objects. What do you think I want to do? Of course Bai Quan also knew this. And said with a slight embarrassment on his face. It's just a routine question. Even if you don't want to know, I have to tell you. Fine. Then I know it now. But I still have a question. What are the rewards for different levels of military merit within the army? Bai Quan pulled up a document on the terminal. Looked at it. And said, The most intuitive reward for military merit is definitely the military rank. Generally, you can jump directly to two or three levels. And then, there will be actual material rewards. Military merit such as special merit and first class merit is itself a top honor within the military. Even military merit in the field of scientific research is the same. In addition, all private public facilities will have preferential treatment. And various subsidies provided by the government and the military can also be enjoyed. It will also be of great benefit to future generations, because many of these benefits can be inherited, as long as they serve in the military once or become researchers within the military. Chin Ming thought for a moment and said, I don't care about anything else. What is the material reward? The material rewards within the army will not be too much. At least not too much for you. It is enough for ordinary people to live a stable life and leave enough assets for future generations to survive for several generations. In fact, the big head the main thing is the special treatment that can be inherited. I feel a little uncomfortable. I need something more practical. Most of the benefits by Quan mentioned are indeed of great significance to ordinary people. But their value to him is somewhat low. Although it is true that he did not spend much time studying the core of purgatory. And he could easily get it done with his spiritual power. But it is not as difficult for others to do it. And the reward should not be less. Right? And I am now the temporary tactical instructor of the 14th Army Corps. Although I enjoy the treatment of a colonel, I am actually still a civilian. Is military merit really useful? Bai Quan immediately said. There must be some. If you join the 14th Army Corps, I can directly help you become a real colonel. But if you don't want to, I can also work it out and exchange your military merit for something you need. It requires your consent. And it's only for you. What I need. Chin Ming thought about it, and felt that it really didn't exist. During this period of time, Lao Wu was in contact with Chen Ning. A lot of new materials had been purchased at cost price through the route by Quan had given before, and the financial problems had been alleviated a lot. The pressure on the spacecraft is not very high now. Wait, it seems a little bit. Brilliant Side is already making the final touches before the partial transfer of the first temporary stronghold, and Huiyu Side has also found a suitable location for the temporary stronghold. In a few days, the second extreme jump will begin. Chen Ning's body will run away with the jump to prevent being discovered. Anyway, he now has a fake body with the 14th Legion. So he doesn't have to worry about mental problems caused by being away from the human world for too long. So with two temporary strongholds operating at the same time, it seems that the number of cruisers he has is a bit stretched after being allocated to the two positions. However, 
although it is certain that there is definitely a gap in cruisers. The specific type of cruiser needed is still a question. It all depends on whether it is a ranger type like the Huiyoji, a protection type like the refraction level, or a stardust level that Shen Ming is most comfortable with, or even a supreme point type that speeds up development. Condition. But the one that is even more stretched seems to be Alpha Core. In fact, Shen Ming thought about it and found another option, which was material rewards for psychers. Psychers in the army must be rewarded when they make contributions. But what do they get? Shen Ming asked this question smoothly. And by Quan replied, they can get various psychic materials to assist them in exercising their mental power. Materials for making psychic weapons. Or various equipment dedicated to psychics. Medicines. Etc. Basically everything you can think of for a psyker to use. Chen Ming chose the thing he was most interested in and asked. Medicines? Bai Quan nodded and said, The artificial spiritual nerve I gave you before is a kind of medicine. You can use your imagination. Or go directly to the hospital with me. There is a small hospital specially open for psychics. Over there it's all these things. Halfway through the words, Bai Quan suddenly realized something was wrong and changed his words. Well, why don't you let the doctor come to you? Chen Ming did not reply to Bai Quan's words but was thinking about the pros and cons. Seeing that Chen Ming hadn't spoken for a long time, Bai Quan suddenly made a suggestion. How about you save it first? The credit will not be lost. And the level of military merit has not been determined yet. You can use this time to learn about everything you are interested in and talk about it later. Bai Quan said it seemed like there was nothing wrong. So Chen Ming thought about it and said, That's okay. Bai Quan breathed a sigh of relief and said, Okay, I'll help you arrange these later. By the way, the batch of energy crystals you provided before has been almost consumed. And you need to provide a new batch for testing. Chen Ming immediately nodded and said, Okay, I have been producing outside during this period. How is the progress of your research here? It's very good. Most of the research institutes that have received energy crystals have produced results in energy storage equipment. It won't be long before they can actually start large-scale testing like antimatter engines. Various equipment made from your energy crystals will soon appear on the frontline spaceships. Can you guarantee the production over there? You probably didn't plan to relocate so close to the Empire. Right? Chen Ming did not deny it and said, I really didn't have this plan. But I found a temporary stronghold very close to the border of the Empire. Factories and breeding farms were built on it to breed crystal crabs and obtain crystal crab sh. Ls. That's no problem. Bai Quan said with some emotion, this is the first time I've seen this hermit crab that produces energy crystals. With the cooperation of this energy crystal and antimatter engine, it feels like all spaceships will be updated in the near future. The limitations of the energy system are weakening. It may be that armor-piercing poles equipped with large weapons on destroyers, like the one designed by Sindar Company will become mainstream in the future. Chen Ming said casually, We are going back to the era of cannons and battleships. Right. Bai Quan smiled and said, it's a very retro statement. But it seems to be similar. Caliber is justice. After Chen Ming and Bai Quan finished talking about the business, they chatted for a few words and then started the morning teaching normally. Bai Quan also left on time at noon. The afternoon instructor will come to take over in an hour or two. So Chen Ming was ready to go out for dinner after sorting out the morning study materials. After dozens of people arrived in the dome, Bai Quan quickly made logistics and security arrangements for Chen Ming although there is no difference whether there is security or not. Logistics is quite important. Chen Ming no longer needs to cook for himself. He can just go to the cafeteria and eat. Bai Quan also gave Chen Ming a card, saying it was for scientific research funds. There were 500 million in it, and payments would be made regularly every month, so that Chen Ming could spend it on research as much as possible, because the infrastructure of the dome has been laid out a few days ago. Basically, all the equipment Chen Ming wants has been delivered unless there is a task arranged for Chen Ming that requires certain equipment. The 14th Army Corps will give it to him directly. If he wanted new equipment, Chen Ming would have to spend his own money to buy it. The task of paying researchers' salaries also fell on Chen Ming. So Chen Ming looked at the original salaries of the researchers who were willing to come over, and none of them had a monthly salary of less than 50,000. Making a million a year is just an average. If Chen Ming's current assistants produce any results based on his research, then Chen Ning will have to give them some rewards within the institute. After all, Chen Ning is now the director of the Super Research Institute. And these researchers are also subordinate to the Super Research Institute. The results they produce will naturally promote the name of the Extraordinary Research Institute. 
Chun Ning will definitely not be able to escape what should be given to him. Of course it's okay if you don't give it. But the legs will grow on someone else's body. They are all capable people. And it is not difficult for them to run away. So you have to give whatever you have to give. It's not a big problem either. Bai Quan said that as long as there is military merit in research, regular monthly scientific research funding will also increase. If it really doesn't work, if the pot cannot be opened, Chen Ming can also go to Bai Quan to ask for compensation. Bai Quan will definitely give it. Chen Ming was thinking about everything. After sorting out the study materials, he stood up and walked towards the door of his independent lounge on the second basement floor. When he opened the door, he saw a person standing at the door of the lounge. Chen Ming suddenly couldn't remember his name. After all, he was just a person Chen Ming randomly chose who seemed pleasing to the eye. However, he still asked the man blocking his door in a friendly manner. What's the matter? The person blocking the door showed an apology on his face and said, Mr. Chen Ming, the Galastar Territory Government invites you to join their research institute. Chen Ming immediately frowned. And the face in front of him that seemed pleasing to the eye before suddenly became unpleasant. Are you from the government? Just being entrusted by others. You're here as a lobbyist. Right. When were you found? Yesterday. Okay. I received the message. You can leave. The researcher in front of Chin Ming bowed slightly to Chin Ming and turned away from Chin Ming. Before he could walk a few steps, the guards called by Chin Ming grabbed him not far away and took him out of the laboratory. Third time, Chin Ming looked at the disappearing figure of the guard inside. Sure enough, things could not go that smoothly. Chin Ning had thought before that someone would interfere with him. But he didn't expect this series of things to be really annoying. Never mind. As long as his fundamental interests are not touched, Chin Ning will selectively ignore these people. Now that he is here, he is ready to face all kinds of resistance. Although this resistance was really undeserved. After all, he really had no intention of joining the 14th Legion. But his behavior showed this to a certain extent. So there is nothing we can do. But it doesn't matter. If you want to join the war, the 14th Legion is the easiest and fastest way. If you choose shortcuts, you should bear some risks. After the researcher was escorted away, Chin Ming quickly received the afternoon instructor. The afternoon teaching will continue as usual. And at night, Bai Quan came to Chin Ming in person as before. Meet Chin Ming in the lounge decorated by Chin Ming on the second underground floor. In front of Chin Ming, Bai Quan couldn't be bothered to maintain his cold look of keeping strangers away with clear displeasure written all over his face. There is a problem with the equipment sent by the headquarters. And there is a problem with the people brought by the headquarters. What else is not wrong with the headquarters? At least the mechanical clan that was sent is fine. The fresh ones can also breathe fire. Chin Ming's sudden cold joke failed to make Bai Quan laugh. But instead became even more silent. Chin Ming didn't know what to say. After holding it for a long time, he asked, is that person from the research institute affiliated to the 14th army? Are there spies at the 14th army's headquarters? It's always possible. There's nothing we can do about it. After Bai Quan finished speaking, he fell into a long silence. And his whole person looked faintly decadent. It was completely different from the very energetic Bai Quan that Chen Ming saw some time ago. Chapter 215 Invitation Chen Ming could roughly guess the reason why Bai Quan turned into this decadent look. So Chen Ming took the initiative to pick up the topic again and said, What should we do with this person who helps the government in the future? We can only investigate first. Still an investigation? Have the results of the last investigation come out? Out. Bai Quan nodded slightly and said, Someone at the headquarters took kickbacks and provided a batch of inferior goods to replace the original batch of new goods. All the people involved and the suppliers have dealt with it. What about Director Wu's young apprentice? What is Director Wu's attitude? This situation is a little more complicated. Director Wu's young apprentice has been studying with Director Wu at the headquarters. There seems to be no problem. But his research resources are not as good as those of his senior brothers and sisters who have already graduated. Including samples of the machine race. Various rare parts such as the Purgatory Core. And money. They are all incomparable. He has always complained in his heart. Director Wu specially brought the young apprentice here this time instead of other apprentices just to show that he is not partial. As a result, the young apprentice accepted a bribe from the supplier and actively asked to check the electromagnetic restraint device during the inspection. He just took a look at it and ignored it. There was no inspection at all. Then this time, there is another person who is responsible for the electromagnetic pulse bomb installed on the machine race. It's the same. These two individuals, 
combined, contributed to the situation that preceded it. I see. Chin Ming understood the reason, and then asked the question he wanted to ask. So why doesn't Director Wu give the young apprentice the same resources? Because the young apprentice's skills are not up to par in Director Wu's eyes. It's difficult. To put it simply, a rookie who has not yet graduated feels that he should have a share of the resources of the senior brothers and sisters who have already graduated. If he can't get it, he will be sick. Right. It sounds a little bit ugly, but it's almost the same. Chin Ming shook his head and said, Where's the back? Director Wu is very sensible. After the suppliers and all the culprits in the headquarters were taken down, he directly severed ties with his young apprentice. He was quite decisive. It's better than letting him continue to ruin your reputation. Where is the young apprentice? Going to jail. After Bai Quan finished speaking, he stopped talking, as if the matter was over. But Chin Ming wanted to hear more than that. He then asked, Is this the end of the matter? It's over. This is the only way it's over. All the criminals have been picked out by the evidence I have. There are too many. And I can't do anything. Shen Ming continued to ask. People higher up are not affected at all? Don't you have any suspicion in your heart? If this happened normally, it could indeed be regarded as a pure accident. But in my case, it definitely couldn't be an accident. Why does he dare to take kickbacks in the presence of you? Me and Director Wu? Electromagnetic restraint devices and electromagnetic pulse bombs. The two most important personal safety devices when conducting research on the machine race. We're deliberately not inspected. The supplier thinks that the nine races have too many people. Right. Bai Quan said with helplessness written all over his face. We were not interested in such things when we were still on Earth. Of course I know. As long as you understand what I mean. If it really doesn't work, let me ask you a question. Your 14th Legion must not be of the same mind. Right. Bai Quan replied without hesitation. Every force cannot be of the same mind after it has passed its development period. So someone doesn't want me to come to the 14th Legion? There are also many people within the 14th Legion who don't like me. The answer is not what the question was asked. But the idea is there. There are indeed people in the 14th Army who can't stand by Quan. And Chen Ming, who is suspected of having joined the 14th Army via Bai Chuan's route, is naturally on the list of people who can't stand it. But I was thinking... Didn't the 14th Legion ask me to join them before? Bai Quan said. It was in the past. At that time, you were still a pure free man. After joining the 14th Legion, several factions within the Legion may compete for you. But now, of course, everyone welcomes you to join us. Chen Ming guessed casually. Privately, everyone wants me to get away as far away as possible. Right. That's not the case. The most they want is to keep you away from the 14th Legion for a while and then find you back after they get me away. Anyway, when the time comes, they can blame each other internally. Whether it is against you or me, the effect will be the same. In the end, I will be the one who takes responsibility. Chin Ning felt a little headache when he heard that, and asked, The person who did the work must be protected. Otherwise, who will do the work for him in the future? You always know who the protector is. Right. Bai Quan still looked helpless and said, I know but there is no way that other people will admit it if you know about it. Unless there is an extremely complete chain of evidence. Everything is empty talk. Even if someone knows the truth about this matter, no one will believe the empty talk without evidence. There is really no way. No way. Are you so disgusted? Doesn't that person have any relatives or descendants? Or does he have a junior apprentice like Director Wu? No harm to the family. TSK. You, Lieutenant General, are a bit frustrated. No one can help you. When Bai Quan heard Chen Ming's question, his face relaxed slightly and he said, Yes, I can come here to build a branch. I could also drive three battleships to rescue you before. Although the process was a little deviated due to things in the war zone, I still have two battleships in my hands. This is the biggest help. But these things can't help you now. Bai Quan suddenly sighed, took off his coat with the emblem of the 14th Legion, and lay back on the lounge chair. I need time. My old boss is retiring soon, and his children are no longer active in the military and political circles. So it's impossible for me to take the initiative to attack other people's families. That would be really embarrassing, and doing so would not gain the support of anyone, including those who are still supporting me. Chen Ming heard from his boss that Bai Quan was an orphan like him and grew up in the army. In the past few months, Bai Quan would occasionally mention this matter during his free time with Chen Ming. 
Chen Ning knew that the old boss Bai Quan mentioned was no different from his father. And Bai Quan, his father's other children, would definitely not harm them. Then why don't you quickly find a way to take over the resources from your old boss and come here? Bai Quan slowly explained. I was promoted too fast along the way. And my qualifications are not old enough. There are many things that I can't touch directly. My old boss was only a lieutenant general. But he could do many things that a general can do. And now I may not even be able to do many things that a lieutenant general of the same level can do. Bai Quan suddenly pointed at his feet and said, I came here because there are opportunities here. Opportunities to obtain military merit. As long as the military merit is sufficient. The qualifications are nothing. Also, the 14th Legion branch in the Gallo Star territory is a fallback route for me and my old boss. A way out? Chen Ning suddenly sneered and said, To tell you a joke, a 34-year-old lieutenant general in the empire, the youngest in the past century, needs to avoid the front line of the empire and find a way out. The corner of Bai Quan's mouth twitched stiffly and he said, I can fail, but I can't let the person who taught me and gave me life not even leave a way out. Chen Ming was silent for a while and said, Politics is really troublesome, Bai Quan said in agreement. I think so too. The battlefield is better. I estimate that the results of this investigation will be the same. There will be no results other than a batch of fines for the people below. You're within the rules now. You can't do much. That's the restriction you have to come here. Um, Chen Ming hummed meaningfully. In fact, he was still outside the rules. But his current situation gave people this illusion. For Chen Ming, as long as no one touches his bottom line, he will continue to pretend that he is still within the rules. But if someone exceeds his bottom line, he will also use some methods outside the rules. For example, in the previous two times, Hu Yi's matter had already exceeded. So he would find a way to solve Hu Yi's problem. It's just that he currently lacks the means to track and investigate psychers. So he needs time and Bai Chuan's help. And the thing about the mechanical clan that followed was barely on the edge of his bottom line. But he could handle it or not. Anyway, if something like this happens, the people who will lose will basically be the people within the 14th Army Corps. And the most anxious one should be the 14th Army Corps. They were not in a hurry. Internal matters had been handled according to the rules. And Chin Ming did not need to worry about them. But this time, the third time, Chin Ming actually didn't care. It's just an invitation after all. The one who was really slapped in the face was Bai Quan. But Bai Quan's relationship with Chin Ming is not just about mutual help and mutual benefit. After several months of one-on-one -on -one teaching, Chin Ming and Bai Quan still have a very good relationship in private. Thinking about the problem from a friend's perspective, Chin Ming's own anger grew unconsciously. Although everything seemed to be directed at him. Not Bai Quan. But Bai Quan is the boss of the branch here. Of course, he has to take responsibility for what happens here. And of course, he will feel aggrieved. It's just Bai Quan's current attitude that makes it impossible for Chin Ming to directly cross the line and help him. He could only mention his thoughts as much as he could. But there was nothing he could do to help. He is just a newly developed psychic. And he will not participate in such political matters, and does not want to participate. It's better to let Bai Quan have a headache. Unless someone really made him anxious and crossed his bottom line. Then, he would have reason to avoid Bai Quan and cause trouble. Bai Quan didn't worry about this kind of thing for too long. It's useless to dwell on something you can't do. It's better to be prepared and wait until someone reaches out to cut off his hand next time. And then go back to find a person who has a broken hand. This is the easiest and fastest way. Bai Quan put on his coat again and said, Let's not talk about the bad things. There is a small scale combat meeting tomorrow. Do you want to go? Tomorrow? Well, I check your learning progress with the instructor in the afternoon every day. As of today, I think you can almost understand the things in the meeting. When the time comes, just use holographic projection to go there. You have the equipment here. Okay. Chin Ning has been looking forward to this before. And now that Bai Quan takes the initiative to say so, he can't miss it. Seeing that Bai Quan looked ready to leave at any moment after he finished speaking, Chin Ming quickly asked, How is the progress of the investigation into Hu Yi's case? Bai Quan's movement to leave immediately stopped and said, I almost forgot to tell you. We don't have any clues about his words yet. I specifically searched for psychers to check him, but I couldn't find any trace at all. This person's existence was blocked by psionic energy, and the specific location cannot be confirmed. Our ordinary investigators have investigated Hu Yi's social circle and the places where he has lived in the past. There are no clues in all of them. It's like he disappeared from the world. 
Chen Ming nodded and did not insist that he must find something. Then just wait. Since he failed to kill me once, there will always be a second time. In a blink of an eye, it was noon the next day. After the morning's teaching, Bai Quan helped Chen Ming debug the equipment and left the dome. After going hungry for about half an hour, Chen Ming got the signal from Bai Quan and started the holographic projection device. His projection then appeared in a conference room. Bai Quan himself is at the main seat in the conference room. There were a total of 20 people in the conference room, most of whom were holographic projections. None of these people had a military rank lower than that of a colonel. It seems that because the upcoming war between the Empire and the Machine Tribe is still in its earliest stages, the high-level officials who can participate in the meeting are still all over the Empire. This should mean that the Empire will not make any big moves for the time being. Otherwise everyone in the army who can participate in the meeting will definitely have to gather here. At the same time, this should also mean that Chen Ming's idea is still a long way from being realized. There are too few opportunities in small-scale conflicts. Chen Ming's thoughts only appear in his own heart and are not known to anyone. However, his projection appeared in the conference room and was visible to everyone in the conference room. Bai Quan also extended his hand to gesture to Chen Ming and said, Before the meeting, let me say one thing. Chen Ming will play an irreplaceable role in the war of the mechanical tribe in the future. So he will join us in the following meetings. Don't do anything unpleasant. No one spoke in the conference room. And no one would speak. Bai Quan didn't say much when he saw this and started the meeting normally. Soon, a projection of a three-dimensional star map appeared in the center of the conference table. Chin Ming could tell at a glance that this was the Gala Star Field and the other two nearby star fields bordering the Machine Tribe and Afterglow. The Empire's area is marked with green, which symbolizes friendship. The Afterglow area is marked with azure blue, and the Machine Clan's area is marked with gray and white. The azure part was not the main content of the meeting, so the projection was mainly focused on the gray and white areas of the mechanical family. A large portion of the edges of these off-white areas are tinted green. Chen Ming can directly retrieve the data in these areas through the terminal on his seat. If he had come here before, Chen Ning might not be able to understand it. However, after a few days of intense tutoring, I was able to translate all the data on the terminal at first glance and understand what each string of data represents. In addition to natural data such as galaxy data, planet data, root coordinates, etc., the terminal also displays more detailed data such as the number of mechanical tribe colonies, the approximate number of mechanical tribe garrisons, the proportion of garrison ships, the distance to the nearest colony, and so on. It seems that these are the results of the Empire's investigation of the machine race in the early days of the war. Those gray-white areas with some green are all areas where the Empire has an understanding of the mechanical race. Chen Ming quickly scanned the area and could see that most of the mechanical fleet was in the galaxy bordering the Empire. The other side of the Empire was almost undefended and empty of troops. Of course, it might also be the phase beast that caused this situation. But no matter what the reason is, Chen Ning feels that the Empire will be ready to take action in this direction next. While Chen Ning was thinking, Bai Quan had already begun to speak. Last month, a total of six destroyers and 72 escorts of our ships were destroyed. The loss of life reached 532, including missing and dead. The mechanical tribe is strengthening the defense of the border. They are somewhat aware of our actions. But there is no way to confirm it yet. However, we can confirm that the machine clan has sent a reconnaissance force to our border. And the number is yet to be investigated. We responded and acted as if we had just discovered that the mechanical tribe had strengthened border management. A lieutenant general with holographic projection answered Bai Qian's words as soon as he finished speaking. Suspend the investigation of the border area of the machine clan. We have already determined the galaxy data from the initial exploration survey. There is no need to continue. We should increase the investigation of the machine clan's rear area. We invested all our efforts in the investigation and went deep into the hinterland of the machine clan from behind. Bai Quan immediately operated on the terminal and said, At present, we have a reconnaissance fleet passing through the afterglow star field from multiple directions and will soon arrive behind the actual control area of the machinery clan. As Bai Quan spoke, there were more than a dozen green lines on the star map projection in front of him. Starting from the location of the 14th Army Corps and some surrounding military outposts. In the three-dimensional space, it circled close to the edge of the mechanical race. And the target was near the galaxy where the phase beast had been discovered. The fleet performing the detection mission cannot use high-power communication devices. It will take some time for the signal to return. It is expected that the news will be available in three days. 
starting from this sentence, Shen Ning became a little incomprehensible in the following content. The various professional terms within the military seem to be talking about the fleet numbers and the requirements for the specific reconnaissance missions they perform, as well as what should be done in case of emergencies, etc. Chen Ming could only hear a general outline, but could not understand the details at all. It seems like he still has a lot to learn. Unable to understand what was being said, Chen Ming returned his attention to the terminal in front of him. After Bai Quan finished talking about the situation outside, he then changed the topic to the inside of the empire. He talked about the logistics resource scheduling of the army, which Chen Ming had not been exposed to at all in the past few days. When Chen Ming had a headache from guessing, the meeting finally ended. Chen Ming breathed a sigh of relief and was in no hurry to leave. Bai Quan seemed to have something else to say to him. When only Chen Ning's projection and Bai Quan were left in the conference room, Bai Quan forced a smile on Chen Ning and said, Don't you understand? This was just a simple small-scale summary meeting to discuss the next policy. But the planned policy has not changed. So it ended quickly. If a large-scale war breaks out in the future, there is no need to stop our meeting. There will be more professional terms waiting for you to understand. Chen Ming's expression was slightly numb. Command technology was a completely new field for him, and it was much more difficult to learn than spacecraft technology. But as long as he wants to progress, this kind of thing will definitely not be avoided. Seeing Chen Ming's expression, Bai Quan changed the subject and said, By the way, are you interested in participating in the investigation mission? Chen Ming quickly adjusted his attitude and asked, How to participate? I will give you a destroyer at the beginning of each mission. You don't need your destroyer to fight. You just need to follow the reconnaissance fleet to help transmit information every day. You just heard what I said. There are no super light communication base stations outside the Empire. Signal transmission can only rely on the communication device of the spacecraft itself. Instantaneous communication transmission can easily expose itself. We need a method that can communicate quickly. So just let me do it. To be honest, this matter is not difficult or troublesome. As long as Chen Ning packs up the database on the spacecraft and brings it back every day, it is very simple. And every mission has a ship to expel, which is also a good reward. Although Chen Ming is not short of a ship to expel now, he can still earn a little bit. He never wants too much money. Can it be discounted? Can. Then I have no problem. Thanks. I will tell you about the next mission. Bai Quan nodded and said, Yes. And I am applying for the next relic of another civilization. It will be sent to you in a few days. I still need your help in researching it as before. Do you have a name? Yes. Synchrotron Core. Half an hour after the meeting ended, Chen Ming disconnected the holographic projection and returned his attention to the dome. He now has some free time. At least, he can do something of his own in the evenings during the few days before the next relic is delivered. However, Chen Ming didn't have time to think about what he could do. The phone call came right away. Chen Ming picked up the terminal and took a look. It belonged to Cheng Xinghai. After the call was connected, Cheng Xinghai greeted Chen Ming as before. Hey, is Chen Ming here? I answered your call and you asked me if I was there? Hey, just kidding. I have a battle here. Do you want to come? Is there a battle? Yes. There is a large-scale battle involving multiple people. Do you want to come? Chen Ming thought for a moment and said, I have no experience in this area. It doesn't matter. There are several people on both sides of the large-scale battle. Everyone is responsible for their own tasks. Not everyone specializes in battlefield command. There are people who specialize in large-scale battlefield dispatching and logistics. When working with them, you don't need to worry about anything else. You only need to be responsible for fighting. Chen Ming asked again. It's just a team battle? But doesn't it matter if I don't know anyone? Don't worry. I found teammates for you. All you have to do is come. The referee is still Uncle Bai. I told him in advance. Also, this kind of long-term, large-scale battle requires a deep penetration of consciousness, which is convenient for speeding up thinking and not wasting too much time in reality. I heard that you seem to have been to the branch recently. You should be able to lie down directly in the equipment. Right. Chung Shinghai seemed to have arranged everything in the days before she disappeared and was just waiting for him to finally pass. But Chen Ning still had to confirm. How long will it take? It may take more than 10 hours. And everyone can pause for 15 minutes in the middle. When does it begin? Anything from tonight until the next week. Chen Ming looked at the schedule and said, Well, I can go. Chapter 216 Background Story 
Bai Quan received a call from Cheng Xinghai not long after. Uncle Bai, Chen Ning has agreed to participate. Bai Quan, who was arranging for people to strengthen surveillance near Chen Ning's dome, immediately thought to himself, It's finally here. He recalled the research report on the Purgatory Corps that Chen Ming provided him, calmed down the emotions of the recent bad things, and responded to Cheng Xinghai. I understand. When will it be? Chen Ming said it was tonight. How are the others preparing? They are all fine. They all seem to be looking forward to fighting Chen Ming. Chen Ming had never interacted with other people in the 14th Army Corps. The reason why these people wanted to fight with Chen Ming was immediately realized by Bai Quan, saying, don't make anyone have any thoughts that they shouldn't have. Dad, bye. Ah, oh, no. Uncle, bye. Don't worry. I keep the proper distance from everyone. And the teammates I selected for Chen Ming are all guys who only think about fighting and killing. They will not be disturbed by things off the court. Oh, there is also Chung Xingha. No, he seems to only have fighting and killing in his mind. Anyway, don't worry about the selection. I have been carefully selecting people these days. The strength of the two teams is definitely about the same. So there will be no problem. Bai Quan didn't have any reaction at all because Cheng Xinghai called him by daddy. Cheng Xinghai's character usually talks all the time when there is nothing important to do. Not just once or twice. Moreover, he was just wondering where Cheng Xinghai had been in the past two days. And he never came to see him. In the past few days, when I was teaching, I accidentally mentioned Cheng Xinghai to Chen Ming. But Chen Ming didn't know about it and said he had no contact. It seems that he went back to school in the past two days to find those who have permission to use analog equipment. These candidates are basically her peers. The top students in school. And they were finally gathered together today. Then Bai Quan will not go to the secondary review staff. Cheng Xinghai can still make people feel at ease when it comes to serious matters. I understand. You can just send me a copy of the personnel list when the time comes. I will personally review the video this time and send it to their school. Whether they will get rewards from the school or be scolded by the instructor depends on their performance. Ah? Uh? Cheng Xinghai made an unexpected sound. I don't understand why I regard this private battle organized by you as a regular competition? Cheng Xinghai reacted immediately and asked. Because of Chen Ming? Bai Quan did not answer directly, but said, I won't tell you. You will know it soon anyway. I will still make the rules for tonight's battle. I will confirm with Chen Ning some rules that only he can know. Cheng Xinghai didn't have any problem with Bai Quan not answering her question, and instead asked, Is it related to his psychic ability again? Yes. The simulation equipment cannot directly simulate some psychic effects. It can only be accomplished with this special setting. I need both of you to fully unleash the upper limit of your overall strength. Cheng Xinghai suddenly thought of the last simulated battle and asked, You said before that Chen Ning's spiritual power was partially restricted by you. I will also limit him this time. At least... I won't let him do anything beyond his own psychic limit. In fact, Bai Quan still had half a sentence left, but the restrictions were somewhat difficult to explain. He was convinced that Chen Ming's spiritual power definitely had some effects that he was completely unaware of. And what he wants to impose on Chen Ning is this restriction. To put it simply, it is no different than having no restrictions. After all, Chen Ming's unexpressed spiritual power could never be used here. And judging from Chen Ming's current psychic abilities, he could definitely overwhelm Cheng Xinghai's side on a large-scale battlefield with dedicated support. Cheng Xinghai was quite happy with Bai Quan's answer. After seeing the disgusting extent of Chen Ming's psychic abilities, she no longer had the confidence to defeat Chen Ming in a one-on-one -on -one situation with equal forces on the frontal battlefield. Just an unlimited jump engine can make Chen Ming invincible in a pure battle, which is disgusting to the point of being outrageous. Only if there is a headquarters base on a large-scale battlefield that can limit the use of Chen Ming's spiritual power can Cheng Xinghai see the possibility of victory. In addition, Chen Ming's spiritual power was restricted by Bai Quan. Cheng Xinghai felt that the next large-scale simulated battle would be the closest she came to defeating Chen Ming. Seeing that Cheng Xinghai was in a good mood and was not aware of his sinister intentions at all, Bai Quan said directly, Go and get people ready. Don't let others go. Don't worry. No one will miss a simulation of this scale. By the way, do you want to tell them that the video will be reviewed and sent to their school? Bai Quan immediately said. Tell them. Put some pressure on them. And don't let your teammates think that this simulation is a very casual thing. Cheng Xinghai suddenly noticed Bai Quan's thoughts. Raised the corners of his mouth a little. And said in a long voice. Okay. That night, Chen Ming directly arranged for all researchers at the institute to have a holiday the next day. 
after all? The Extraordinary Research Institute is currently a research institute that Chinning wants to help the 14th Legion complete the heritage of another civilization acquired by the Machine Tribe. It occasionally conducts part-time research on the Machine Tribe. Most of the researchers who came here also knew about this situation. Those who didn't knew it already understood it when Chinning gave them part of the research report on the Purgatory Corps and asked them to help improve it. Well, it is always normal for such an institute to have a holiday after completing a research assignment. Although Chen Ning was mainly responsible for the project, others only participated in some purely auxiliary work in the final stage. And it has only been a few days since these researchers officially started working. But there are definitely all the rules that should be in place. Moreover, after Chen Ning completed the research on the core of Purgatory and handed the complete report to Bai Quan, other researchers at the Transcendent Research Institute also received the complete Purgatory core research report sent to them by Chen Ning and they all knew that the Purgatory Core project was completed. Now that the work is familiar and the project has been completed, there will always be time to rest. For researchers, if they are interested during the holidays, they will naturally read Chen Ming's complete paper. After all, many people are interested in Chen Ming, the psyker who knows the most about the mechanical race. Come! Assuming that there are people who are not interested, they would not have any objection to Chen Ming's paid leave. Anyway, there are no restrictions on the movement of other researchers in the entire Chaofan Research Institute except Chen Ning. It does not mean that the 14th Legion Station does not have free time and some domes used for leisure and entertainment of the personnel here, especially for non-military researchers. It only takes a few minutes to contact someone on the terminal to pick you up. However, it seems that everyone at the Institute is very interested in Chen Ming's complete research report, and no one wants to leave. This made Chen Ming very worry-free and able to participate in Cheng Xinghai's battle safely. After dinner time, Bai Quan appeared near Chen Ming's dome on a destroyer that was suspected to be used for the next reconnaissance mission, picked up Chen Ming, and headed to where the simulation equipment was. Chen Ming knew that the simulation equipment was installed in a separate dome before, and even knew the general situation here. Although it was his first time here, he felt very familiar when walking in the building where the simulation equipment was located. Soon he came to the simulation equipment that occupied an area almost equal to the size of his laboratory on the other side of the dome. When he arrived in front of the equipment, Bai Quan suddenly stopped, brought up a menu on the operation screen of the simulation equipment, and said to Chen Ming, Because what is going to be a new simulation battle next? I still have the rules. I have to confirm with you again. While Bai Quan was operating on the menu, he continued to say to Chen Ming, The basic rules are still the same as last time, but I have lifted most of the restrictions for you. You can set them according to the extent of your psychic ability. But I still have a few things to confirm with you. Because this simulation may involve capital ships. So I have to ask you in advance. Can you tell me? Can you control the battleship? Bai Chuan's inquiry is naturally reasonable. After all, if you want to set the rules of the simulation equipment in line with Chen Ming's psychic abilities, his information will definitely be exposed to a certain extent. But for Chen Ming, as long as the Zerg are not exposed, other psychic powers can be used at will. His ability to control spaceships and various industrial facilities has long been exposed. There was no way to hide these if he wanted to build a colony of his own. The ability to control the machine race must have been speculated the moment the situation of being able to control Afterglow was revealed. So if you are exposed, you are exposed. The exposed information might be able to provide the think tank with more information about his psychic abilities so that some things that Chen Ming couldn't explain clearly would be difficult for the think tank to understand. From the fact that the think tank has directly found the most correct way to use the machine race, it can be seen that their role will definitely not be small. If this information is leaked, the positive impact will most likely be more than the negative impact. So after thinking about it, Chen Ming gave an affirmative answer. Yes! But then Chen Ming said, But I have never actually controlled a battleship until now. Before I actually control a battleship, I can only give you an estimated answer. It's okay to estimate. Just look at it and tell. Chin Ming thought again. The current maximum number of ships he can control is eight cruisers, which is one more than before. It was indeed close to being able to control the capital ship. So Chin Ming thought about his words and said, I control anything, including spaceships and industrial equipment, except that it consumes a lot of mental energy at the moment of control. Other than that, maintaining my psychic control over the device is simple. The amount of mental power required by a capital ship is far greater than that of a cruiser. It may be a little difficult with my current total mental power, but it should be possible if I try hard. But if I can't control it, 
It may cause me to fall into coma. Bai Quan also thought about it and said, Let's do it this way. You can control the battleship. But after controlling the battleship, you will be unable to move for a day in the simulation. How about that? No problem. Okay. Second question. Will your control over these things be disconnected when your mental power is completely exhausted? No. I'm sure of that. I've already tried it. Bai Quan nodded with some surprise. After writing this down, he asked, Is there an upper limit to the scale of your psychic control? Oh, there shouldn't be. Before Chen Ming could answer, Bai Quan suddenly thought of what they had previously investigated about what Chen Ming had done. At least two of the afterglow colonies in the galaxy were evacuated and taken away by Chen Ming. His psychic power didn't seem to have an upper limit. Chen Ming said smoothly, Actually, it existed before. But now, well, that's one thing. The next one is the limit of your spiritual power in repair. I remember you said before that you can repair the spacecraft even if there is only one iron atom left. I believe this. But how many times has your mental power been repaired or the amount of damage repaired? Chin Ning was a little confused by this question because he was not sure yet. After thinking about it for a while, he said, Let's put it this way. When I cooperated with you to do things on Yue's side, I first stole Yue's things and ran away and then cooperated with you on the rest. In that situation, in order to quickly transfer the afterglow, I used psychic energy to repair the cruiser non-stop for two days, so that the cruiser could use jumps multiple times. I can't remember the specific number of times, but the total amount of mental power consumed by my psychic power when repairing things is not that much. As long as my mental power is not exhausted and I still have the materials, everything under my control can be repaired without limit. Bai Quan was thinking subconsciously after hearing Chen Ning's words. Although Chen Ning made it clear that he did not consume much mental energy when performing repairs. Since Chen Ning also said that he would be unconscious if he controlled the battleship. Then repairing the cruiser for two days in a row would. Can you handle this? Chen Ming answered somewhat ambiguously. I have some good things used by psychics that can help me in the use of psychic powers. Bai Quan nodded. He did not continue to ask further questions. But instead said. Speaking of this kind of thing. I asked the doctor for a list of medicines that you psychics can use during the day. I will send it to you later. And you can look back at it. Okay. Well, that's okay then. It's hard to define mental power. So I won't give you any restrictions. It's up to you. Bai Quan still believes in Chen Ning's character. That's okay. When my mental power reaches a certain level, I will take the initiative to stop and wait for recovery. I will try my best to act according to my true situation. That's best. Bai Quan clicked on the terminal a few more times, turned to Chen Ming and said, I think these are the important things. If you think about anything else you've missed, I can fill it in for you now. Chen Ming thought for a moment and said, In the previous battle between me and Chang Xinghai, as long as the opposing ship touched the wreckage of my ship, it would be contaminated with materials controlled by me. I can directly use this method to destroy the spacecraft contaminated with materials I control. How can I say this? Bai Quan immediately thought of the last time Cheng Xinghai's fleet was attacked unilaterally by Chen Ming and was forced to fight head-on. Well, this kind of large-scale combat can help you unlock this restriction. Your field of vision will also be preserved. Remember to control your mental power. Who knows that this ability, which is like cheating, is Chen Ming's most basic ability. It is really not good to limit it on this scale. And Bai Chuan's own idea is to let Chen Ming fully exert the effect of his psychic powers so as to determine Chen Ming's true value in the war. After continuing to discuss with Chen Ming, he modified some detailed rules. Bai Quan finished setting the rules for the next battle, and when starting the device, he took the opportunity to ask Chen Ming, Have you seen the background of this simulated battle? Is there any background? Well, it seems that Chang Xinghai didn't tell you. I'll tell you now. The prototype area for this simulation is one-third of the Gallo Star Field. The setting is that both the local government and the military are corrupt and collude with each other to exploit the colonies under their control. But some soldiers at the bottom chose to resist. And a rebellion broke out when they gathered together. With the support of all parties, a climate quickly formed. The rebels will be weak at the beginning. But the government forces will not be too strong. Because the setting is that many people do not support the government. But secretly support the rebels. So the rebels will have some hidden benefits. That's about it. Chen Ming immediately complained. What kind of strange background is this? Bai Quan spread his hands and said, After all, the Gallo Two-Star area in the Gallo Star territory has a criminal record. 
and a war may break out in the Gallo Star territory in the future. So, in short, the government forces need to destroy the rebels within a limited time limit. Otherwise, the rebels will attract the attention of higher-ups and take down the corrupt higher-ups. The rebels need to persevere under the encirclement and suppression of government forces and wait for the order from above. Chin Ming suddenly made a stop gesture and said, Wait! Wait for Jowen! Isn't it over when the government troops are captured by the higher-ups? Have you noticed this? Yes! After the battle between the rebels and the government forces is over, there will be a high-level inspection and suppression campaign. If it passes, forget about it. If it fails, it will only be counted as a victory for the government forces. Chin Ming said subconsciously. Why do I feel like something similar has happened before? It really does exist. But it happened many years ago. And it's not in the Gallo Star territory. The rebels at that time actually passed the encirclement and suppression tests later and were successfully restored to peace. However, the external propaganda of this matter was not like this. After all, the Empire wanted to save face. And there was a pity that the leader of the rebels disappeared during that battle. Bai Quan looked at Chen Ming. His expression suddenly changed slightly. As if he thought of something, he waved his hand and said, Forget it. Let's not talk about this anymore. There is something else I want to tell you. Although this simulation and your last simulation are both simulated battles, they are completely different after entering. You can feel it after entering. And although you will not be able to go to areas outside the set area due to various reasons, in the simulation at least the entire star field is still operating. Not just one third of the star field where you can move. The surrounding existence will still have an impact on the simulation. So you need to pay attention to this. The specific impact it may have is more complicated. So I won't tell you here. Others will probably explain it to you later. So don't worry. After ending this topic, Chin Ming and Bai Quan chatted for a while on some details of the rules. After everything was set, Chin Ming was led by Bai Quan to a small independent room in the building where the simulation equipment was located. This room has a semi-open cabin on the ground connected to a large number of lines, similar to a cryosleep cabin. Those lines are used to monitor the physical condition of the person lying in the cabin to ensure that there are no physical problems during the use of the equipment. If a problem is detected, an alarm will be issued as soon as possible. Wait a moment. When Chen Ming reached this step, he suddenly thought that although his prosthetic brain was the same as the Zerd brain, it was purely a carrier of consciousness, allowing consciousness to exist in the body. But this kind of deep dive should require the brain to play some role. He is really not sure whether his prosthesis can go in. But Chen Ning had another thought. Since I have had two experiences of submerging my consciousness, and my body can normally enter an ordinary simulation even though I am far away, it should be possible this time. Two, probably, if it really doesn't work, he still has a backup method. So it's not a big problem. Chin Ming laid down in the cabin, put on his helmet, and activated the function of deep consciousness penetration. Fortunately, the device did not alarm and say that no living person was detected. Chin Ning could feel that his thinking was gradually being accelerated by the influence of the device. It seems that there is no need for him to use a little bit of manipulation to destroy the equipment and delay time for him to build a new one and use it near the main body. Chin Ming relaxed and completely devoted his consciousness to the simulation equipment. When the various indicators detected by Chin Ming's prosthesis gradually leveled off, only the brain activity of the prosthesis increased to a new level. Bai Quan exited the room, closed the door of the compartment, and the door automatically locked, isolating everyone, unless the person inside takes the initiative to open it, or there is a problem with the physical detection of the person inside, or there are two or more administrators who open it with a key, there is no way to break in directly. People who have submerged themselves in deep consciousness are very fragile. And the acceleration of brain thinking that submerges in deep consciousness is also very precisely adjusted. Any external interference may cause problems with accelerated thinking. The impact of brain problems is very terrifying. So the 14th Legion has always done its best to protect people who use analog equipment. Bai Quan tried pressing the electronic door lock next to him a few times. After confirming that it could not be opened, he went to the room next to Chen Ming, where there was also a similar device. As the referee of this battle, he also had to dive in deeply and keep an eye on the entire battle. Chapter 217 Reconciliation Before putting on his helmet, Bai Quan took the terminal and made a call. After connecting, he said directly, I have given you permission to watch the battle. Please pay attention and estimate the level of Chen Ming's mental power. The voice of a white spring psychic friend came from the other end of the phone. 
Is this simulation really reliable? Of course it's not reliable. So it's just an estimate. Chin Ming came from the Psychic Association. You know their rules. Chin Ming is not willing to accept any tests now. So he can only use this method first. The Psyker friend said with a somewhat unhappy tone. If you ask me, just give him a test quietly while his deep consciousness is submerged. Many people are looking forward to Chen Ming being tested one day. So just do this, there are so many things going on. Bai Quan decisively rejected this idea. No, I don't want to turn a good friend into an enemy. Whatever. I just mentioned it casually. Bai Quan did not dwell on this point too much and said, Let me ask you something. For you psychics, is there anything good that can assist in the recovery of mental power or directly improve the mental power? A good thing with these two functions? Let me think about it. Ectoplasm stones with the character of spirit. Special psychic creatures, ship spirits, and spiritual weapons will also work. Oh, by the way, I heard that there is something called condensed psychic energy source. This seems to work too. Well, there are also various devices found in the psychic ruins of that civilization and the unique psionic weapons they left behind. That's about it. What's wrong? Are you asking this all of a sudden? It's okay. I'm just asking. I don't believe it. I guess you suspect that Chen Ming has something similar. You know. But you still ask. Bai Quan said, and put on his helmet. Okay. Stop talking nonsense. We have to go in quickly. Don't make people wait for a long time. I know. I know. When Bai Quan just laid down on the equipment. Chin Ming has completed deep consciousness dive, and his body can still move normally. This is good news. At least Chin Ming will not be unable to move on both sides due to the partial consciousness on the prosthetic body. But this put him in a very strange state. The consciousness of the prosthetic body has indeed been accelerated. But at the same time, this part of consciousness has also undergone some changes along with the main consciousness of Chin Ming's body, which makes Chin Ming's thinking speed also accelerate. The prosthetic's thinking acceleration rate allows things that take a month to be solved in just a dozen hours. The acceleration efficiency of the thinking speed acquired by the main body is about 10%. In other words, Chin Ming's main body's thinking speed was accelerated by nearly five times in just a few dozen seconds. One day can be used for five days. Of course, Chin Ming's current thinking speed itself has been accelerated several times with the assistance of the two hive mind networks of the mechanical race and the Zerg race. Therefore, the superposition of the two effects made Chen Ming's thinking speed reach an exaggerated level. Wait, Chen Ming suddenly understood why the main body's acceleration efficiency was only 10%. It's because of these two hive minds. There was only partial consciousness of Chen Ming on the prosthesis over there. It is equivalent to an independent subconsciousness controlled by Chen Ming and affected by Chen Ming's main body's thinking speed. In addition to stating its main consciousness, the ontology here also has the consciousness of the insect swarm and the machine race mounted on it, which provides the ontology with an increase in thinking. Therefore, it is also accelerated by the feedback of the prosthesis. So the overall acceleration efficiency is of course low. Let's look at the current situation from the beginning. It is probably the mechanical race and the Zerg race that provide the main body with the blessing of thinking speed. The main body also provides the blessing of the same thinking speed as the main body to the part of consciousness on the prosthesis. Then the thinking of the prosthetic body was accelerated and fed back to the main body. Due to the existence of two hive minds, the main body cannot continue to accelerate, so it only reaches about five times the original speed. The bonuses and feedback from the prosthetic body did not overlap with each other, and things like stepping on the left foot and the right foot to reach the sky did not happen, which ultimately led to the current situation. It seems that after waiting for it to end, Chin Ming will have to ask the insect queen if she feels her mind speeding up. Let's see if the Zerg and machine races are purely a drag in this regard. Or if they take away some of the blessings that Chen Ning should have had. If part of it is taken away, it seems to be of great benefit to the subsequent development of the Insect Queen. Moreover, this situation did not have a great impact on Chen Ning himself. After all, the prosthetic's thinking acceleration is real. And the prosthesis can still do many things at a terrifying thinking speed. Chen Ning quickly understood the situation after the prosthesis entered deep consciousness. At the same time, after getting used to the accelerated thinking for a while, he quickly got used to it. However, this simulation device still left a very deep impression on Chen Ming. After all, the rate of thought acceleration was a bit exaggerated. He hadn't noticed the existence of such a thing in analog equipment before. 
It seems that we need to look back at this technology that may involve the brain and nerves. Chen Ming actually had something similar on hand. I got it from Yu Wei. The neural overclocking device. It has the ability to stimulate brain nerves, increase nerve activity, and accelerate thinking within a certain period of time after use. When I first came across this device, Yu Wei's file showed that it was a relic of another civilization. But I didn't expect that the Empire had already created something like this in analog equipment based on this technology. But it's hard to say which of the two is more suitable for Chen Ming to use. After all, if Chen Ming only needs to use the neural overclocking device for 10 minutes every day, Chen Ming's nerves will be activated throughout the next day, ensuring that Chen Ming can maintain this effect when he is awake. And this thought accelerating device seems to have some limitations. The first and most obvious thing is that you have to lie on the device. And since there is such equipment, Chen Ming does not see it being used on a large scale anywhere in the empire. Either it's a cost issue, or the equipment just can't be used for long periods of time. If Chen Ming wants to get one, it would be okay if the problem is the front problem. But if it is the latter problem, then it is better to use it less. He had to figure this out. Of course, he doesn't have time to do these things now. When Chen Ming completely completed deep consciousness dive, he found that he was in a dark virtual space. There were some figures standing nearby, counting him. There were ten people in total, separated by half and half standing here face to face, and Cheng Xinghai stood opposite him. When she saw Chen Ming, she showed a sly smile on her face, stretched out her hand to Chen Ming and said, We're finally here. We can start. Chen Ming looked at Cheng Xinghai's hand, and then looked to the side. The other eight people standing face to face were shaking hands with each other as a sign of friendship. Chen Ming also held it. However, his attention was not on Cheng Xinghai at all, but on observing the other eight people present. He didn't know any of the seven people, and the only one he knew was Cheng Xingha, who happened to be standing in his row. Cheng Xingha immediately noticed Chen Ming's gaze, and immediately turned his head in embarrassment. But Chen Ming didn't do anything. He won't remember the past things that have ended for too long. Cheng Xingha's current behavior is really unnecessary in his opinion. But he couldn't care about what happened to others. So Chen Ming didn't say anything and continued to observe the others. These people all looked very young the oldest in their early twenties, a few years younger than Chen Ming. However, they don't look like young people who are just starting out, but more like the mainstay of a force. I just don't know why. Except for him, Cheng Xinghe and Cheng Xinghai. The remaining seven people have very serious faces. It looked like he was not going to a simulated battlefield, but a real battlefield. But it's hard to ask Chen Ming at this time, because after both parties met and shook hands, the friendly pre-war communication session ended. Cheng Xinghai and the other four people standing in front of Chen Ming gradually disappeared. Only four people who belong to the same camp as Chen Ming are still with him. And from this moment on, Chen Ming found that there were two more times in the upper right corner of his field of vision. In an outside standard earth time, time passes slowly, which is caused by accelerated thinking. The other is a countdown time in the simulation that is the same as the normal time in perception. The total length is just over half an hour a month. One month is the deadline for the next simulated war. And half an hour should be the final preparation time now. At the same time, a special terminal appeared on Chen Ming's hand. It seems that participants on the same team can communicate directly between each other. After confirming their own situation, the five people present looked at each other. Except for Chen Ming. The four people seemed to know each other. So except for Cheng Xingha. The other three people quickly locked their eyes on Chen Ming. One of them suddenly took a small step towards Chen Ming and said to Chen Ming, Hello Chen Ming, I am Song Pu, a senior majoring in military command at the military university directly under the 14th Army Corps. Hello. Chen Ming nodded in response and asked, Do you need me to do anything? Song Pu did not answer the question directly, but asked, I heard from Cheng Xinghai that this is your first time to participate in such a large-scale simulated battle. Is that true? Right. Chen Ming did not deny it. Then let me give you a brief introduction first. What we are conducting now is a large-scale simulated battle with the star field as the background. Because of the vast scope of capabilities required in large-scale warfare, it must be conducted by multiple people. We need to work together and accomplish the goals set in the background to achieve victory. Although Chen Ming had already learned the general situation from Bai Quan before, Song Pu would definitely not disrespect Chen Ming if he said it again now. So he simply showed that he didn't understand anything and said, I understand, but I heard that the background of this mission is a civil war, divided into two camps, the government army and the rebels. 
So are we the government army or the rebels? Rebels? Before Song Pu could answer, someone next to him said, This needs to be confirmed after we actually go in. Song Pu nodded to the young man who was speaking, who looked a little chubby in square rimmed glasses, and turned back to Chin Ming and said, That's it. Chin Ming glanced at the little fat man and asked, You seem to have cooperated before? Yes. Several of us have participated in similar simulated battles together before. How about this? Let's get to know each other first, so we can address each other easily. How about we call each other by code names according to our previous habits after we completely enter the simulation? Of course Chen Ming would not refuse this and said, I have no objection. Song Pu patted his chest and said, I, Song Pu, codename commander, am good at overall planning and command of large-scale battlefields. Then he pointed to the fat man wearing glasses, who had just spoken and said, This is Dong Yao, who is in the same grade as me in the same school. He majors in logistics. He is good at the dispatch of logistics supplies and the integration of logistics routes to protect frontline troops. Supply of materials. Song Pu's eyes immediately turned to the man who had been silent and very strong and said, This Hong Wang Hong's code name is Engineer. He majors in military theory at the Military Industry University. He is good at the planning and scheduling of military projects. He is responsible for military industry, industrial planning, and layout of various military facilities. Finally, he pointed at Cheng Xingha and said, This is Cheng Xingha, codenamed General. He is good at battlefield command. It seems that you have known each other before? Cheng Xingha nodded slightly, still seeming to avoid Chen Ming. However, it was clear that Bai Quan had already responded before gave him the compensation he deserved, and solemnly apologized. But Cheng Xingha seems to be unable to let go of this matter, and he doesn't know what the situation is. At this time, Bai Quan, who had just laid down on the device and had not yet had time to completely sink into deep consciousness, suddenly felt his nose was a little itchy. But this feeling quickly disappeared. Bai Quan didn't care and continued to sink his consciousness into the device. Chen Ming naturally could not imagine how much Cheng Xingha suffered after returning. He just thought about the best way to do things in this situation and chose to come to Cheng Xingha and extend his hand to him. Cheng Xingha hesitated for a moment, then finally stretched out his hand and shook it vigorously. Feel sorry. So our previous conflicts end here? Well, thank you. Cheng Xingha nodded to Chen Ming and put away his previous appearance. Bai Quan's punishment for him actually ended when he completed the tasks assigned to him by Bai Quan. The main reason for being like this is that he has been worried about Chen Ming's attitude. He is Bai Quan's junior. And Chen Ming has grown from being on par with him to being on equal footing with Bai Quan in just a few months. Cheng Xingha felt an indescribable gap in worry. But after actually meeting Chen Ming, and Chen Ming showed a normal attitude, Cheng Xingha also realized that his worries were unnecessary. And it would not be a problem to continue. So since Chen Ming gave him a suitable step, he followed the trend. Moreover, Bai Quan's words that Cheng Xinghai conveyed to him during the day were still ringing in his ears. If Bai Quan was reported to school because of his poor performance on the battlefield, it would still be embarrassing even if he was already in his senior year and went out to participate in the war as an intern. So now, he wants to put aside all the past things and fully devote himself to the next simulated war. It would also be a good thing for him if he could let go completely rather than temporarily. Chapter 218 Danger Zone Chen Ming and Cheng Xinghai shook hands and made peace. To the other three, it was an unexpected but not bad thing. They all could tell that there was something going on between Chen Ming and Cheng Xingha. And it was definitely good news to reconcile before a cooperative activity was about to take place. Cheng Xinghai organized this event not only to beat up his brother, but also to have Cheng Xingha and Chen Ming meet head on and find ways to ease their relationship. After all, the relationship between Chen Ming and Bai Quan is there. And the relationship between Cheng Xingha and Bai Quan is also there. Even if it fails, there won't be a big problem. Seeing that the relationship between the two had almost eased, Song Pu said, Chen Ming, I have introduced you to the other people's code names and abilities. So what are your abilities? Have you decided on your code name? How about Psychers? Chen Ming looked at Song Pu and said, I have no objection to the code name Psychic, but my abilities are more complicated and it's hard to explain clearly. Roughly speaking, it is the ability to have absolute control over mechanical equipment, to be able to repair and transform spacecraft, industrial equipment, and any objects with mechanical structures, and to manufacture them with materials. I will demonstrate it to you in detail in the simulation. I have just talked with the referee about this special psychic setting, 
and all the necessary settings have been set. Song Pu asked again, Can you show it in a little more detail? You can actually use psychic powers now. Here? Chen Ning glanced at the dark void around him. And then at himself. The simulation completely reproduced his clothes. Except for the wrist guards made of Zerg carapace. Without special settings in the simulation. This thing is just a wristband made of biomass material. Nothing more. Chen Ning usually wears a coat that covers a lot of his body. Inside the coat. He has stuffed a complete set of repair kits in every corner. Carrying a weight of about 10 kilograms can be regarded as a way to exercise. Chen Ning dropped a bunch of tools on the ground with a clank in the eyes of several people. Then all these tools turned into liquid in Chen Ning's hands and flowed in his palms. This situation is different from previous small-scale simulations. In the small-scale simulation, Chen Ning's psychic powers were directly completed ignoring the process when using them. And now Chen Ming can even see the process of these tools liquefying, which looks extremely real. Chen Ming didn't pay too much attention. Anyway, psychic powers are fine in the simulation, as long as they can be used. The metal liquid transformed by these tools wrapped around Chen Ming's arm, gradually forming a fully functional auxiliary robotic arm. Chen Ming stretched out his hand with a robotic arm forward so that others could see it clearly. After clenching his fist hard, Chen Ning took off the robotic arm and handed it to Hong Guanghong of the Military Industrial University. He should know something about this kind of thing. Hong Guanghong was not polite. After taking over the robotic arm, he also took out a few tools from somewhere on his body and adjusted several joints of the robotic arm. He made the mechanical arm that originally fit Chen Ning a little looser and then put it on his arm. Hong Guanghong carefully observed the robotic arm on his arm and said, the RS-34 robotic arm for auxiliary manual work is brand new, flawless, and very powerful. So-so. Chen Ming was modest at first, and then said, My spiritual power is limited by the materials. Otherwise I can make more things. Song Pu immediately asked, What kind of material can your spiritual power be unrestricted? Does it have to be a material that you have touched? That's not necessary. I just need to touch the main body of the warehouse so that I can use all the materials stored in this warehouse. As soon as Chen Ning finished explaining, Hong Guanghong's arm suddenly made an obvious sound of mechanical activity. All the tools on the auxiliary working robot arm popped up under his control at the same time, making his arm look a little bloated, like a weird mechanical hand. However, Hong Guanghong said with admiration, a very easy-to-use robotic arm. As soon as he finished speaking, he put away all the pop-up tools one by one, removed the mechanical arm, and planned to restore it to its original state and return it to Chen Ning. But Chen Ning waved his hand. The mechanical arm immediately turned into a metallic liquid in Hong Guanghong's hand and floated back to Chen Ming's side, recondensing into tools. After a brief demonstration, while Chen Ming continued to stuff the tools into the coat he was wearing, he asked his first question, So what are we going to do in the simulation? Song Pu looked at Chen Ning with a sparkle in his eyes. After hearing Chen Ming's question, he answered immediately, what you do in reality, you do in simulation. Seeing that Chen Ning was a little confused, Song Pu continued to explain, Maybe what I said is a bit vague, but you will know when you get in. The situation should be a little more complicated than you think. It was the first time I participated in a large-scale simulation, and I was shocked. Chen Ming's curiosity was aroused by Song Pu's words. After looking at the countdown in the upper right corner of his field of vision, he said, I understand. So now I just need to wait. Right. Yes. Take a little rest and recuperate your energy. There will probably be no time for rest in the next month. We can't sleep in this simulation. Good. Chin Ming chose to respect the opinions of experienced people and closed his eyes to rest. The other four people present also chose their own way of resting. But they all took a look at Chin Ming's situation from time to time and observed Chin Ming. Especially Song Pu. He looked at Chin Ming as if he saw the key to winning this battle. In fact, he had already investigated Chen Ming's situation and got to know Chen Ming before Cheng Xinghai invited him to participate in this battle. Therefore, when Cheng Xinghai was assigned to Chen Ming's side to participate in this battle, he didn't have any objections. He even hoped to fight side by side with Chen Ming and see the legendary Psyker who completed the attack on Afterglow with Bai, the current popular figure of the 14th Legion, and won a great victory. Moreover, he also investigated that Chen Ming had joined the 14th Army Corps and was learning battlefield command techniques from Bai Quan in the branch. It is possible for them to work together on the frontline battlefield in the future. That's why he was the first to stand up and communicate with Chen Ming today. 
showing an obvious friendly attitude. He also took the time to contact several teammates that Cheng Xinghai asked him to find for help in advance to explain the matter and introduce Chen Ming's situation. Therefore, the other two people obviously didn't know much about Chen Ming, but they were among the best in their own schools and had rich combat experience. There was absolutely no impatience or arrogance towards Chen Ming, a newbie who might be held back because he had no experience in large scale battlefields. At the beginning, they were just out of trust in Song Pu and courtesy to Chen Ming. But when Chen Ming showed his spiritual power and showed enough value, what was left was pure respect for a qualified teammate. Time passed quickly. The half hour countdown came to an end. At the moment the countdown ended, I don't know who said it started. The dark and illusory environment around Chen Ming solidified instantly. Chen Ming blinked and found that he appeared in a cafe that looked pretty good. The people on the same team were not with him. They were separated. Chen Ming subconsciously turned his head and looked out the window. The floating vehicles flying quickly from high altitude and the vehicles moving along the road on the ground told Chen Ming that this was a peaceful colony. The drivers and passengers with different expressions in the vehicles, the hurried pedestrians on the roadside, and the guests drinking tea leisurely in the cafe, and a few noisy students that Chen Ming turned around were all making him laugh. Chen Ming felt as if he was in a real world, but the special terminal in his hand told him that all this was virtual, a simulation carried out according to a set program. It's just that all NPCs seem to have extremely high intelligence. Chen Ming now seriously doubts whether the Empire used the captured Yu Wei in such a place. At this moment, the special terminal in Chen Ming's hand suddenly rang. Commander, Song Pu spoke in the terminal. Each confirm their identity and location. And we need to figure out the overall situation. My identity has been confirmed. The supreme leader of the rebels is currently at the core of the area occupied by the rebels. An important frontline town on the border of the Gallo 4 sector. A military colony called the Luyan Galaxy. We are the rebels. Song Pu sat behind his desk picked up a mission report for dealing with spies, took a look at it, put the report closest to him, and continued to speak on the terminal. Your identity and location in the simulation need to be confirmed as soon as possible. And I need to know your situation as soon as possible. The terminal quickly followed up with the receipts sent by General Cheng Xingha, Logistics, Dong Miao, and Engineer Hong Wang Hong. Chen Ming also followed suit, then put down the terminal and confirmed his status. Just now, the surrounding environment changed, and he appeared in the cafe. Chin Ming discovered that the clothes he was wearing had changed into a set of more casual clothes. Instead of the coat Chin Ming bought to hold various tools, there was nothing on him except a terminal and some scattered coins. It seems that his identity can only be determined through this terminal. Chin Ming picked up the terminal that came with him and found that a password was required to unlock the terminal. Although it was easy to solve a password with psychic power, he thought for a while and directly entered the word, Chen Ming. It actually went in. The personal information interface of the terminal shows everything about Chen Ming's identity. However, except for the name Chen Ming, there is nothing similar to Chen Ming's own experience in this identity. It seems that he in the simulation is just an ordinary office worker who has a day off today. But Chen Ming knew that he was here to participate in the simulation, not on vacation. So there must be something wrong with this identity. Just as Chen Ming was rummaging through the terminal to see if there were any identity clues, he noticed that several passages had flashed through that special terminal. Everyone else seems to have confirmed their identities one after another. General, Cheng Xingha. I am in an office at a frontline station. My position is the commander of the rebel garrison. There are documents on the table for the upcoming inspection of ground orbital defense facilities. We seem to be on a temporary basis with the government forces. In truce. Logistics Dong Yao. I am with the commander. Engineer, Han Guanghong. I was inspecting the equipment in an industrial colony that was captured by the government forces not long before my visit. My identity seems to be the chief ordnance expert from somewhere else. This colony is very large. According to people around me, there are two industrial colonies of similar size in the galaxy. They both seem to have just been seized from government forces. I'm not sure whether it will be our main industrial output colony in the future. As soon as Chen Ming read what his teammates said, Song Pu asked, Where are the psychics? Chen Ming looked around and said in the terminal, I'm in a cafe. Question mark. Logistics Dong Miao asked a question, obviously not understanding Chen Ming's current situation. Fortunately, Chen Ming had already found the folder hidden in the terminal he carried with him, and was looking through the information in it. According to the information, I am currently in the Gallo 2 star sector. 
a comprehensive colony in the Okone star system. It seems that there is some task for me to perform. Song Pu immediately said. Gallo 2 is the star sector actually controlled by the government forces. There are a total of 12 star sectors in the Gallo star territory. The first four star sectors have been opened in this simulation. Both Gallo 1 and Gallo 2 are completely under the control of the government forces. Gallo 4 is under our control. And Gallo 3, which is surrounded by the center of the other three star sectors, is where we and the government forces just the location of the ceasefire. If I remember correctly the galaxy you are in, it should be at the junction of Gallo 2 and Gallo 4. Song Pu quickly told a bunch of information that was useful to Chen Ming. Let Chen Ming already have some guesses about his work. Well, there seems to be a cipher text in my personal terminal. Let me translate it and take a look. Chen Ning had learned how to decipher cipher text when he was learning command techniques from Bai Quan. After finding the correct reference book in the terminal, Chen Ming quickly translated the contents of the cipher text. It seems that I need to meet with the informant in the simulation at the cafe I am currently at. We will meet at 3 o'clock in the afternoon earth time. It is now 2.45 o'clock in the afternoon. Do I need to meet someone? Song Pu thought for a moment and glanced across the document he just saw. His expression changed instantly. And he quickly said in the terminal, No, we can't meet. Retreat quickly. Good. Chin Ming chose to trust his teammate's judgment and immediately stood up and left the cafe. At the same time, he asked, Should I find a way to escape? That's right. Since we have determined that you are working as a spy in a place actually controlled by the government forces, it most likely means that someone from the government forces is also working as a spy here. There happened to be a spy's clue on my desk. This clue pointed to the government forces. It must be a clue to one of the government forces. If our spy here is you, then the other party's spy should be Chung Shanghai. Since I have this clue here, the government forces must also have a clue that can investigate you. You must evacuate as soon as possible. Chin Ming walked out of the cafe, summoned a taxi, and asked the driver to go to the nearest civil aerospace airport. After the taxi started, Chin Ming replied on the terminal. Is it so exciting to get up? Song Pu quickly responded. Although we have a truce with the government forces now, the superficial truce is just preparing for the second war under the water and the coming one. The war you are underwater now is on the cusp of the storm. This is the first confrontation at the beginning. If either side fails, they will directly lose a psyker, which will greatly affect the entire situation. Go to a safe location as soon as possible, and I will arrange your rescue. I understand. What about Chung Shanghai? You can't miss this opportunity. Right. Song Pu's eyes glanced at the other terminal he placed on the table, which contained complete information about Chung Shanghai's identity in the simulation. I will arrange for someone to catch her. But your side is more important. Okay. So what kind of place is considered a safe place? Just wherever you think it's safe. Then tell me the location. The galaxy you are in is close to the border and far away from the original war zone. As long as you can escape pursuit and hide for a while. We can rescue you. Some metallic liquid suddenly flowed out from Chin Ming's fingertips. A place where I feel safe. I get it. Chin Ming replied. And then condensed the metal liquid into a bracelet and put it on his wrist. This was the only bit of material he could use on the small ordering bell at the coffee shop he just dropped by. And it was also the only bit of metal material he controlled now. No, there's also the taxi he's sitting in now. That's all he is now. It seems to be because Chen Ning's background was as a spy abroad, and he had no contact with the rebel headquarters, front lines or material warehouses at relay stations. As a result, Chen Ning simply does not have enough materials to do things now. This can be regarded as a means to restrict Chen Ning. When Chen Ning discussed this rule with Bai Quan before, he still thought it was quite normal. It was normal that untouched materials or warehouses could not be used. And this restriction was nothing. But when he came in and encountered the current situation of him being a spy outside, he realized that this was Bai Quan's target. Bai Quan must know the specific background of the entire simulation, and is just waiting for him to fall into the trap. But it's okay. Chin Ming was able to turn over from a shabby iron or to today having 12 cruisers, tens of thousands of destroyers and frigates. So now that I am penniless, starting a business in the simulation is just walking the same path over again. Of course, this is a cooperative simulated battle. So after Chen Ming's teammates learned about the situation, they did not intend to let Chen Ming handle the matter alone. They are a team. And cooperation is the most important thing. The next plan was quickly discussed in the special terminal's communication channel. First of all, 
The most important first step is to rescue Chen Ming. All other things can be postponed. Chen Ning is the most critical person now. If they lose Chen Ming, they will lose the biggest advantage they have. Of course, what needs to be done still needs to be done. While Song Pu was arranging manpower to prepare for the rescue of Chen Ning, he was also investigating Cheng Xinghai's location based on the spy document that was sent to him at the beginning. The other team members are also seizing the time to finish the things they need to do immediately after entering the simulation. At the same time, the terminal shares some information that can only be obtained through actual investigation. In the scope of a star field, the sharing and exchange of information is very important. They are all important figures in the rebels now. Only by understanding the situation of the rebels can they formulate more complete plans in the future. On Chen Ning's way to the Civil Aerospace Airport, Song Pu had already integrated the messages posted by his teammates on the special terminal communication channel. Uniformly posted in the communication channel. The total number of valuable systems currently under actual control by the rebels is 331. It occupies one-third of the number of galaxies in the entire simulated battlefield. And the number of galaxies actually controlled by the government is 758. Ship composition. The number of capital ships is zero. The number of cruisers is 202. Most of them are defenders mass-produced by Sindar Company or some other mass-produced models. Some are rulers taken away by the rebels when they rebelled. The number of destroyers that can be mobilized is about 5,000. Not counting the patrol fleet of the system itself. The number of frigates is five times the number of destroyers. Approaching 30,000. All spaceships can be divided into three main fleets. Each consisting of 50 cruisers, 200 destroyers and thousands of frigates. One of the fleets is at the headquarters and is under my command. The other two fleets are under the generals at the front. The remaining cruisers and scattered spacecraft are mainly stationed at the junction between us and the government forces and generally do not participate in large-scale battles. This number is a bit low, mainly because there were large-scale battles with government forces before the armistice. So we need to solve the problem of fleet quantity. The number of soldiers fluctuates greatly, but as long as the source of soldiers is insured, our number of soldiers will not be a problem. Colony. The number of colonies exceeding the second degree is 568. Among them, there are 233 comprehensive colonies, 11 industrial colonies, and 74 professional mining colonies. These three are more important, and the remaining types are more complicated. I have put them in the attachment for those who are interested to read. As for the number of colonies that are smaller than the second level, it is temporarily impossible to count. So they are not included. Government troops. The movement of the government forces is relatively clear. They failed in the last encirclement and suppression of us, and chose to take the initiative to cease fire with us when their losses were much greater than ours. They need time to regroup. And we also need time to recuperate. But the overall situation is still mainly in favor of the government. They occupy more systems and have more colonies. Although there are many colonial commentators who do not support the government forces and support us, the government forces can still squeeze money out of their hands. I predict that the government will restart the war in a few days. We must rescue Chen Ming as soon as possible and discuss the next plan. Chapter 219 Escape At this time, Chin Ning could already see the Civil Aerospace Airport where a spaceship was landing in the distance in a taxi. And at this time, he happened to see Song Pu mentioning him on the terminal. So he said directly in the channel, I am approaching the airport. I saw the document on the terminal saying that there is a safe house in the surrounding colony. I should be able to stay there. Song Pu reminded, Be careful. The location of the safe house may also be discovered. If you find anything unusual, run away. I'm already arranging a special operations team to infiltrate the past. I need you to find a way to hide for a day or two. New. Chin Ming replied quickly and continued to ask on the terminal. How is the progress of the arrest of Chung Shinghai? We have just locked her location and are implementing an arrest plan. She is located near the junction of our territory and the government-occupied area. It is not far from your side. It is the kind that can be encountered after passing a few waterways. Have you found her? Right. Song Pu reacted instantly as soon as he answered. The capabilities of both sides in this simulated battle are almost the same. Since they have locked onto Cheng Xinghai. Then the opponent. Chin Ming was almost one step away from the airport at this time. But at some point, the sparse traffic flow around him had completely disappeared. Although the taxi is still driving forward, its speed is slowly decreasing. And when Chin Ming tried to open the car door, it couldn't be opened at all. 
and there was only a permission prompt to lock it. Chen Ning immediately took complete control of the taxi controlled remotely by the taxi company. However, the taxi was still allowed to slow down slowly according to the original order sent by the taxi company. Looking at the police aerial vehicle gradually appearing in the distant sky, Chen Ning felt that he had to take the final step by himself. However, he did not rush to get out of the car. Instead, he squatted in the back seat of the taxi where it could be covered by the door. At the same time, he used the materials inside the taxi to rub a micro robot and placed it at the bottom of the taxi. Observing the situation outside, it took just a few dozen seconds for Chen Ming's taxi to stop. Many reinforcements belonging to the local police appeared in the area that was originally empty. The direction of the airport has been completely blocked. A layer of isolation tape has been pulled up. And a large number of humanoid police robots completely surrounded Chen Ming within a few minutes. Although these mechanical bodies may be able to help Chen Ming, how to get close is a big problem. At this time, Chen Ming no longer expected the taxi to continue taking him forward. So he quickly transformed all the materials inside the taxi except the outer SH. L into metallic liquid to surround him, so that he could become what Chen Ming wanted at any time. Let them be something. At this moment, Chen Ming suddenly saw an aerial vehicle suddenly approaching his direction, and at the same time shouted to him, Disarm and surrender immediately. Otherwise we will use lethal force. Chen Ning had no intention of paying attention to him, and was still thinking about how to safely reach the airport behind the police defense line. But at the moment when the second warning sounded, a floating car floating in the distance suddenly appeared with the tail flame of something being fired. The robot Chen Ming left under the taxi instantly locked onto the appearance of the launched object and sent back the photo. It was a miniature missile. What the H, L? Chen Ning thought the police would give him two more warnings. After all, the current battle seems not to kill him directly, but to capture him alive. Moreover, what Chen Ming originally wanted to do was wait for the police robot to approach and arrest him. But the opponent obviously didn't give him this chance. I'm afraid that if someone didn't remind me later, I'd just do something cruel. Chen Ming cursed secretly, and his spiritual energy was instantly activated. The taxi, which originally still had a SH, L, liquefied along with a metallic liquid wrapped around Chen Ming, rising into the sky on one side. A huge liquid metal vortex composed of metallic liquid was suspended in the air in front of the launch trajectory of the micro missile. Almost at the moment Chen Ming set up the vortex, the miniature missile arrived in front of him. Countless metal liquids flew out in all directions under the impact of the explosion, but were instantly controlled by Chen Ming's spiritual energy to return. Most of it once again wrapped around Chen Ming's body, which had lost the protection of the taxi, completely wrapping Chen Ming up, forming a suit of power armor that looked a bit bloated. Chen Ming didn't have many choices. He could only pile up materials and weaken the mobility to a certain extent to make the power armor more protective. It would not be possible for Chen Ming to be directly penetrated by a single encounter and hurt Chen Ming himself. The little remaining material formed a flying robot and flew straight to the sky. It can help Chen Ming obtain a bird's eye view of the entire area near the airport. Together with the small robot on the ground, Chen Ming can quickly plan the most suitable road. It's a pity that due to material limitations, this is the most he can do with his psychic powers now. But it's enough. While the smoke and dust from the explosion have not completely dissipated, Chen Ming controlled the power armor, which was thicker than before, and rushed out of the smoke. The police robots that were originally surrounding Chen Ming and the direction in the middle of the airport immediately took action and raised the stun guns on their arms. The sharp electrode needles penetrated directly into the limbs of Chen Ming's powered armor. The instantly increased voltage directly damaged the circuits inside the armor, causing black smoke to appear. After all, this is just a no-name power armor made of taxi materials not to mention the fully improved biomass armor. Even the prototype locust armor of biological armor is completely incomparable. Fortunately, the electrode needles fired by the police robot stun gun do not mainly cause physical damage. Just the damage to the circuit is nothing to Chen Ming. After his psychic energy instantly repaired the damage and tore off the wires connecting the electrode needles, Chen Ming continued to stride towards the police robot surrounding the airport defense line like nothing happened. As long as he has access to a robot, Chen Ning can get the capital to escape. At this moment, the aerial vehicle that had launched a micro-missile suddenly started to move again. The SH. LS on both sides of its body suddenly opened. And several micro-missile launchers popped out. In Chen Ning's scolding eyes, dozens of micro-missiles shot at Chen Ning with tail flames that pierced the sky. The power armor covering Chen Ming's body instantly liquefied again. 
and the swirling metallic liquid once again formed a metallic vortex in the air. The flight trajectory of the launched micro-missiles was rolled up, throwing them all away. Continuous explosions occurred around Chun Ming, but none of them could really hurt Chun Ming. The smoke and dust generated by the explosion even provided Chen Ming with cover again. And when Chen Ming broke through the smoke again wearing power armor, he was only one step away from the police robot. However, the police robots no longer used non-lethal force here and directly took out their standard electromagnetic rifles. The hail of bullets composed of electromagnetic bombs instantly covered every part of Chen Ming's body. But except for Chen Ming, who stretched out his hands on the two fatal parts of his head and chest. He still carried the firepower forward like a normal person. All metal projectiles that hit the powered armor were reversely controlled by Chen Ming and became part of the powered armor, increasing the strength of the armor. When Chen Ming's hand grabbed the head of a police robot, the robot melted instantly. The metallic liquid wrapped around Chen Ming's power armor along his arms. As it flows, the materials and structure of the entire power armor are being continuously optimized by Chen Ming. The excess metallic liquid was suspended directly around Chen Ming like a shield, protecting him from any external attacks. Chen Ming also took advantage of the situation and controlled the two police robots closest to him. The two robots did not melt. Instead, they turned back immediately after being controlled. They raised their guns at friendly forces and instantly destroyed the control centers of several police robots. The electromagnetic weapon is not very effective when attacking Chen Ming, but it is very accurate when attacking friendly forces taking advantage of the chaos caused by the police robot's betrayal. Chin Ning took the opportunity to run around the police defense line, while controlling the robots to create more chaos. They are also using the bodies of fallen military robots to continuously optimize this set of power armor. He quickly made the best model he could with the materials he could currently obtain. All the excess materials were made into micro-flying robots by Chin Ming. Some of them continued to monitor the situation around the airport overhead, while the other part was targeting Chin Ming, and still approaching rapidly, as if they were planning to do something. After blocking more police units that wanted to get closer to Chen Ming, Chen Ming rushed into the airport alone, wearing a much lighter but significantly stronger power armor. And the moment he entered the airport where a large number of spaceships were parked, it was too late to evacuate them all. It was like he had entered the steel jungle at his consciousness and returned to his home court. Psionics were no longer restricted at all, and several spaceships were needed in his hands like clay. Even if the civilian spacecraft itself has many castrations, its structure is at least intact. As long as Chen Ming doesn't think about pursuing armor strength, other functions can be achieved by relying on his own understanding of spacecraft design. If that didn't work, Chen Ming still had the overclocking technology he learned from Zhu Jing that he hadn't used for a while. Let civilian ships also exert the strength of military ships. But Chen Ming didn't do that now. He was just constantly in contact with the spacecraft dock here, and constantly polymerizing the melted metal liquid. During this process, Chen Ming actually discovered several military spacecraft that looked like civilian spacecraft at this civilian airport. In the computers inside these spacecrafts, Chen Ming instantly found the routes behind these spacecrafts. The targets are all in the galaxies actually controlled by the rebels. It seems that these spacecraft are intended to be used as spy ships. Chen Ming conveniently recorded the models of these spaceships and asked the robots flying in the sky to take some high-definition close-ups of these spaceships. Later, he might be able to find similar spacecraft in rebel-controlled areas. Immediately, Chen Ming unceremoniously took control of all these military spacecraft, and at the same time left one that was not melted, but was placed in place. Chen Ming doesn't need this spaceship now. If it stays here, it might have other uses in the future. The remaining spaceships all merged into the liquid metal ball that was nearly a hundred meters in diameter in the air. At this time, Chen Ning happened to discover through the robot in the air that there were new reinforcements about two or three kilometers away from the airport. In addition to the police, Chen Ning even saw some shuttle boats and spaceships that were obviously government troops. It looked like he couldn't stay at the airport any longer. Chen Ning raised his head. The giant liquid metal ball in the sky suddenly fell to the ground. Countless metallic liquids finally seemed to be discovered by Newton, and began to flow normally following the laws of physics. And in the center where the metallic liquid was still wrapped just now, the figure of a destroyer appeared there. This is an unspecified destroyer that Chen Ming made using the spacecraft at the airport. But the design was based on part of the heavy rain and part of the stardust. So its effect is also very obvious. However, Chen Ming also noticed at this time that there were many civilians trapped in the airport outside the defense line deployed by the police. With expressions of fear on their faces. 
as well as those police officers standing in front of the civilians. With firm faces but unable to completely conceal the same fear in their eyes. When it comes to dealing with psychers, there is no difference between humans and humans. Although Chen Ning knew that this was a simulation, after thinking about it, he had no plans to deal a harsh blow to the police here before leaving. He simply turned around and walked straight onto the spacecraft before the local government had time to surround him. The spacecraft took off and flew into the sky. No one on the ground dared to stop such a destroyer. Chen Ming successfully escaped the planet's gravity and entered the universe. Next, he only needs to go to the edge of the galaxy and he can directly use hyperspace to return to the area occupied by the rebels. What Chen Ming found strange was that after he took off, the local government did not send a follow-up spacecraft to pursue him, entering hyperspace. If the reason why a spacecraft was not sent directly from the ground is because the government thought it was just arresting or killing a person, then the reason why a spacecraft was not sent to track it in space is. Chen Ming picked up the special terminal. Sure enough, Song Pu mentioned this above. This was an arrangement made by the rebel informant after sacrificing himself, which delayed the tracking time of the government forces. Originally, Chen Ning was worried about how to get there safely from the edge of the galaxy after leaving the planet with limited logistical supplies. Now it seems that this issue does not need to be considered by him. That's the benefit of having teammates. Chen Ming's spaceship quickly arrived at the edge of the galaxy and successfully entered hyperspace after starting the hyperspace channel engine. It was only then that the galaxy patrol reluctantly tracked it down, eating the spacecraft's exhaust and following it into hyperspace. It was this 10-second lag that made it too late for the government's pursuers to track Chen Ming the moment they entered hyperspace. Chen Ming is already in an absolutely safe position. Even if there is a cruiser in the patrol, there is nothing to be afraid of. Moreover, the hyperspace channel jump engine developed by Chen Ming himself has been modified by him into the spacecraft he is riding on. In the confused eyes of everyone observing the scene, Chen Ming's spaceship disappeared into hyperspace like a cruiser leaping. Someone in Cheng Xinghai's terminal channel immediately said, How can a destroyer of his be able to jump? Before anyone else could reply, Cheng Xinghai suddenly said in the terminal, Don't ask. Asking means psychic energy. As soon as Cheng Xinghai spoke, someone immediately said to her, Reply at this time. Are you safe? Well, the spaceship I'm on has just set sail. And the rebels have no chance to kill me. So smooth? Yes. Just a few minutes before Chen Ning was blocked outside the airport, Cheng Xinghai happened to arrive at her airport a little earlier than Chen Ming. After some makeup, she no longer looked like the lively girl she had been before, but instead looked like an ordinary person close to 30 years old. She easily relied on the multiple identities given by her spy status to buy the ticket without anyone noticing. Cheng Xinghai's psychic energy can directly improve her intelligence and thinking ability, rather than simply increasing her thinking speed. Therefore, she discovered the problem with her identity as soon as she learned that she was in the territory of the rebels and was about to meet with people, while immediately notifying her teammates to come to the rescue. She also immediately chose to retreat. So she finally arrived at the airport just a little earlier than Chen Ming. Before the siege of the rebels came, they successfully boarded a civilian spaceship that belonged to a purely neutral force that was independent of the government forces and rebels and was about to go to the government-controlled areas. A war is a war. And a civil war is a civil war. Before issues such as treason completely arise. The exchange of civilian spacecraft between government and rebel areas is not completely prohibited. It is impossible for the rebels to ask a neutral force's normally operating spacecraft to suddenly stop. After all, for this force, if they really follow the rebels' requirements, it is very likely that their industries in the areas actually controlled by the government forces will be completely sealed. As long as the top rebels are not fools. They cannot take the initiative to push a large neutral force to the opposite side. And now that the top leader of the rebels is Song Pu, this situation is even more unlikely to happen. Therefore, this gave Cheng Xinghai a chance to escape. There is another reason besides the fact that the rebels have no means to make the force that operates civilian spacecraft listen to their demands. Even the rebels will never and absolutely cannot take action against such a ship carrying a large number of civilians. The reason lies within the rebels themselves. The rebels themselves are not orthodox. So they must receive support from civilian forces in the face of attacks by government forces. If the rebels dare to directly destroy civilian ships, the military morale of the entire rebel army and the original support from the outside world will disappear amid a large number of civilian casualties. Losing one Cheng Xinghai, in exchange for erasing the rebels' biggest advantage, may be a gain for the government forces. 
good people will be criticized for doing bad things. While bad people will just treat bad things as normal. This is the biggest difference between government forces and rebels now. Popular support is the foundation of the rebels. However, the restriction brought by the people's support is an invisible restriction that the forces on the outside are weaker than the government forces, but they are superior to the government forces in terms of development potential and support from other forces behind them. The general information about the rebels and government forces had already been analyzed by Chung Shinghai's teammates during her escape, so this was the confidence for her to leave safely. When I saw my teammates discussing Chen Ming's last operation just now, Chung Shinghai suddenly had an idea and asked, By the way, didn't Chen Ming cause sabotage at the civilian airport? Send this paragraph and question the rebels. Someone immediately replied, That's not good. There happen to be a few ships used by spies at that airport. If you tell them, it will muddy the waters for the other side. Okay. That's okay. Chung Shinghai didn't say much. Anyway, this kind of large-scale overall strategic command was not something she was good at. She just had to do what she should do. At this moment, someone suddenly sent another message to the terminal in Chung Shinghai's hand. I have bad news here. Chen Ming's ability to make the destroyer jump is not the result of his psychic powers. Chung Shinghai immediately asked. What is that? Chen Ming developed a technology called Stabilized Hyperspace Channel Jump Engine Dot. As you all know, I work part-time at the laboratory directly under the 14th Army Corps. There is a patented technology that is being tested and is said to have been obtained by Lieutenant General Bai. I was originally thinking about how Lieutenant General Bai knew this stuff. So I asked. But it turned out that Chen Ning came up with the technology and asked Lieutenant General Bai to help develop it. In reality, it may take time to promote this kind of equipment. But in the simulation, the rebel fleet has lost 7 or 88. And all of them have to build new ones. As long as you give it time, all the rebel spacecraft will have the ability to jump in hyperspace. And for the cruiser, this system is independent of its own jump system. You understand that this is what do you mean? The terminal communication channel suddenly fell into silence. No one expected that Chen Ning alone could make such a huge difference in the battlefield situation. After a long silence, someone finally broke the silence and said, This failure is a bit of a pity. His reaction was already slow due to lack of experience. It's okay. Think on the bright side. As long as Chung Shinghai can come back. At least we won't lose. The rebels are still at a disadvantage, and the war has just begun. We still have a chance. While Chung Shinghai encouraged each other, Chin Ning also just escaped from the hyperspace jump and came to an unmanned galaxy belonging to the government forces. He said in the terminal, I am safe for now. Good. Song Pu replied immediately and then sent another one. But there is bad news. Chung Shinghai ran away. Chapter 220 Escape Song Pu got news of the failure of his men's pursuit of Chung Shinghai just as Chen Ming rushed into the airport. When the spaceship Chung Shinghai boarded took off, he knew that they could no longer pursue Chung Shinghai. The reason is the same as what Chung Shinghai said. It is because of the limitations of the rebels' current situation. But he didn't tell the bad news just now. After all, Chen Ming was also in an emergency situation and telling him bad news wouldn't be helpful. It was only now that Chen Ning was safe that he revealed the news. Engineer Han Guanghong immediately said on the communication channel, This simulated battle that will last for a month has just begun. It is unlikely that the beginning will directly create a fatal situation. Even if you give the order immediately, as long as the person reacts quickly enough, it is normal for him to run away. There is no need to blame yourself. Since the psyker is back, just treat it as a normal start. Chen Ming suddenly realized Hong Guanghong's problem when he said this, and said, If you look at it the other way around, if the time is delayed for too long, it may make it more difficult to escape, like what I just did. His sense of smell was not very sensitive for this kind of battle, and his reaction was half a beat too slow, and he was finally blocked outside the airport. If he could have set off a few minutes earlier, he might have run away without any disturbance like Cheng Xinghai did. Song Pu immediately said, It's not your problem. It's that I was too slow to remind you. I should have read it as soon as I saw the spy's documents placed in such a conspicuous position. If I saw Chung Shinghai's information, I would have read it as soon as possible. Just remind you. At this time, Hong Guanghong suddenly interrupted and said, Okay, don't share the pot. Let's discuss the plan after the psychic comes back. Good. Song Pu agreed decisively and did not waste time on dividing the pot. However, Chin Ning interrupted at this time. Wait a minute. 
I remember you said that the positions of Cheng Xinghai and I are actually opposite. We are both in a position where the hostile force is close to our own forces' territory. And we are the distance between them isn't that far. Right? Right. Then I have an idea. Chen Ming's thoughts are obvious when combined with what he just said. Several people who had just seen Chen Ming's jump operation in hyperspace through the spy means arranged by Song Pu also understood the situation instantly. But Song Pu did not support Chen Ming's idea. It is best not to attack civilian spaceships. Once you leave any traces on the spacecraft, we will be very passive. Chen Ming knew Song Pu's concerns and said, The spaceship is my home court, and I will not leave any traces. Song Pu emphasized again, If there is a problem with the people on the spacecraft, any small problem will be fermented by the government forces and have a great impact on us. The risks are high, but the benefits are unequal. There is no way Cheng Xinghai can compare with the most basic supporters of our rebels at present. Unless you are absolutely sure. Can you accurately find Cheng Xinghai on a spaceship with thousands of civilians? And kill or capture her without alerting anyone or leaving any traces? There is no need for everyone to keep silent. As long as there is no substantive evidence such as videos, photos or audio recordings. Can you do it? Chen Ming gave an affirmative answer. Believe me, there are many things about my spiritual power that you don't know about. Song Pu fell into thinking again and said after a moment of silence, The risk is still very high. But I agree. Hong Wang Hong and Dong Yao responded quickly. I agree. No comment. Chang Xingha also said a sentence in the terminal after a while. One. Everyone agrees. Then I will send you the coordinates. Chen Ming's special terminal quickly received a series of digital coordinates. These were the channel coordinates of the civilian passenger ship Chang Xinghai was traveling on. With a little calculation, Chen Ming could figure out the current location of the passenger ship. It was about a quarter of the way along the route, and it would not be long before it would leave the area actually controlled by the rebels. When the ship was about to arrive at the junction of the areas actually controlled by the government forces and the rebels, it was the time for Chen Ming to take action. The hyperspace channel jump system is ready. Chen Ming activated the hyperspace jump system. And after a moment, he appeared in the target alleyway, close to the side of the rebel-occupied area. All he has to do now is wait quietly for his prey to arrive at its predetermined location. After all, Chen Ming had been a hunter for a while. So he had a lot of patience. While waiting, some spaceships would pass through this channel from time to time. But no spaceship could spot Chen Ming's spacecraft. On the one hand, the detection systems of those civilian ships were relatively weak. On the other hand, when Chen Ning built his own spacecraft, he used isolation scanning materials from a spacecraft he found at the airport that seemed to be involved in smuggling business. With Chen Ning also shutting down the engine and all systems that would lead to the discovery of the spacecraft, it was indeed difficult to detect it by sticking to the edge of the channel and those rolling hyperspace clouds. It was this scene that suddenly made Chen Ning feel familiar. He seems to have done this before. However, Chen Ming used to be a pirate. But now Chen Ning is Cheng Xinghai. Speaking of which, it seems that the last time Chen Ning squatted as a pirate, he helped his boss squat a pirate who had no eyes to steal his colonial supplies. That is to say, after that time, the relationship between Chen Ming and his boss gradually became closer. And they began to have some relationships that were not just about interests. While Chen Ming was thinking about some strange things while waiting, Chen Ning's target was finally detected on the sensor of his spacecraft. The civilian passenger ship, like other passing spacecraft, completely failed to notice Chen Ming's presence and was heading towards its destination at the highest speed possible in the waterway. Chen Ming set off immediately, boarded a shuttle boat that was also made of isolation materials and could only carry one person, and approached the civilian passenger ship at the lowest power. After adjusting the direction and gradually accelerating to the same speed, as the civilian passenger ship, Chen Ning's psychic energy was activated, and several mechanical arms instantly extended from the shuttle boat, and hung the shuttle boat on the bottom of the civilian passenger ship. Chen Ning didn't need the passenger ship to open the docking interface, so he directly reached out and pressed it on his head. A layer of fluctuations like water surface appeared on the bottom SH. L of the passenger ship instantly. Chen Ning jumped lightly and entered the semi-liquefied hull so easily. The shuttle boat mounted on the bottom of the spacecraft turned into metallic liquid after Chen Ming completely entered the passenger ship, scattered in space, and was quickly left behind by the passenger ship. Chen Ming, on the other hand, successfully took over the entire spacecraft without affecting the functions of the spacecraft itself, and through the monitoring system, 
They found the cabin where Cheng Xinghai, who was marked by Song Pu, was located. Chen Ming needs stability where nothing happens. It is best not to leave any traces that will be recorded. Then the impact will naturally be as small as possible. Therefore, Chen Ming did not appear directly in Cheng Xinghai's cabin, but appeared in the bathroom separated by a corridor from her cabin. In his hand, he had prepared an electromagnetic pistol that silently fired steel needles thinner than hair. This thing is perfect for assassination. Chen Ming suddenly felt a strange feeling in his heart now, because he never thought that he would see such a day again. In the past, others would assassinate him. Unexpectedly, one day it would be his turn to assassinate others. For some reason, he was even a little excited now. But the gun in Chen Ming's hand was only a last resort. The most stable assassination method relies on Chen Ming's own spiritual power and the spacecraft controlled by him. Of course, Chen Ming was not referring to a crude method that would definitely leave traces, such as directly breaking the portholes of the spacecraft. Instead, he used the tiny metal liquid he controlled to refine it to the level of atoms invisible to the naked eye, directly penetrate into Cheng Xinghai's heart or brain, and directly kill her after condensation. However, Chen Ming discovered a problem at the moment before taking action. It seemed that his idea could not be realized, because the simulation has not yet reached this level of precision. Although this simulation has a lot of details, all NPCs have extremely humane behaviors. But it's a bit too exaggerated to want details down to the atomic level. Chen Ming simply couldn't do this in the simulation. Now that this method fails, if Chen Ming wants to continue to use psychic energy to assassinate Cheng Xinghai, he can only choose to use a small amount of metallic liquid. But in small amounts, it becomes a bit unstable. A small amount of metallic liquid cannot penetrate the skin directly like atoms. So Chen Ming had to turn the metal liquid into something like a steel needle to kill people, which was almost the same as using a steel needle gun directly. Moreover, Chen Ming's spiritual power can only control the metal liquid to make certain things, and make some changes to the shape and position of the metal liquid. His spiritual power may not necessarily be able to control the metallic liquid to accelerate it to the point where it can kill Cheng Xinghai with one blow. What's more, Cheng Xinghai can always notice changes in the surrounding environment if he is a little more vigilant. Once Cheng Xinghai discovers a problem, any subsequent actions will most likely leave evidence in the eyes of others. Well, let's just use this thing. Chen Ming turned off the safety of the electromagnetic steel needle gun, hid it inside his clothes, and walked out of the bathroom wearing ordinary casual clothes. The corridor outside the bathroom is connected to a passenger cabin separated by a door on both sides. There are small windows in the doors that provide a view into the passenger compartment. Chen Ming Ning stood at the door of one of the doors and saw Cheng Xinghai's position through the small window. To be honest, if Song Pu hadn't warned him in advance, Chen Ning would have seen Cheng Xinghai put on makeup on the surveillance camera. Chen Ning almost didn't recognize that the young woman who had gone through makeup and looked ordinary was the lively Cheng Xinghai. After silently sighing at the awesomeness of magic, Chen Ming raised his gun and pointed it at the back of Cheng Xinghai's head. But just before he pulled the trigger, Cheng Xinghai suddenly stood up. Chen Ning was not sure that he would hit the target. So he immediately put away his gun, his heartbeat speeding up a little unconsciously. But he calmed down immediately. It was impossible for Cheng Xinghai to discover him. All authority over the entire spaceship had fallen into his hands. And all communications on the spacecraft were monitored by Chen Ming at all times. Except for a special terminal that Cheng Xinghai should have. Nothing about the entire spaceship could escape Chen Ming's eyes. Cheng Xinghai suddenly made some moves now. Probably because he had something to do. Just when Chen Ming was thinking this, Cheng Xinghai suddenly turned around and walked towards the corridor where Chen Ming was now, holding a cosmetics box in his hand, as if he wanted to go to the bathroom to touch up his makeup. This is simply God's help, and it can completely minimize the impact of his subsequent actions. Chen Ming retreated and came to a small corner dedicated to smoking on the other side of the corridor. I lit myself a cigarette that I came across when I was controlling someone else's spaceship on the planet and I was going to pretend that I was just someone who came here to smoke. However, something unexpected happened to Chen Ming again. He had never smoked, and he thought smoking in the simulation would be no problem. But when he took the first breath into his lungs, the thick smoke and the burning feeling in his lungs instantly made Chen Ming cough violently. When Cheng Xinghai appeared in the corridor, she immediately noticed the person coughing violently in the corner in front. But she just frowned, not noticing the appearance of the person with his back to her and continued walking to the bathroom. Cheng Xinghai stood in front of the mirror and took out the terminal. She quickly broke off an ID card that she had withdrawn from the terminal. 
and quickly inserted another card into the terminal in her hand. Then she took off the makeup on her face, untied the hair tie on her head, revealing her original appearance, and immediately put on a mask. At the same time, with a gentle tug on her shoulders, the heavy coat on her body was taken off, leaving behind a more lightweight and convenient sportswear. Chang Xinghai's movements were very fast, and the combined actions before and after took only 10 seconds. After confirming that there was nothing wrong, Chang Xinghai casually threw his clothes on the sink in a compartment, turned around, and prepared to leave the bathroom and walk to another passenger cabin. It seemed that he wanted to change into a new identity directly on the spaceship to avoid being tracked when he landed. However, the moment she turned around and left the mirror, she suddenly noticed that the light in the passenger compartment behind her suddenly dimmed a little. Chang Xinghai turned around instantly and found that the small window on the side of the door behind her that she had just come from was covered with a veil-like texture, making it impossible to see clearly what was happening on the other side. Moreover, the isolation door itself seems to be thickened a lot, and the wall also seems to be bloated. The same change occurred on the door ahead that Chang Xinghai was about to pass. There was only one person except her in the corridor at this time. Chang Xinghai looked warily at the coughing person in the corner. His body was tense and could explode at any time. This is exactly what Chen Ming did. He cut off the connection between this room and the other rooms, temporarily turning the corridor into a closed place. The sound will not be transmitted out, and people outside cannot open the door. If it is broken for a few minutes, it will not have any big impact. While coughing, Chen Ming raised the electromagnetic steel needle gun, pointed it at Chung Shinghai and said, Cough! 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 At this moment, after seeing Chen Ming's appearance clearly, Chang Xinghai immediately thought of the previous situation where Chen Ming's spaceship jumped directly in hyperspace and instantly figured out how Chen Ming got here. Chang Xinghai raised his hands, slowly pressed them against the wall of the corridor, and said, Have you never smoked? No cough. Chen Ming coughed and turned the muzzle of the gun. After a long time, he finally felt relief from the pain in his lungs caused by smoking. Are you surrendering? Before Chen Ming finished speaking, Chang Xinghai finally walked to the wall at this moment. Her slender legs pushed against the wall, and she burst out in the corridor at a speed that was terrifying for Chen Ming's physical fitness. Before Chen Ming could even control the metallic liquid flowing out of the ship's hull to restrain Chang Xinghai, Chang Xinghai was already swaying in the narrow corridor and rushing towards Chen Ming. Hack! Is Chang Xinghai's physical quality or his personality? Chen Ming kept pulling the trigger while retreating. But Chang Xinghai was often able to react a moment before Chen Ming fired. Often before Chen Ming's fingers were fully clasped. His body would tilt slightly. Easily dodging several rapidly flying steel needles. And then, he would suddenly stand in front of Chen Ming and slap the gun out of his hand. At the same time, a punch with a cracking sound hit Chen Ming's face. Chen Ming's thinking speed could indeed clearly see Chang Xinghai's movements. But his body could not react. The psychic energy that enhances physical fitness is obtained from the insect queen. Although the prosthetic body can be used, it will never be included in the simulation. This seemingly petite fist could definitely give him a concussion with one punch. However, Chin Ming's prosthesis is of the same physical quality as Chin Ming. Chin Ming can carry more than 10 kilograms of tools every day, and he has been exercising all the time. Although it is definitely not as harsh as the training methods in the army, Chin Ming's physical fitness is definitely better than that of most ordinary people. It doesn't mean that I don't have the ability to withstand a face-to-face -face encounter. Therefore, Chin Ming can still do the fastest action he can do that is most appropriate at this moment. Without saying a word, he squatted on the spot and rolled backwards while holding his head. Although Chang Xinghai doesn't look tall and has no obvious muscles on his body, his physical fitness is a level higher than that of Chin Ming. He will definitely not be able to defeat him in a head-on fight. So he must use other methods. Chin Ming retreated, but Chang Xinghai continued to step forward without mercy, twisting his body flexibly. The body that exploded with terrifying speed just now drove the seemingly slender but violent whip legs to whip towards the neck of Chen Ming, who was half squatting on the ground. Chen Ming's current movements were just right for Chung Xinghai's height and strength. If this kick was successful, Chen Ming might even be kicked to death. Even if he was knocked unconscious, he would be considered lucky. Chen Ming stood there without making any movement. He seemed to have no reaction and seemed to have given up the struggle. But just the next moment, there was a sound of flesh and metal colliding in the corridor. Chang Xinghai's kick hit the neck of Chen Ming, who had condensed power armor all over his body. Chen Ming's head tilted slightly under the impact. And at this moment, 
He seemed to hear a crisp sound of bones breaking. Chung Shinghai immediately fell to the ground with a bitter look on her face. But she still struggled to crawl towards the pistol that she had just slapped away. However, metallic liquid immediately flowed out of the ground of the hole. And the pistol that fell on the ground was directly raised and handed to Chen Ming's hands. Along with some metallic liquid appearing out of thin air, a new electromagnetic javelin was gradually constructed. Chung Shinghai saw that the situation was not right and there was no possibility of a comeback. He slowly raised his body to block the small movement of his hand towards the cosmetics box. She pulled out a steel needle from the hinge of the box and pretended to stab herself. However, the surveillance in the corridor was always in Chen Ming's field of vision, and Chung Shinghai's movements were invisible to him. The metallic liquid immediately clasped Chung Shinghai's arm, turning it into a pure piece of iron, cuffing her like handcuffs. Chen Ming didn't have time to react when he saw Chung Shinghai's burst of speed just now so it will be easier to deal with it now that he has reacted. Wearing power armor, he faced Chung Shinghai, who was almost defenseless and even had one of his legs broken. Almost face to face. If Chin Ming still can't beat him, he really has to jump into space without wearing protective clothing. At this point, Chung Shinghai has completely lost the ability to resist. But the next step is a bit difficult. However, Bai Quan's voice appeared in the ears of Chin Ming and Chung Shinghai at this moment. Reminding, in the simulation, there is no need to search the enemy of the opposite sex. She has to take out the special terminal on her body. There is nothing else except this. This is easier to handle. After Chung Shinghai reluctantly handed her special terminal to Chen Ming, a large amount of metallic liquid instantly flowed out of the ground of the spacecraft, covering Chung Shinghai and putting a protective suit on her. Chen Ming bent down and grabbed the belt of Chung Shinghai's protective suit, picked her up, and put her on his shoulder. He took her directly through the hull of the spacecraft next to her and into space. The thickened doors on both sides of the corridor were restored to their original appearance after Chen Ming left. The wall pierced by the steel needle was also removed, leaving no trace. This recording of the corridor surveillance video was forged by Chen Ming using technical means, and all records were deleted. Even the clothes Chung Shinghai had just hung on the sink in the women's restroom were fished out by Chen Ming using his spiritual power. Except that Chung Shinghai did disappear on the spacecraft. There was no evidence left on the entire spacecraft that Chen Ming had been there. The disappearance of people is so common. The disappearance of one person cannot cause any waves on the scale of the entire star field. Even if it is Chung Shinghai, even if the government forces want to use this as an excuse for propaganda, it is useless. Chung Shinghai, a civilian, disappeared alone. At most, it was nothing unusual. Chung Shinghai, who was a spy, was captured by the rebels. Isn't that reasonable? The government forces now have no choice but to suffer this dumb loss.